Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome to this lovely, lovely week of the MEC. My name is Orbital, with me is Kenobi, of course, and we'll be taking you through week number six, or at least the start of week number six, as the teams start breaking down their final weeks of play. We have a lot of action here for you today, and I'm very excited to be able to cast it all for you. Kenobi, how you feeling? I'm feeling great. I mean, it's it seems like it's a really good event. I've seen some pictures of the Drury Land that the players are already at, so it seems like it's going to be a great weekend of league of legends action here for all of these teams and talked about it it is kind of this last week that they really have there are some tiebreakers after this but realistically now it's all about that seating to play for before we go into those playoffs it is going to be there and of course to kick things off we do have Drury panthers versus the arkansas razorbacks and these are two teams that it does kind of matter right you're taking a look at them they're currently sitting at the bottom of the standings with one win a piece and they'll be looking to try and kind of set themselves up because again the difference between last and second to last can mean playing against the first seed which is of course we'll see them a little bit later today the squad that is absolutely undefeated here in the current regular season which is going to be that lovely lovely grandview vikings I mean, good lord! I I don't know if I want to play against them. <laughs> it's I mean, they're basically playing to who gets to avoid Grandview. That feels like yep. what the part, what the what the uh, prize is for the winner of this series between these two teams. And Drury definitely want to start things off with a win, especially in front of their home crowd. So lots to play for here, even though it is towards the back ends of the weeks of the MEC. But I think this is going to be a great matchup. They've already played before. It was a very close mm -hmm. to one series between both of them. So in the rematch. We're going to see who comes out on top because, again, like I talked about, it is for the seeding, and you definitely don't want to play Grandview at the start. Not at all. And to give you a little bit of background, as you stated, they did play in week number one. And in that week, Jury Panthers actually took the victory, but it was not easy. It was a 2-1 victory. Took a lot longer than probably they would have liked. And for the side of Arkansas Razorbacks, this is a squad that has beaten Illinois, I believe, in the latter weeks as well. So that's where their one win came from, where as Illinois College is currently sitting at about a 2-8 record. So uh, just above them in the current standings, so battling all four that prize positioning and for the Drury Panthers I think going and talking about them a little bit I think that they've had actually uh when I was watching them last week they had some interesting moments and some good drafts against Illinois uh college I think it was something that uh, uh they really performed well at was their drafts uh, I liked a lot of them so I'm excited to see when we go into draft this series what they're going to be able to do and for Arkansas Razorbacks they have struggled it, it's been a bit of a struggle for them this season same with Drury Panthers but I think that they definitely have some things in their back pocket that they can bring out so that they can beat someone like an Illinois college later on as we do just go straight into the draft here or yes we will and to keep in mind they have drafted outside in the draft lull as we are trying to make sure that all the teams do get to work with those lovely lovely different picks in all the different bands as well really making sure that they get the flexes that they want in there taking a look of course we do go ahead and see the karma being banned out here now 12.5 targeting that karma a bit it, it seems a little lackluster but of course maybe sent down to sir tuttle in the bot lane or maybe even if you are a little bit adventurous and want to ban it out from the top lane in silver dream <laughs> i mean it is it is a possibility to be flexed to i think three different lanes now with mm -hmm. you know all of the options you know top mid and then that support role i know fat cat is someone who plays it a lot but it is going to be more of a self and udir is going to be gone it seems like orbital we have moved back uh you know unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you view it towards udir hecker and meta so it seems like that's going to be something that we have to focus on throughout the day is are those jungler picks and what are they going to be are hecker and udir going to be let through the draft this time udir is not going to be let through but zeri taken off the board from the jury panthers tells me that they probably don't want to pick up a uh, marksman on b1 uh well they might actually want to it depends on how they would like to do it going into the second part of the draft but zary definitely if you aren't going to pick it probably just best to get rid of it for yourself on two side it is and it's a champion that's uh, annoyed many people i mean unless you're even willing to try and commit a malzahar and for some reason try and run that in mid lane i mean i don't i don't church, know how else you're gonna lock it up yeah just listen listen just point and click that's all we're gonna do here the akali is gonna be banned away on the side of university of arkansas and i think that's a valid ban as well if you're trying to take away the speed it's a problem the elise coming out here definitely feels like a pocket pick for kid yeah. quill but uh, you know what you gotta respect those very very good players on that one singular champion yeah, that does seem like a bit of a target ban because Elise has not really been the most prevalent in the meta lately as it has been as Nico's going to be. So Nico did get buffs, actually, and it is something that we do have to mention that Nico did get buffs and is is potentially a counter pick a lot of the time. So uh, that's probably why they're going down. It is potentially also something that the killer guy specifically likes to play. So bans looking pretty 
pretty standard for some of them and then there's some weird ones in there as hecarim's gonna be locked in first Ooh. super super strong jungler at the current moment here orbital i mean everyone it feels like is playing hecarim and it's like almost kind of like jin Zhao to this point where it's like it's just it's just there you know dj does the old reliable meme jin Zhao. i mean this time it feels like a hecarim it's there and it's again you were talking about that that meta coming back here it's all about the speed it's all about getting the momentum through the rest of the map and when you're trying to chase down an adc might as well right now yeah. looking across the other way to lock down an adc or a mid that's very very immobile is the j4 the j4 has risen in priority over the last few patches as well as the nurse came in to the other junglers you want to lock it in that cataclysm is so good to keep opponents where you want them yeah, extremely good team fighting uh, tool. You can also gank uh, in the early game pretty well with flag and drag. So I think that that's definitely something to look out for once we go into game is where this Jarvan goes in terms of their gank potential is Jinx will be locked in for University of Arkansas. So that's already the marksman down. Now it's up to Fury Panthers probably to find their marksman. Aphilios is still up. Uh, Ezreal is still up. Jin is still up as well. Uh, so those are definitely options as Thresh is going to be taken away because you probably don't want to give over jinx thresh that seems like something you'd be very scary to deal with in lane or just out of lane team fighting wise give the jinx the ability to get out of any sticky situation that would potentially happen especially against a hecarim where it's like if you just lantern the jinx away it's going to be really really beneficial but see what drury opts in for this is going to be a marksman and it looks like it's going to be Jin paired up with it's going to be the long range combo just staying away and again the Jin has been an answer to the jinx for quite some time not an amazing counter pick just one that's basically like all right i can keep you at arm's length but a good way to get in range of that is going to be the wukong this one also surprises me a bit we haven't seen wukong really shine through too much but if silver dream can pull it out very appropriately that monkey can cause a lot of havoc with the cloning process and with the knockup so a nice little top off in the first pick phase it was blinded, so there is the potential of a counter pick over on the jury's side here, and we know that kind of Wukong lanes early on pretty pretty annoying to deal with if you're Wukong, like especially if you get counter picked. It's just like I don't get to play the game until I'm level six. Uh, so you you suffer a little bit in lane, but you basically sacrifice that for having some extremely good team fighting later. And with what I'm seeing already from University of Arkansas's composition, like this streams to me like team fight kingdom right now like you have jarvin you have jinx you have wukong there's so much room to be created for the jinx in a lot of these team fights that'll happen you know around those drakes around those objectives as in terms of bans what we see galio taken away from jury very good ban i think that this is a great idea to take it away because against like the combo of wukong and jarvin you don't want galio to just like hit an easy r on top of that and just ruin your team fight so I think the band's definitely good right here for University of Arkansas and for Drury, as we're going to be seeing what University of Arkansas brings to the table. Lulu going to be picked up, combo along with Jinx. So, again, more team fighting. It's just all around just keeping with that same theme and i love when teams are able to capitalize on their composition and their compositional strengths on Ooh. the flip of course the tom kench is going to come out Hop. and of course in this sense you could pick that center if you wanted to i don't know where you fit in this composition but it is enabled it is enabled there uh tom kench top though we are going to see if it can hold out against the wukong and that's one i haven't seen too much of and of course the blind pick victor why not old standard if you aren't comfortable with the new champions that are currently on the rise victor is always a good pick up the final though oh, the final okay. is the corky and it's going yeah. to be that old snooze lane have at it have at it everyone uh we will not be spectating mid for the next 15 minutes mm, resident sleeper you know just the corky <laughs> corky victor lanes are not the most uh interactive lanes let's say uh orbital it, it feels like it's very much just like i poke you out you poke it. we just clear waves yada 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 and then in team fights is where it's gonna happen but i really like the combination uh that i'm seeing from university of arkansas here in terms of their uh team fighting prowess i think it's really good they have what i like is when people draft things alongside the jarvan that can dive with the jarvan so getting that wukong in there i think is really good because you create so much space for porky and jinx and orbital if this composition from university of arkansas gets to 30 minutes the game is very scary for jury panthers <laughs> to win because it's corky jinx late game very scary the good thing is though however they have kind of this like little wrinkle in their composition with the hecarim the hecarim is kind of going to be for me i think the focal point for Drury panthers you know if oscaric can do something and just get super far ahead on hecarim and snowball the game you don't let university of arkansas get to that point 
you you definitely aren't. And later on as well, if that Victor can start climbing up, that Chaos Storm can also cause a lot of the messes, right? The yep. slowing, the AoE. There, there's so much that is going to explode out here into the rift. So let's go ahead and climb right into game number one here in week number six, kicking things off in their home city. It is going to be the Jury Panthers on that blue side. As again, all those fans sitting in the land area, please, please enjoy this lovely, lovely show and cheer for your favorite squad, University of Arkansas. You're the away team. Good luck to you. And hopefully this series works out in your favor. And of course, of course, we get to see the best quirky skin ever. It is the Corgi coming out to play. I mean, it is. I don't think <laughs> it's like, why would you ever pick a different one? I know Bjergsen plays the astronaut one, which I think is also kind of cool, but like, I mean, come on. It's either no, that or it's the, the wiggle. Earth. The Earth. It's the wiggle. Earth yes. Earth. Earth. I, I forgot about the Earth. How did I forget about that? <laughs> that one's, that's the one I play because I think I got it like free at one point, like recently, whenever I played the Corgi, which, by the way, Corgi, <laughs> if you're in Silver Elo like me, free win. Just kid, just play it. You, you just you just just stay in lane. You're safe as heck. You don't have to do anything against the enemy laner, and then you can play two hit rocket, and you win. Ooh, you is that. so? So you're a quirky player. What is that? Your main go-to champion? Oh, oh okay, player. okay. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, well, how does that work? What? I, did, Where did I go? From? I the love church. it. <laughs> the church. Like, 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 I was just like, I, I just like, you know, Malzahar, Annie, Corky. Just very safe. I don't have to do anything. I hit my buttons on people and they die. And I <laughs> See, still can't I love that because <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to introduce you to the, the Church of Zerath right now. Have you played Zerath yet? <laughs> yeah, but I have to hit skill shots to play Zerath. Okay, that's and also we, true. We've established that I'm not very good at this game here. Well, you play so. Corky. It's all skill shots. The Rockets, man. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, but you have like seven of them and you could just like throw okay, them into fair. a team fight. <laughs> That's also true. I mean, have you seen Corky's rockets hit? When you have a Ludens and a Tiamat running, it's painful. It's it's very painful. I'm sure <laughs> the enemies when I win games feel that, but as we're seeing here, not too much happening yet in this early game. Jarvan is pathing down towards this bottom side. Uh, so, I mean, Jarvan is one of those champs that in the early game likes to get pretty, you know, engaged on the map, likes to look for things in this early game, take some flashes away, whereas like on Hecarim on the other side, you really like the mostly full clear here, and it looks like Hecarim is doing such a good job because the clear is so good for Hecarim that he's going to be around this bottom side to be able to match Kid Quill when they're coming down. But some nice wardage coverage already from the bottom side of Drew Panthers under understanding that Kid Quill potentially will be pathing towards this bottom side. And now this Jarvan early pressure is not really a thing because he skipped his Krugs, so he, those aren't going to be back up for a while. And well, if you're Othgrig here, you totally take this as a win because you, right now, just continue to full clear, get up to that power spike of level 6, and stay ahead of the Jarvan, and that's really going to be your goal here. Just try and maintain that sort of advantage, and with that combat kind of set up, and you know where Kid Quill is, is this going to be a battle over that Rift Scuttle? And it should go to Othkarik. This is going to be a little bit of a leg up that Othkarik can work with. As you said, accelerate that pace. Move towards that level 6 as quickly as possible. With a little bit of a trade in the bot side, I look at Trees and Baymax. Go ahead and trade HP potions. For I look at Trees, it's a little bit more so as you did start the Longsword in 3 pots. Now we're, I mean, you know, mid lane we talked about kind of going to be a little bit of a snooze fest in terms of what's going to be happening up there. Top, I think, you know, Tom Kench early will get pretty big advantage because Tom Kench early levels with Q slow, with the ability to stun, pretty miserable to play against. And as I talked about in draft, you know, Wukong early game struggles significantly. You're really just waiting until you get to that level six so you can become a champion and, you know, fight in lane a little bit more as Kid Quill looking for potentially something onto this Victor killer guy. Gonna have to get away here. Actually, no flash is gonna be, or no engage is gonna come in, so Kid Quill not, with these early ganks, not really, I mean, the pressure has been there a little bit, but just not forcing out any of those key summoner spells that you would've liked. Uh, with uh, with Yod and Yod and Othkar coming down, I'm not sure if you really wanted to, right? It was the war that gave it away. You could hear the pings in there, and it's like, do I really want to take a chance with the three v two? Probably not. <laughs> and I mean, it's a good advantage as well for a good. Oh, as actually, there's a hook in the bot lane. Jinx getting low. I look at trees. It is going to be quite low. The exhaust goes down. It's not the ignite though, so they are going to get the shield out. It is going to be well held by Sir Tuttle and Shree to hang on to the flashes, but the defensive summoners are down. 
Yeah, all the combat summoners are gone right now for this bottom side. And, but the health are a little bit lower on the side of University of Arkansas here, so they do have to play pretty carefully as the Jarvan is going to be coming in. But again, look at the war coverage from Drew University. Kid Quill, though, coming in. Are these getting flash for this? Mm, and Kid Quill actually misses the flag and drag, but you still get the summoner spell that you wanted anyway. It is going to be there. You get the hook back. Kid Quill gets a shield. So you do bring the flash for flash. It does give a summoner spell advantage at Trees and Tuttle. But, eh, you... I, I wonder if they were hoping to get the knockup as well. Yeah, I think I think you definitely wanted to get the knockup and just try and secure the kill right there. Even though it is against the Thresh, you probably would have had a good chance to do so. But getting the flash is still valuable and does offer that potential of getting into a repeat gank. As also, now that they have this a little bit of an advantage, Jin can't play as far up because Jin very immobile. Even though it does have the Thresh alongside it, still kind of a spooky situation when you don't have flash as Jin before you get like Gale Force and offer some of that mobility as Hecarim's actually going to the mid lane seeing if they can take out Lazy Lambo just gets him a little bit low and now with that force out from University of Arkansas gonna be a little bit of tempo in the favor of Drury Panthers in that mid lane and Othgrid potentially look to continue his full clear and go to the dragon if they would decide to if they so do decide it is gonna be a mountain which is not the most highly contested dragon of them all it's one that in some people's eyes they would actually like clear it out so it's probably going to be left up unless an opportune chance arises here so we'll have to keep eyes on that one of course with the teleport back lazy lambo is going to come back with the triple long sword here and a tier going for that raw early game damage with that cb though and of course kid quill on the top side dragon should be fairly open and it is going to be the three members of jury panthers working the way down to the dragon picking it up first for the squad and this is good because if, as the team of Jewelry Panthers here, you want to accelerate this game significantly and you want to take down his... Like, Dragon Soul is definitely something you can play for because of the fact that Othbrook is so pretty ahead right now. I mean, look at the differentiation in terms of CS right now. 57, 30, 43 right now just ticking up for Jarvan. So this Hecarim is ahead in terms of just the tempo that they have at the current moment. And with that, you can convert that into some objectives. But it looks like on the other side to kind of counteract this, Kid Quill... We'll be going in trying to clear some of the jungle of Othkrik, but Othkrik knows, I think you saw that there was a ping there, knows that they're going towards this blue, and knows that the Jarvan could potentially be in that area. Definitely know about that steal, but can you get there in time? And the answer is no. You do cut off that second Gromp, though, so Quill is only going to get a minor, uh, minor clear on that CS differential, or the camp differential, as Othkrik is still up quite a bit here you can take a look it is level six for that hecker i'm going to be looking for that gank kick will just hit it as well so we should start seeing a little bit more action around the map especially with rift herald on the map as well yeah and it's something that you know we talked about you know jarvins are very good in the early game and there has been some opportunities for kid cool to get you know some flashes out or get some ganks but i think bot lane for what it's worth did a very good job in the early game understanding that kid cool has the potential to play more towards bot side because Jin is relatively immobile you're not going to be going to kill victor or tom pinch or things like that so the way that they were able to cover themselves and make it so that the jarvan wasn't getting free ganks on them with their vision control i think was really good to kind of hinder the jarvan a little bit because now you've given Othkrik this ability to snowball pretty significantly it's a chance it's a chance to start snowballing out of control with the gold almost dead even a difference of about only about 400 it's a little bit difficult, and especially with the burn of the ghost, you don't have that all-important combo that you like to run down, that you like to bring out on the table. It will be up before the flash, though, so the combination, so the Hecarim should bring a lot larger agency and priority. They are going to take the chance, though, with the ward spotting out Othkarik, the lane gink is somewhat thwarted. A lot of eyes drawn down here to the bot lane. And oh, Fatcat is going to try and go in. Yeah, no one knows Kid Quill is in there. They're going to get the hook, but they dropped on the wrong person. It's going to be a massive combo coming in here. Surprise, surprise. The Razorback strike first with a double kill in that bot lane. Make the it triple. a triple. And just like that, I look at Trees is looking at three massive kills. I can. It's just so wild to me that Kid Quill got over there and no one saw him perfectly played positioning wise from the jungler i mean in the right place at the right time there is no better example of that from kid quill who had this a little bit of a rough start in the early game for a jarvan but with that has completely made up for it three kills over to the jinx now orbital 
This is a Jinx who is accelerated to the moon. Already coming in with the Kraken Slayer, this is going to be scary because we talked about how if University of Arkansas gets to 30 minutes, this game is way more difficult for Drury Panthers to win. Now with Jinx getting this fed early in the game, it's even scarier. When we're talking about the time limits, it's almost as if that time limit has been pushed forward, right? Instead of 30 minutes, now we're looking at maybe about 27 minutes, 26 minutes on that clock. Depending on how many plates you can get in the next three and a half minutes, we could see University of Arkansas completely break out. It's going to be a hex drinker for Lazy Limo in the mid lane as well, which means that you can start rotating that Corky out. You can start shifting uh, I Look at Trees and Sir Tuttle into different directions if they so wish without too much damage to lazy lambo right you have that defensive capability it's all eyes on that bot lane university of arkansas pretty much said well our dreams right now lie in this jinx this is fully what we wanted to happen yeah i mean my eyes are also going to be on this next dragon fight that's going to be up in a minute mm -hmm. because that dragon fight is going to be incredibly or the second dragon is going to be incredibly impactful to the state of the rest of the game because if university of arkansas gets it they stop this ability for jury panthers to accelerate the game with something like soul but here comes off Ooh. that's the nice route and they want to go for it but that's gonna be a flash out the hook goes wide but they're still gonna try and follow through wild growth is gonna be good the flea the fear is going to cut back and just like that it is gonna be a shutdown for baymax shots going out here as the flay lands on sir tuttle a flash out of the final shot kid quill comes in for the save and it is going to be a Jury Panthers firing right back. It's not as big as a triple kill, but it's a shutdown for their ADC. And that's actually going to be Dragon most likely converted over for Jury Panthers as well. So they do get to continue to have their ability to accelerate the game with something like Soul. Use that as their win condition. I think it was really good timing as well from Othkirk as Lazy Lambo actually is... I think if he has W, he's fine, but... That was a little bit of a spooky situation. Victor does have Leandries right now available to them, so... I'm out quite a bit of damage still. It's the burn damage, and you're happy with that one. So very, very, very well held. The guy is going to walk in. This dragon is going to be started up. I look at trees is over on the side. And with the pink ward down, it's a little bit difficult to see inside. But you can see this is a three-on-four fight. Are you going to get a Kid Quill? Cannot get the smite down. They are going to jump on Baymax, who gets the flash out. And immediately, they try and turn around, but they're running. They're saying we don't want to deal with I look at trees, who technically at this point could count as two champions keep in mind lazy nice Lambo has teleport back in really nice laser the but the package across the side is going to net lazy Lambo a backside fight killer guy. But look at killer guy killer guy slaughters one and drops too low it is gonna be university of arkansas going a little bit too far for their own liking jury panthers take the dragon and they take a fight in their own jungle to net themselves three kills Killer guy was basically 1v3 right there, but still managing. Oh, kid, Quill, this oh. is just, uh, this is unfortunate timing. He tried to go for the Scuttle Crab, but Oscar's going to say thank you very much for the leash and take that one for themselves. And through all of that, I mean, an absolute win for Drury Panthers all across the board. They get the Drake, they get the kills off the back end as well. Hecarim now with three kills. We talked about acceleration on the Hecarim and the ability to snowball. Now with three kills, that becomes even more of a win condition for them alongside Hextech Soul, which is one of the best souls, if not the best soul in the game. So good. It gives you slowing power. It gives you extra attack speed if you pick up the dragons as well. It's, it's everything. It's everything that you could possibly want without getting any of the other dragons, right? It is such a good culmination of stats. If you're not picking it up, you're going to be very, very sad. Now, that same thing could be said for the Arkansas Razorbacks, right? If you can force stack a, a Hex Tank Drake, it's disgusting. You get so much ability haste. You get so much attack speed. And for the likes of a Jinx, of a Corky, of a Lulu, all these champions, you're going to love that. So it's going to be a big, bloody battle over that objective. Yeah, and I mean, if you're Jury Panthers, you really can't let University of Arkansas get soul. It, it's, it's basically just the game ends. Like, Corky Jinx into the late game is already bad enough, but when they have Hextech Soul on top of that, good luck winning any t type of team fight because the, the amount of damage that Corky and Jinx will pump out is just ridiculous. So definitely something to keep looking out for as the game continues as we kind of take stock of where we are in terms of itemization and things like that. Divine Sunder completed now on the Wukong in the top side, so... Tom Kench becomes a little bit more sad in these engagements. Can still win, but, you know, at least Wukong can play the lane a little bit now in terms of just the ability to trade a little bit more significantly. As also Corky has completed the Mana Moon, so now pumping out even more damage than they were before. 
going to be a nice time, of course, and it's always a fun time for a Corky player when you don't have to build a Mythic and, and still uh, drop someone down a half. But we did see the consequence of not running that early Mythic, right? Couldn't get that backline kill as quickly as you would probably like. But all eyes still now on I look at trees. Since that early triple has actually died twice and has allowed Baymax to actually get back into the CS department. That is something that we might want to keep track of. Again, if I look at trees cannot appropriately bring that gold and bring that pressure to the game, then that lead does fall a little bit flat. That win condition for University of Arkansas is going to be nullified. Are they going behind? I think they, they want to try to use the hex gate to get behind them, but they're just waiting. And actually, here they go. Oh. Does Kid, Kid Quill know that this is happening? Yes, remember, it changed. You now get to see someone pop out of Good that play. game. It's going to be over the wall. That is going to be the selection onto Quill. As the Cataclysm might turn it around, they do pick a Fat Cat, but Kid Quill might be the response. It is going to be a support for a jungler, and the chase is still on. Killer Guy allows Baymax to get that <clears throat> Gale Force kill. And now the dive under the tower is going to come through. Lazy Lambo a little bit too slow to this fight. Another tower shot goes down. And Lazy Lambo is allowed the consolation prize of the double bust. It is a full dive though. And again, that was a phenomenal, and I repeat, a phenomenal 3 for 2 fight. Really good setup as well. Lazy Lambo does manage to get a shutdown of 700 gold onto the heck room. But all things considered, I think it's still a win for Drury Panthers. Is actually... Ooh. Uh, killer guy, this is a little bit illegal what you're doing here. Actually has to use heal. Wait. It is very dangerous, but then you realize you're in a 1v2. The double bus almost wanted out. Oh, Why'd you walk back in? You wanted to give it a shot, but four shot Jin wrecks your soul. And as quickly as you pull that kill, the bus transfer is complete. And Baymax on 4-2-4 four, four, has now essentially caught up. I look at trees. I think that was both teams like understanding. They were kind of just like, oh, maybe we can go for this. Oh, no, I can't go for this. Maybe we can go for this. Oh, no, there's no way I can go for this. Oh, it's a fourth shot. And Corky ends up falling. And you were talking about a little bit earlier, Orbital, where Jin, you know, had a little bit of a rough game in the early game. But now Jin at the top of the boards in terms of gold right now. And while Jin doesn't scale necessarily as great into the late game as something like a Jinx, in this point where they are at two items, like they're pretty strong enough to take team fights significantly well they just need to be worried about the fact that wukong in a 5v5 team fight can get onto them lucky enough they do have a thresh in their back pocket and also have gale force and their flash so there is that potential for the Jin to live in a straight 5v5 team fight if that comes up it's also the fact that the fight can be played in multiple segments instead of a consistent battle right with how much disbursement jury panthers can bring with the fear from the hecarim as you said the knockup from tom kench all of this culminates in the fact that you can essentially lock University of Arkansas out of a consistent uh, AoE battle, right? That Jinx might not enjoy it as much. So we are going to see if they can fight it in again. 3k on that dragon. It is going to be the curtain call opening up. Can you get the seal? Who gets the dragon? Oh, it's picked up by the side of University of Arkansas. Who gets the fight? Though? That is going to be a great package coming across the side. It zones everyone out, but the kills still come through. But look at the back end. The rockets. Resets. The rockets are there. You auto attacked a ward, but it is going to be enough double kill on the Thresh. Killer guy is going to run into the wrong side of the jungle. And the fight is won. University of Arkansas oh. steal away a second triple kill on the Jinx and take the dragon to boot. This game game is getting so spicy kenobi oh it's very spicy right here a little bit picante as they say i mean university of arkansas <laughs> taking that drake absolutely huge in terms of the tempo of this game on top of that the fact that jinx gets three kills off of it is a complete and utter disaster for Drury panthers and university of arkansas now all of the eggs are in that jinx basket seven three and one already has the Kraken Slayer in their back pocket will probably go back and be able to get themselves uh, the Hurricane or the Rapid Fire Cannon, depending on what they choose to do so. And now when we talked about, you know, earlier over to like 30 minutes is where like this becomes a problem. Jinx is already a problem. It's going to be the Rapid Fire Cannon as well. So like now it's like, how do you get to Jinx in this call? It has to be heck. <laughs> I, I, I would say you had mentioned the Hurricane, and I saw that static in there, and I was like, yeah, it's probably going to be Rapid Fire. I would yeah. like the Hurricane, though, right? You know, as you said, the Hecarim's going to be trying to get on you. That Tom Kench might be trying to access you in the back line. You, you do want, like, multiple forms of AoE, but at this point, I think I look at Trees has basically said, look, I know that I'm going to be chasing more. Most likely, Jury Panthers are running away from us Razorbacks, so I need that extended range. I need that ability to catch up. I need that ability to get that last hit, that last little bit of reset, and I really like that itemization choice. 
Yeah, I think it's. I, mean, I think it's good. Usually, you do see Hurricane against a lot of melee heavy intensive oppositions on the other side. Which, with Hecarim, with Tom Kench, with Thresh, quote unquote, it is. It would definitely be something that you could opt in for. But instead, going to be opting in for the rapid fire cannon to match a little bit of the range uh, that something like a Jin brings to the table or something like a Victor brings to the table. Because those are things you definitely don't want to walk up to. You know, Victor, especially like now with where they are at two items will do a significant amount of damage even to a jinx who is seven three and one so all in all i think that it's still a good item that they've chosen and i mean throughout all of this gold is still even but that's if anything a boon for university of arkansas with their composition right they the fact that they're even right now and three panthers has not managed to snowball this game completely to the moon is a benefit to them and i think it's a complete win now we're at that 21 minute mark and we're a little bit closer to that 30 minute mark, which was the one that mattered the most. Oh, and it's going to be a test here. This is a stat I check don't... of sorts right now. It's going to be the dodge on the rockets, and that stat check basically Ooh. gave both Killer Guy dodging out on a life support oh. line, but the massive rocket lands. One more might tag, but the laser could come out, and it's <laughs> going to be the curtain call. Both ADCs got in on the action, and Baymax came out on top. Come on. You got to respect the 1v1. I mean, even though there was a Jinx <laughs> rocket in there, Baymax. Yeah, that, and... that was already thrown yeah. out the window <laughs> mid-round. Uh, yeah, Baymax was like, oh, okay, you threw a rocket up there. Now it's my turn to go as... <laughs> will be picked up by the Jin, and I mean again Jin's still a problem right now but again in team fights it's still a little bit of a tricky situation especially when you're up against something like a Wukong and a Jarvan with Tremendo and Wild Growth popped on top of that you don't do that much damage just yet like we need to see like IE come in for Jin for him to really be a threat in a lot of these team fights it feels like right now a lot of it's going to be bait on the back of uh, Othkirk you know can Othkirk find a good engagement into that back line take out the Jinx take out the Corky because beyond that there's not much range advantage that this composition from Druid Panthers has and at that point you kind of have to decide how are you going to play the fight as well because if you can't get to the Jinx then you have to protect your own line Killer Guy and Baymax can put out quite a bit of damage on their own Kid Quill, though, has done a significant job of zoning out the fights and the package play from Lambo has completely zone these sites out so as much as we're talking about i look at trees on this jinx and trying to get to the jinx in the back line i want to see killer guy i want to see killer guy actually ramp up and damage at two one and six already has uh the shadow flame in pocket with the leandries the burn damage that can come out can significantly harm kid quill and silver dream void staff as well gonna be here soon so once i mean that three item victor hits it's gonna be a completely different beast it feels like and something mm -hmm. that university of arkansas will have to you know be wary of because a lot of their gold is significantly onto i look at trees and if i look at trees is taken out by like a victor who is in a position to get to them then a lot of this composition falls apart even though they do have a quirky still on the back side but again when it looks like in terms of team fights when they get to the jinx the victor needs to be in that scenario as the dragon fight's going to be started up again and Drew panthers i think needs this one here orbital they do, and they need to make sure that they can get close enough as fast as possible. It's a five-on-five -five fight with Killer Guy zoning in for the bot side with Yoda Q. Dragon is down to about 2,500, and Othkarik doesn't have that jump. You're going to have to blind jump this one as best you can. You do have a pink ward in the pit, oh, but the dance is it. too good. Silver Dream is able to block down with the rest of the team. Kid Quill is going to jump at the back line, but look at the split fight. It's front line versus back line versus front line versus back line, and Othkarik is dancing. The Corky Magic goes all the way in the back line, and I look at Trees is now going to get jumped on, but a flash over the fear means this is University of Arkansas stealing away a mark. They get the kill. The kill comes through back on Sir Tuttle, but it's a support. You're not worried about it. University of Arkansas, take two and take the Dragon Jury Panthers. I don't think want anything else to do with this fight. And I mean, they, they still are around here. Killer Guy does have the health and has Yoda in their back pocket with the eat to be able to keep they're them alive. So, I mean, they're still coming. I mean, they, they, they can. They do have enough damage oh. here. Kid Quill messed up that flag and drag. It went a lot shorter and without the flash. That's very, very dangerous. Lazy Lambo is not going to walk in uh -oh. and immediately try and chuck out Lazy. Oh that's my god, be the cash, But that is Killer Guy. I said I wanted to see Killer Guy pop off. And that's what happens. The chase is good. I was wondering how it was going to work. And they pull it off. A final Q sends it as Jury Panthers chase their prey. And the Razorbacks are slaughtered for a feast. That dragon, yes, you got it. But the cost was immense as the ace came out and Jury Panthers will look at Baron. I mean, you said it, Orbital Guy. You wanted to see Killer Guy pop off in a fight. There does exactly that. Flash queuing to take down the Jinx. 
a nice 950 gold in their back pocket and the baron for the rest of the team on top of that killer guy right now is having an absolute monster of a game the carry potential player along with baymax on this gin and university of arkansas yes you get the drake but you lose that on that baron and now jury panthers can start pushing out these side waves and really making it difficult for university of arkansas to keep that vision and keep their tempo oh it was so good now keep in mind though killer guy only got that off because of the flash difference in the current state right you had to burn the flash to get close and if you don't have it well you're pretty much dead in the water at the same time however the threat is now there that threat is now firmly ingrained in the arkansas razorbacks minds now this victor will destroy you if you are not careful if you step up too far if you let yourself take these hits it can be a whole different beast baymax of course the healer and turned dealer at this point is five two and six also has that uh, that lord dominic's regard and that's going to start shredding through silver dream who has stacked up uh, no and absolutely zero uh, armor or magic resist <laughs> yeah and i mean one of the things that i think victor does so well and that three panthers did so well in that last fight was the zone control even though the drake went over to university of arkansas and the fight looked a little bit scary like you saw corky and jinx were just sitting by one of the chokeholds continuously just getting like laser blocked like they couldn't move because they're so scared of the damage that the victor puts out and if they can continuously do that that means that university of arkansas doesn't just get a free fight unless something like package is available where they can just have an on-demand engagement onto a lot of members the fights are going to look so disjointed because they have to respect the victory damage this point. So far, they have to respect Killer Guy, not Yoda Q. Uh, Yoda Q is just a fat, tanky boy. He's doing his job right. Two, one, and three so far. 173, uh, 72 CS, if I can count correctly. And so far, it is looking like they're trying to stack up another set. I think that's a Gargoyle Stone Plate uh, being built right now alongside that Bramble Vest. That's going to sit there probably for the next few minutes. Of course, taking a look at the CS per minute, I Look at Trees has continuously kept at the top 245 at 8, 4, and 2. So you can see that has completed the IE three items deep matching. But the three items deep is much stronger for this Jinx, uh, already going for that Null Magic Mantle. And I think one of the other things in terms of like talking about the Victor and the Tom Kench is that the Tom Kench right now, the job of the Tom Kench is basically to play it like a support. Like you're just you're just sitting next to Killer Guy and making sure Killer Guy doesn't die. That's really your only job right now is the Tom Kench, because if Killer Guy dies, the damage really isn't there. Yes, Jin has three items, but it's not consistent damage like the Victor can from top. The Victor can just continuously, you know, throw out his spells, but Jin doesn't necessarily have that with the ability to have to, you know, reload and stuff like that. So they need to make sure that beyond everything, Killer Guy stays alive, and with this dragon coming up in 30 seconds, it's make or break kind of for both of these teams, right? Where it's like, if University of Arkansas gets this and they can put Soul Point on the table, I'm extremely worried. It feels like Drury Panther need this more than University of Arkansas does at, no, Arkansas does at this point to try and get to that Soul and try and make sure that this game doesn't go like 40 minutes where Corky and Jinx are just going to be too much to handle. It's already reached. It's already there. We're, we're at that point where one single mistake can cause a collapse of the tension that's been rocking. And Yoda Q eating up that damage. You can see it has been soaking up that damage so, so well. But the Dragon's already started. So this time, Jerry Panthers are on it first. We're not sure if University of Arkansas really want a chance, but that's going to be the flag down. But the Dragon's not there. Silver Dream straight into the back line. The clone is actually attacked. Oh my God. The killer guy is so low. Silver Dream needs to die. Yoda's not but there. it's not going to happen. He's still alive for a little bit longer. Yoda Q right in the back line. Has a great health, is going to help take one down, but it is going to be the chase out. Jury Panthers took the dragon and are now going to pay for their lives. Look at the rockets. Look at the damage. The Jinx is excited. A third triple kill here in this game. I look at trees as monstrous. What an absolutely sick engagement, though, from Silver Dream. Going into the back line, understanding that the one we need to get is Killer Guy. Take out the victor, and they do exactly that. And Yoda was just not in a position to be able to eat the victor and keep him safe. He was zoned out completely at the start of that fight. And really good awareness from University of Arkansas to pounce onto that victor, knowing doesn't have any type of mobility. No flash as well when that fight was started. And University of Arkansas... They do lose the Drake, but they gain so much in terms of continuing to keep themselves afloat in terms of being able to get Jinx more kills, keep these 
two carries in Quirky and Jinx getting so far ahead. They can now take as much vision as they want and push out these waves, get more gold in their back pocket. It was so, so powerful. And my gosh, this fight. We were wondering how this rematch was going to go. We were curious how it was going to go. Remember, Jury Panthers <laughs> won their first series back in week one. And the Arkansas Razorbacks want revenge. And this is one way to do it. Yes, you are down. You're looking at Soul Point. But it's still there. The Jinx is outputting so much. Once that LDR comes through, if you do pick it up, is going to shred through everyone. You saw how long yep. it took to get through Othkarik and Yoda Q. That's not going to happen anymore. It's going to be three auto attacks and you're dead. That is it. Silver Dream as well has been so pivotal in ensuring that the team stays up and has to drop that cycle and just to try and get away. Oh, this is going to be a collapse though. Is this going to be a full collapse? Do they want to help Silver Dream out? Doesn't look like it. I mean, it's good though that they get the ultimate, the Cyclone out of Silver Dream because now they can threaten a little bit in terms of Baron because realistically here, if Wukong joins this fight, is not going to really do much without Cyclone in their back pocket. So they can basically just move around the map now with the idea that the Baron could potentially be on the menu. But really good ideas from University of Arkansas. They're just going to be like, okay, we're just going to start going mid. We know where everyone else is on the map. And we're going to try and take down some structures. Corky's in the bot lane, pushing significantly, getting Whoa. more gold in their back pocket. And well, we've been talking about Killer Guy this whole time, right? 11 kills. Corky's now on three and a half items. So... It, it's still going to be a ton of damage pumped out from this Quirky, even if you get to the Jinx. And at this point, I mean, everyone's hit their uh, their power spikes, right? At this point, it's just the extra damage tagged on top of it. Unless you're looking at a Rabadon's Death Cap from Killer Guy, which that is a very expensive purchase at the very end of the day. Good news is, that'll be the sixth tower for Jury Panthers as they lock down pretty much every single tower on the outside. All that's left is the Inhibitor and Nexus Towers. That does mean they are free to roam inside the enemy jungle. They have so many wards down, and you can see the clearing coming out of Kid Quill. They do have to keep eyes, though. Lazy Lambo has been so good with this package, and waiting to time that out is going to be pivotal. And, I mean, it seems like we're just kind of going back and forth between both these teams in terms of wanting to go for the Baron or not. It feels like Drew Panthers does have a slight advantage in terms of the vision at the current moment, but now with the University of Arkansas... And those resets coming in from Jury Panthers, University of Arkansas can start to clear and set up their own vision line as, I mean, they definitely don't want to take a fight with Quirky still with the package. If they can just wait for that to time out and then they can go to the Dragon in a minute, that's really where I think they're going to be able to win a much easier fight as, actually, it looks like University of Arkansas is not even going to give them a chance. They have package, they know they have an advantage, and they're just going to be going in for the Baron. Might as well. It's melting. Oh, my God. It, it's so easy to do. Now, the question is, is again, gone. every it's time these teams try and go for these objectives, the deaths that come afterwards are so, so big. And now they're going to try and take the chance. Yoda Q straight in the back line. So is that draw. The horsey is in the back. But how quickly do you fall? You get cut down like cheese. Whatever you want to say. The butter is gone. The other guy takes one. It's still a double kill. I look at trees. Is the one to watch. And just as Baron is coming up as well, both junglers are down. Curtain Call is going to be used, but look at the body block and the hook. It was just a Good bait. Hook. It was all a bait. Baymax takes the kill, and it's even up two kills to two. Of course, that still means that Baron is on University of Arkansas with Dragon coming up in just a few seconds. It could easily be a tower to rotate for the global objective. Oh, yeah, this tower is gonna, uh, fact, that's going to feel so bad. Not going to lose their life for it, but it just feels bad that you're not able to reset there. And actually, they've kept the victor by this. Oh, okay. No. Look at, the Look at the flank. Look at the victor. Are they going to be able to spot him out? Four oh, kills. That bush. That bush is so good. Do you get the pop? Oh, you went on the other side, though. You could have had the jinx, and that stasis is oh, going to work heal. out so well. The follow through is going to be good. Both summoner spells are down. One more outside could take it. You get the stasis. Why are you running back? There it is. Thousand gold to the Baymax. The healer is definitely the dealer, as that is going to be soul for Jury Panthers. They pick up the Hextech soul, the all-important dragon, and the zaps are going to be good. The damage is going to be that much better. And University of Arkansas, as quickly as they got the Baron, lose, I think, every single piece of it. I mean, what a play from Killer Guy, though, and Fat Cat, just staying there, knowing that they have somewhat of a position where there's no vision, they can just kind of come out of this bush and realistically take Drake and win the game, potentially. Like, now they have Soul. This is, it's a win condition for them. <coughs> Granted, we're still at the point where Jinx is on five items right now, has GA in their back pocket. It's still much harder 
for Drury Panthers to win at this point, but with Killer Guy and with Fat Cat, or with Baymax being able to have this Hextech Drake in their back pocket, it makes it more of a winnable scenario. And 100%. now they are going to be able to potentially stall until we get to a point where they can take Elder, or if they just win a fight off the back end, they can just walk to the base of and we have to applaud Killer Guy and Fat Cat for that play. That was a battery mm -hmm. play between the mid and support to call out the angle and say, well, we know where they're probably going to go. They're probably going to go to Dragon. We can play with that, right? We can absolutely play with that. And that's what they did. They hid in the bush. They pulled a Fnatic Deathbrush with only two members and were able to secure it. That is not something that you do if you feel like you're behind. That is something that you do when you feel like you have the damage and have the strength and really having that uh, positive side of things saying we can still go for this that is very impressive to do still is a baron for a little bit on mm -hmm. two silver dreams but it will be taking away after five seconds here and having a bit of a party in this bottom Whoa. side holy cow the rockets from lazy lambo say goodbye to most of your health Jin. that's the, gonna be the turret and i mean this is the scary part we're corky jinx late game past 30 minutes even though you have soul as Drew panthers it feels like you got to still make a lot of miracles happen right here. You had the chance. You can go for the all-important Wombo combo, but look at that shot again. Baymax is going to have to walk back. He's going to have to heal up. Looks like the tower is going to slowly whittle away. I look at Shreeze. doesn't even want to step up because, of course, you could die, but Lazy Limbo is absolutely okay with it. This is now going to be the bot lane party as the ARAM has moved to that lower lane. And, I mean... Kind of just like looking back and zooming out a little bit here. We, we talk about the fact that there is like somewhat of a range advantage on University of Arkansas. And you did see a little bit of that, right? Where it was just like Porky shoots two rockets at you and Baymax has to walk back to heal. It's very like, unless you're eating it in the front line, like Othric or Yoda is standing in the front line eating those rockets and they somehow manage to get beyond, you know, say it gets to Killer Guy, right? One rocket could completely just decide a team fight. And we're at the point right now at 37 minutes with Death Primers where one team fight one death could just spell the end of the game you're looking at 45 to 50 seconds on those death timers and that is a significant chunk of time uh still the towers are not matched up university of arkansas have left one tower on the top side can't really force that one so not too worried about it but it feels like they're just waiting for the next baron right minute 30 on the clock you don't want to try and close out without it you might as well prep for it so you can see everyone kind of gliding off to the rest of the lane still picking up that free farm that's around and Stacking up for their final items, taking a look across the board. Only two members are at full build. I take that back. There are three in this game. That is going to be I look at trees, a Baymax, and Killer Guy. All of them sitting at the appropriate bonuses at this point. Uh, if they get any more kills in about three minutes, we could just see boots sold. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, hey, just go to six items. What does it matter right now? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just make yourself even more deadly than mm -hmm. you know, Corky four items, Jinx five items as uh, scary as that proposition sounds. But again, I don't think we're going to be seeing too much in terms of fighting until this Baron starts or until Elder. Like Those are going to be the uh, breakpoints right now between both of these teams is when do those fights start and how are they going to go? And again, with GA on Jinx, is going to most likely also have the summoner spells in their back pocket when this fight breaks out. All of the teams have their summoner spells. So this is a fight that I think just in a raw like 5v5 unless there's some like huge massive flank from killer guy and he can one shot someone in a full 5v5 even with hex Texel, i still think i favor university i would as well and when you get caught out like this as well and lose 50 percent of your hp it's hard not to favor them right that is such a great start to the fight yoda q one of the main tanks that you have to try and cut through if you already drop them down that that gray health can't be utilized so it is going to be Dragon started up here oh, very, no, very quickly, and I don't think they're too worried about it. Again, it is going to be slowed down. They're going to try and draw the GP, but I think it's very, very low already. They're burning through this way too quickly, and it's already down to slow HP. It's, it's gone. It's gone. The Baron's already there, and Yoda oh, Yoda. now has to run. Oh, Dre Panthers might be in the wrong spot. You do almost got to get away, oh, but you flash this... into the rocket path. That's going to be the call. The curtain call is open. That's going to be the curtain call. Does it catch anyone? No. Everyone gets out of the fight. They're low. They're extremely low. Can Killer Guy clean this up? You had the flash. You want to oh, look for guy. that jinx, but look who it is. The pop goes the weasel. Baymax takes that support kill. And it's going to be three healthy members of Jury Panthers, whereas four bleeding HP bars by the Razorbacks. This could be a chance to push in and get an inhibitor.
Yeah, you know, three will just push forward and try and take as much as they can away from this jungle at this point. But, like, gold seems to be slightly irrelevant at this point as well. Yes. With what we're talking about. You know, 40 minutes into this game, everyone's basically as strong as they're going to get. And it's a barren secured for, uh, for University of Arkansas. And now we turn our vision over to that elder, which is going to be incredibly important. But the death timers are still pretty significantly long. For Drury Panthers, Othkirk's not going to be here in time. 12 oh. seconds still until they're back. This is a free, this should be just a free Drake for University of Arkansas. Not just free. It's the fact that they found out where Fat Cat, Killer Guy, and Baymax were, so they know exactly where it's that gone. zone is going to come from. Oh, that poke Killer Guy is now going to get jumped on Flash for Flashes there. And they're going to look. The hook is going to go, but it's not going to land. Silver Dream is going to lock out that back line, and that's going to be the soul or the Elder Dragon really zipping away at the HP bars. Now this poke is going to be so devastating, but oh. Killer Guy says no, thank you. At least you get a save one. Oh, Sir Tuttle has to flash away. The Lulu is out of the fight. Baymax is going to try and sacrifice for a one for one. Maybe you get it. Maybe you don't. That's going to be a Q into death as Killer Guy is going to try and lock down Kid Quill. You can get the extra shield. Is he out? Get a little extra help. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> dipping and dodging. Oh, can you actually what? get the kill? No yeah, shot. the laser. One laser. That's going to be it. Silver Dream is going to try and follow up, but it is going to be the block. The oh, the Zonyas work so well. One more laser can't finish it, and all of a sudden, the death comes through. The waterfall of death lands into Arkansas's pocket as they take four once again. It's only Yoda Q for the next five seconds, and in that instance, I don't think there's much you can do. I mean, it's Yoda Q, and then Thresh is coming up. This Jinx has 18 kills, still has GA in their back pocket. Orbital, I think this is done and dusted right now. University of Arkansas, unless something disastrous happens for them, it's going to be the end of the game here, and they're going to be taking a 1-0 series lead. And the one to finish it off, the one champion that you love to see, it is I Look at Trees. 18 kills so far, potentially going to pad the stats a little bit more. The Corky teleported kills? in oh. for a little bit of fun. <laughs> University of Arkansas Razorbacks take a game number one. It was back and forth, even at 25 kills, but the scores could not be any different as the Nexus explodes. And it is going to be a 1-0 for the Razorbacks as they look to try and upset the history. I mean, to, to be fair, I really love what I saw from Arkansas Razorbacks in terms of their jungler as well. Like, the fact that they had, like, you know, on the Jarvan, just the amount of engagements that they had, even at the start, like, that first triple kill that the Jinx got, the one of, like, I think four or three of them that they got, the first one where they were down in that bot lane, it seems like once that happened, it set the tone for the rest of the game. And like I was talking about, even through Hextech Soul, the best soul in the game, it feels like, Jinx Corky into the late game is just too much to handle. And unfortunately for Drury Panthers, when we talked about them having to snowball and them wanting to snowball, it just was not quick enough for them to sustain themselves through the onslaught of damage that was coming into that late game. And Arkansas Razorbacks take a very good first game here and now are on serious point to try and get themselves that second win. So, so good, and I'm very, very excited to see what the next one has in store for us. I mean, if that's game number one, I mean, I can only expect more <laughs> bloodshed, more craziness, more action to show up here on the Rift as we continue with week six of the MEC. Of course, though, we can and will talk about the fact that we are currently at Drew University. Um, real quick, oh, do we... Uh, no, sorry. My brain did not work right there. We do have to thank our lovely sponsors that are currently making this possible here with the MEC, Atlantic, Tapalti, Skulls, and Gangster. All of them so wonderful to bring this action to you live with all of these awesome groups, especially Skulls. If you want to wrap up with that awesome, awesome gear, you can go ahead and take a look there. Go ahead and go to Skulls and type in Unified, and you can see all of that lovely, lovely merch right there. Deck out in some green and black. Also, if you're currently at the Ajuri University facility, you can also try and check out some of the other tournaments that they have running right now. I already know, I believe, all the FGC games are currently running here today, as well as some of the others. But tomorrow, there's even more competition, as it will also be Valorant and, I believe, uh, Rocket League. Both those tournaments are still free to sign up for, so make sure to try and get in on that action as well. But that'll be it for this game number one. We'll be back for game number two at the MEC between Drury Panthers and the Arizona Razorbacks. It's going to be... Uh, Arkansas Razorbacks, so sorry, not Arizona. My brain did not want to work. We'll be right back in just a few.
And welcome back. We are ready to go for our game number two between Jury Panthers and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Game one was a thriller and a banger, if you will, with Trees coming out on top with that Jinx. An immaculate score. 18 kills, I believe, was the final kill count for just the Jinx. It was a fantastic time. But it was not all easy going as the Panthers were able to bite back every so often. And we're excited to see what game two has in store for us. Yeah, I mean, Killer Guy specifically on the victor, I think, was the one that helped Drury stay afloat for a lot of that game. And unfortunately, it was just too much at the end. Corky, Jinx, late games, five items on both of them. It's almost impossible to win games like that. And just the amount of poke that was coming out from the Corky, we were looking at Baymax on Jin getting three shot and having to like go back to spawn. It was a very, very tough situation. One of the things that I think that University of Arkansas, or Drury Panthers rather, need to do probably here is ban either the Corky or the Jinx. I think Jinx would probably be the one I would ban because the way that it was played was extremely good, and I don't think that you want to give that one back over to them. So I think Jinx is definitely a possibility of a ban here compared to what we saw in the last time. And also, don't give them like a Lulu Jinx lane because that lane in the late game is pretty good. Who would have thought? <laughs> It's only a little bit strong. It's only yeah. only a wee bit strong, you know. And taking <laughs> a, a look at it, they, the enablers that it's they brought cool. alongside, yeah, just a just a wee bit. It's not like the OG <laughs> combo for Jinx or anything. Oh my gosh! Uh, but taking a look at it, of course, we we do have to we do have to give huge props to Quill uh, on mm -hmm. this J four. Yes. It was such a large enabler, and it was a huge reason why uh, for the side of trees that they were even able to do so. So now into this second game into the draft, we really want to take a look and see what's going on here with Arkansas on the blue side, and of course the jury on the red. We're gonna start things off. It is gonna be the Udir first span out. And one of the things I wonder is, uh, are you know, what are the bans going to be? It looks like it's already the same for University of Arkansas, where they're taking away the Udir, you know, high intense or high clearing junglers is something that we've been talking about kind of coming back into the meta, especially with the Hecarim that we saw. But I wonder as well for kind of Drury Panthers, how they're going to switch up, if they're going to switch up their type of composition and type of play style, because it felt like it was very, you know, long range with the Jin, with the Hecarim, you know, have that follow up damage onto the Hecarim, but Unfortunately, the one thing that was a bit of an issue was that Hecarim was always going in alone, didn't really have another type of engage. Sure, Tom was like another option, but I definitely would have rather have seen something that's a little bit more team fight friendly instead mm -hmm. of that. So that's definitely something I'm going to be looking out for as doesn't seem like much is changing. Zeri is going to be banned from Jury Esports. Like, obviously, you don't want to give that one over on B1. That's just asking for another, you know, Jinx style of carry <laughs> composition from my look at trees. So standard all across the board. Definitely thinking that this Kid Quill uh, at least is a thing that Drury Panthers is ready and aware for. They have to be, but again, on red side, you're forced into two or three bands that you really have to worry about. So uh, we were talking a little bit earlier in the intermission that we were expecting a red side Jinx ban to come out here. You just can't give it over. Yep. You don't have an answer appropriately for it. If you leave it open, it will be first picked, and you'll have to have uh, the exact same talk about how to deal with it and might even have to uh, first pick that. Oh, okay. the mm, Okay, so, so this is either Hecarim yeah. or Jinx. This is Hecarim or Jinx, I would assume. It's, it's, I think first pick Jinx is, I think it's fine because you can, at least this way, like go on the other side and take like a lane that's going to be able to counter it. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. that's obvious. So I look, Tree's going to get back on Jinx. Now you, it opens you up a little bit. You know, you can have Hecarim again if you would like. You can also get something like a Thresh of Filios, which is a very powerful lane in and of itself because I don't think you would necessarily. I don't, I mean, I think giving away Jinx Thresh isn't the worst thing. I think it actually would be better for you to take away the Lulu or something like that, but the Darwin is going to be taken away. I think that's, that's definitely a Kid Quill thing where they're just like, we don't want Kid Quill to have this mm -hmm. Jarvan. We want some of that early game potential in our junglers so that we can, you know, maybe snowball a lane effectively and not just snowball the jungler itself. Now the pinch comes in, so I'm wondering if they are going to take that Lulu. Uh, that is something that they could have Thresh. hopped into, but now taking the Thresh, going back to kind of Old Faithful here, uh, going back with the Thresh, and this time I, I, I also dislike it a little bit. You leave it open, you know that lane's going to come out. So Jury Panthers, uh, of course, realizing what they have left open. They have left open two priority picks, what? but it's not going to be the Hecarim. They're going to go with the Sejuani. What? And this... This is full on putting a lot of eggs into Tree's basket, right? The Sejuani yeah. is there just straight up to front line, straight up to CC. You are going all in saying you don't have a good response for the Jinx. And, and I think it's also, it is technically a flex as Lulu's going to be coming out. Obviously, mm -hmm. don't want that one to go past the ban phase because it will just be banned out. 
Um, but yeah, she's kind of fallen off a little bit. It feels like <laughs> yeah. Sejuani. You know, I remember a couple of years ago when it was just like Sejuani all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, this does open up though the ability for Dree Panthers to counterpick with like a Trundle in the top side, which is something that we have been seeing. Or you can, I mean, Jarvan even top could go there, but like we, this does open up Trundle as a possibility as it will be Camille. So mm. no ADC picked for Drury Panthers, which tells me that they probably are just going to be thinking that Jin will get through this ban phase and they'll just pick Jin to kind of counter the like, Jinx. But we saw how that worked out in the lane last time and it wasn't that great. I also, I mean, I, I feel like they almost just sacked it, right? With the lock-in of Camille, yeah. you are saying that that's your access point now. The problem that Drury Panthers did have was we were complaining about it a little bit or critiquing is the fact that they didn't have access. Well, with the J4 and Camille, those are great access points. Way better, I would say, than a Tom Kench and mm -hmm. a uh, and a Hecarim. So maybe that's where they're assuming that this uh, difference will come in. And I like kind of the shaker and the mover situation. With the Mordekaiser and the Nico band out, though, we are dropping back to that standard. The attack on the top side, though, I do have to give a lot of credit. credit. Yoda Q played a phenomenal Tom Kench. Silver Dream honestly had a little bit of a rough time, and, and that Wukong really didn't see any excitement until the mid to late game. Yeah, and I think as well when you're talking about this, the idea of like the lockdown, which I really like in this composition because specifically like with Jarvan and with Camille, um, I think that you just basically have buttons that can just make Jinx's life miserable. And even if she does get like <laughs> Tremendoed and Wild Growth, it doesn't matter because you just have just like you stick them in that one place and they will just continuously take damage. It's not something like a Thresh where you can pull them out. Here I would expect University of Arkansas to probably ban out... Oh, okay. I was going to say Galio would be the ban that I would be looking for because I think giving Camille Galio is very scary. Like, Camille Galio Jarvan, I think, is something that I don't want to see on the other side. Um, so that's interesting to me that they ban out the Ari. I mean, Ari, obviously. Orbital has been just, you know, kind of the plug-and-play mid laner yep. that's easy. Jin's going to be picked up. So bot lane, to me, is, like, sacked right now. It feels like bot lane's yes. just, like, going to be a thing that doesn't really get too much attention potentially they might send Othkirk down there a couple of times because you can gank a Lulu. I mean, it's you can gank a Lulu Jinx lane pretty effectively, but they did it last time. They did, yeah. So it is definitely a possibility, especially with the lockdown that Thresh and Jin does opt into you, but Lazy Lambo is going to get hold of a victor, and now we're going to be seeing what the top side is going to be. Is this going to be Sejuani top? Is there, you know, something else? And, oh, oh my God, it's the Darius. The counter pick oh, into the Camille. The gauntlet yes. has been... <laughs> Thrown down, Orbital. <laughs> the anger of that pickup. Uh, that was, I have to say, a very angry pickup. I was not expecting that at all. Uh, we were expecting Silver Dream to go a little bit more coordinated with the rest of the team. This is straight up, uh, maybe they heard us in the draft phase and were like, hey, uh, stop talking smack. Huh? It's a Kog'Maw mid. Yes. Yes. I am so loving this right now. I am so happy about this right oh now. Oh, my God. The reason is I am loving Kog'Maw coming back into the meta a little bit. It's not really in the meta. Don't get me wrong. It's not in the <laughs> meta directly, but I love the people that are still picking it up because Kog'Maw still has some of the best range, some of the decent damage output. If you can't get close with any other champions, Kog'Ma is a great way to go. And this is interesting. These last two picks that you have kind of throw a wrench into the entirety of the draft, right? Because mm -hmm. Darius feels like it's very much a vacuum answer to the Camille, where like in the early game, you're going to be able to smash the Camille if she like gets anywhere near you because you just kind of just hit them and proc your passive and Camille, unless she has hookshot, cannot escape you whatsoever. So into the late game, though, is where I worry a little bit because it's not Darius isn't really like a team fighting Mezzets. It's going to be a side laner. And at some point, Camille just will win through side because that's just what Camille does. You get, you know, true damage on your Q. It's a nightmare to deal with. But that Kog'Ma, like you were talking about, offers so much range. And I'm just thinking about Kog'Ma just dropping R's directly onto like the Jarvan ult, directly onto where the Camille ult is. It's going to mm -hmm. be something that it takes a lot of coordination for University of Arkansas to deal with because they need to get to that back line. Again, this is a composition that doesn't have a significant amount of range here. They do have a lot of engage that's on demand, you know, with the Sejuani, but you can only get one person with that. It does remind me of the fact that it goes back to exactly what we were talking about with Jury Panthers, right? The issue that they had in game one is they couldn't reach the back line. At this point, you not only have three access points with the Thresh, the J4, and the Camille, you now have the damage to follow up on it. This is a straight up, well, we can't get through the front line, so just ignore the front line. Toss an artillery off the top end. Toss an artillery straight into the back line. 
And at level 16, that range is ridiculous. And considering the last game went, I think, to like 35, 37 minutes, we know we're going to yeah. hit late game. We know that artillery is going to be <laughs> popping people left and right. So I love the shakeup. Again, it's no Zareth. It's no Zareth, which I'm very mm -hmm. upset at. But it's <laughs> just as good, I think. <laughs> and, and I mean, I think one of the other things that slightly worries me about University of Arkansas's composition is the fact that, like, in the last game, they were able to just use the Wukong and use the Jarvan as just basically bulwarks to keep the Jinx alive throughout all those fights. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily have that too much, right? I mean, they have the Sejuani, which will be tanky, but they don't have a second person to go along with the Sejuani. And that's something that I think I would have liked to have seen, you know, someone else to walk in front with the Sejuani, which Darius, not the greatest team fighting. I mean, I know in Silver, Darius can team fight like a menace because everyone in Silver, like me, doesn't know how to kill <laughs> Darius. But like in this game with these players who are actually really good at the game, they will know how to deal with the Darius, I feel like. And the way to deal with the Darius? Run away. Uh, don't yep. don't let the Darius get on you. My gosh, that is a painful time. I Is it bad to say that I first uh, I, I tried out Gwen for the first time like two days ago and I got my butt handed to me by a Darius? That was No, I mean that's that a was a very matchup. painful you, time. <laughs> you get countered. You get hard countered. That is like a genuine like I picked Darius because you picked Gwen. It's it's, it's yeah. a miserable time. See, it was 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was no. it was 3 a.m. for me. My brain didn't register that Darius is a counter pick, and I picked Gwen into it. I I did not enjoy my life very much. <laughs> well, you were playing a ranked game. Well, was it ranked? No, no, no. It was norms. Hundred percent okay. norms. <laughs> okay, because I was. Like, I'm if not you're a, top a ranked player. game. At, if you're playing ranked game at 3 a.m., it's a, you've already made a mistake. Yes, like, there's, there's already something that's wrong. <laughs> After 12 a.m., you're just you're yeah. you're not making good choices right there. <laughs> Uh, looking at it on the top side, though, Silver Dream already getting the better of this setup. The pressure is already set with the early level two. Y you don't want to deal with Darius. As we said, personal experience and gameplay-wise, you just can't give any chance over. Yeah, and, I mean, the thing about this is Darius will get a little bit of push here in this lane and could potentially attempt to stack up a wave if they decided to do so. And you could dive a Camille early game with the Sejuani in your back pocket. You know, get that lockdown. A lot of incoming burst damage as well from the Darius that can basically secure a kill like that. One of the interesting things as well that I'm looking at when I see the top side is that when is opted in for the flash, where it's usually like sometimes you see ignite uh, teleport mostly. This tells me that they're really keen on getting into that back line. Like knowing mm -hmm. that like beyond all else, like I don't care about my in lane in the early game with Ignite, like beyond all else, I need to get to the back line and I need to get be able to get onto like Jinx or Victor. And, you know, having Flash is another way to do that. That also means that for University of Arkansas, they have to be aware of that fact, right? This Sejuani that previously was probably picked up just to try and give Jinx an easy target to work with, will not have to be on the defensive, right? If they get to the back line, you better be ready to use that Glacial Prison to lock down the opponents that jump on the Jinx to be able to body block for the Jinx, right? That is something that really has to cross over the Razorbacks' minds. As we kind of look at this early game, not too much has happened just yet. Jarvan, I would expect to be the one who makes the first move in terms of what we see with any types of ganks or anything like that. As, ooh, the hook misses wide from Fat Cat. That could have been some summoners forced out. Nice thumbs up. But he actually, here comes Othkrig mm. and... It's just going to be like, I can queue out of there. I'm totally fine. But Killer Guy will get a nice little bit of push right here. But Lazy Lambo has the TP to come back into lane, so it should. Offer it. Going to go ahead and try and steal away a camp. And with the teleport coming in, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Good smite. Let's go down. Oh, and Killer Guy is going to walk in with a little bit of slowing field. And again, at the end of the day, you take a camp, you're happy. This is a lot of damage from Kogma, and you hit like... Mm -hmm. Like, and only has and only has a tier. That's that's kind of, I'm just kind of scary. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm a truther of this uh, AP Cogma <laughs> mid thing now, because that looked like it was not fun for a Sejuani. But the push is coming in the bot side for the Drury Panthers, which I mean, it, you know, kind of does with fresh and with and you do have a pretty good amount of wave there with the Q and mm -hmm. Sejuani is here in this scenario, but they do have war coverage with the traps on that top side. So Sejuani won't get a free gank here and they're already starting to back anyways so this is just going to be a reset for the jury pan it's a nice one as well right 45 cs you didn't burn a single pot so baymax is really really happy about this current situation 
Of course, the weight on the other side is going to be there as well for the Jinx. Being able to see as and only dropping two potions with the longsword gives you a lot of variability in how you want to uh, kind of pick up the next few items. Uh, if, with the last game in mind, we're assuming it's going to be the Noon Quaver coming out. However, we can also see boots maybe come out. If you are a little bit more worried about that gank in the bot side, considering how quiet Othkarik has been. And I also think this is most likely a game where they go Gale Force because you want that mobility, right? Like, Kraken Slayer in the last game was good because there was a lot of tanks you were playing up against, but, like, now it's just, I need something to be able to stay alive a little bit longer, and Gale Force offers that mobility. As we see in the top lane, I mean, this is kind of what you have to deal with if you're a Camille at this point. Like, you can't really contest Darius, especially when he's level 6 right here. Othkrik is in the area, and I do not believe he has been spotted, so lane gank is a potential here. They still don't see. Silver Dream still doesn't see me. But Yoda's not six yet. He's almost there. And it's a big wave as well. You have to keep in mind the damage yeah. that the minions can bring out. So that's why so they're kind of waiting around. around. I, I have a feeling they're going to call this off. And Yeah, I don't think they can. I don't, if, if they do, it's going to be spicy. Yeah, so recall. Don't worry about it. Don't don't give a potential double to Silver Dragon. And oh, did the I mean, minion walk over? If the minion saw it, that's so rude. There was no warn, minion. Yeah, why you? Why you got to do Othkirk like that, dude? That's the the game really just doesn't like Othkirk. <laughs> I feel like at that point, that's, that's so just mean. that's mean. <laughs> I mean, I've never uh, seen that. What? That's brutal. I can't believe a minion is gonna actually just give them vision like that. It, it, the game is the game what? is on the side. <laughs> it feels like a University of Arkansas. I, oh. I do have to go back and take a okay. look, but that's going to be oh. a, a little bit of an artillery. Oh. The chase is on. The, the ghost is there, and this could very Flash? well be a flash over the wall. Oh, he doesn't have it. It looks like, yeah, it, it was Are? already used, and so it's just yeah. a hard chase. And I mean, can you find it? The artillery almost predicted oh, he just a want... hair off. One more oh! shot is there! Killer guy with the blind artillery takes first blood after a lovely trek through the jungle. I mean, that was also the last one he was going to have because he had no mana. So <laughs> yeah. that one had to, it would, it had to literally be that one or nothing. And that's a nice first blood for this AP Kog'Maw to start things off. On the back end, you know, University of Arkansas did get a Drake for their troubles. But Lazy Lambo is going to have a hard time. I mean, staying in lane. We know that Victor is not the most mobile of champions uh, just with the movement speed that they have. So probably I think opting into boots would have been something that I would have liked to have seen from the Victor in this early game. But... Looks like they're going to be trying to just match up in terms of the damage, force out the Kogma as much as they can, but they just don't have a range advantage. They really don't, and if and if this Kogma is allowed to keep doing this, that is that is going to be that's going to be interesting because that's number one. Uh, just interesting. I'm I'm so so excited. So uh, again, this just gives a lot of credence to Killer Guy and the power of the Kogma that can come by later. Seeing in the bot side. You know, nothing too much happening here. Again, this is kind of what we talked about in the draft, where it was like, this bot lane's going to be sacked, right? Not, nothing really is going to be here. It's kind of a free lane, to be honest, because of the fact that, like, you're going up against, like, Jinx Lulu, and it's like, oh, you know, Jinx Lulu doesn't really have too much kill threat. It's just, like, really scaling the lane up, most likely more than anything. I would have liked to have seen, potentially, like, Fresh move around the map a little bit more, you know, engage in some other areas, because, like, you don't really have to be worried about Jin dying if he's playing the lane well so overall still not too bad in the bot side as we're going to be seeing in the jungle it cool taking up his camps towards this top side the next big objective that we have to talk about is going to be that rift herald that mm -hmm. is up and we'll see if university of arkansas are going to start moving towards it with sir tuttle up here i think it definitely is a possibility but othkirk orbital is in the area this is going to be the era, but I, I think spotted out on the ward. You can see the pings going down already. So drawing four members in. No real reason to force this. And with the flag going in, you know they're there. So don't really have to worry about it. And uh, even with the artillery, right, you don't actually have that much damage behind it. Killer guy really got that one from the early poke on Lazy Lambo. So with Sir Tuttle there, with the shields and with all the help, Rift Gerald is picked up and Kid Quill will go ahead and take a choice of where you want to drop that top lane, probably being the priority with one and a half plates already down. I think if you can snowball this Darius, it also does benefit you. I mean, he's already in a pretty good position, right? Look at him. He's up about 30 CS close right now. And Yoda just hasn't been able to play the lane, it feels like, because this Darius is just such a good counter pick. Can't really walk forward at all. As the hook comes out from Fat Cat, not going to be hitting its mark. 
as I think you're right. The Rift Herald is going to be something that is going to be pretty impactful. If they can maybe manage to get this Camille down as they're going to drop Rift Herald and Yoda just has to make a decision to either leave or I don't know. There is none. You do have Flash. You do have the team walking up. But how long is it going to be there? You are going to lock them down as quickly as possible, but they don't have Tower Aggro. Now they, they do. Down. Living Artillery comes in. Flash Ooh. out to save, but Othkirk is able to snipe that one down. Quill is going to try and run away. And it is going to survive, but the kill is made. You still take four, though. Four total plates are gone from that top side for the price of one death. You'd almost call worth if it wasn't so painful to watch. Ooh, yeah, I, mean, the, the, I think the rotation just a little bit faster from Killer Guy made... I was actually, you know, basically able to use all there. That's probably one that they could have used without as they're actually going to be backing in the bot lane. So I, I think the dive that happened was... It was a good idea. Basically, like, if they kill Camille there, they take him out of the game completely. Like, Yoda doesn't get to play League of Legends anymore. But Yoda mm -hmm. does have, like, a pretty sick engagement with the Hextech Ultimatum and basically makes Darius not able to get out of the way of any type of power damage that's coming into him. And they take down the kill very easily with the incoming damage from Killer Guys. So, a dive that gets some gold into the pocket of the Darius, who is getting close towards Triforce. We'll probably have it on the next back. But all in all, it could have been a lot more clean and now we have to see what happens with this next drake orb because drake is something that university of arkansas is going to want because that is going to be again just like their win condition right get towards that soul with cloud not being in the game anymore you know that soul is going to be good at this point this dragon it's going to be the last one that uh Arkansas will probably have to get without their top laner, and that's why uh, Jury Panthers are willing to try and force this one, right? You can see them pressuring down very, very quickly. A nice little stop on that uh -oh. route. It is going to be the hook going out. You catch the Lulu. Can you get the kill very quickly? No, the ult goes off, and that's going to be enough time for the uh, Sejuani to come in and take a fight, but the kill has been made. Now the curtain call opens up. They get the slow. I mean, it's against full HP targets. You do a hook on to the Sejuani, and now they're going to try and cut it down. Again, look at that raw damage come Resets out. Great though. kill to be made, but the resets could come through. Look how low they are. Lambo does have flash. Might be able to follow up as the rockets follow through on the back end. And it looks like it is going to be the cleanup as once again, Jury Panthers, they take the fight. But it's Trees that comes out with the kills. And that's going to be Dragon completed for University of Arkansas here, and they're going to start stacking those dragons like they were in that la or i mean like Drew panther was in that last game but now it's their time in this early game and i'm a little bit scared because Charter university of arkansas is still the team that has the jinx and if they're dragon stacking on top of that as well it gets even scarier going into that late game it is all of the engage all of the lockdown that you have would not mean anything if that jinx is said i mean instead of seven autos it takes five instead of five it takes three Dragon now being started up by the Lulu, just trying to try and draw it out, see if they can get anything. A double pink ward just to ensure that it takes eight auto attacks to clear those out. Dragon drop down to about 2,500. I don't think Othkarik is going to have a chance yeah. at going for this one. No reason to risk it. It is only the second trick of the game, as Infernal Soul oh, will be played brutal. over. This is... Arkansas Razorbacks are, like, perfect. This is chef's kiss on the top of the, uh, yep. uh, on the, top of the feast so far. And I think what we're going to need to see when it comes to this third Drake, because I think that's going to be the most important part of this next game, is is Yoda going to be able to get into this fight? Because Yoda hasn't been able to get into these fights because, you know, they've been getting shoved in as the uh, from the Darius this entire time. Silver Dream has been doing a great job of just smashing this lane and getting so far ahead. But in a team fight, realistically, Camille here just needs to hit R on someone. And specifically mm -hmm. that someone is I look at trees like I look at trees needs to be the focus has the gale force in their back pocket now to offer them some extra mobility as I'm going to be seeing some shenanigans in the mid lane. <clears throat> Othkirk can go in here with flag and drive, but oh no. And they're willing to turn it around. The kill comes through so well. The Camille came on the back end, but the wild growth keeps Lazy Lambo alive. And this is a fight Druid Panthers did not uh -oh, want to uh -oh. enjoy. From the back end, though, Baymax is able to take one. It is going to be the Darius picking up a kill and solidifies a second. A second can you one? get a third? Ooh! Yes, you can. The resets are good. And just like that, not only is I like trees ahead, but so is Silver Dream. It costs you quite a few, but the hyperscaling is just too good to pass up. I mean, but through all this, I look at trees is just saying in the bot lane, gonna get a, gonna probably get the turret for themselves. But 
man this darius has been an absolute menace throughout all of this early game yoda just wasn't able to keep up with the damage that the darius offers <clears> in the early game step up to those lanes or step up to the minion wave and do anything because you step up in one wrong move you get ew and queued you don't live against the darius in that early style of the match so already now with the triforce completed this darius will actually be a threat in a team fight because they just if they can get on the flank flash onto someone in that back line they're not going in they're dying they're going back to the gray screen i would also like to point out that was without flash right that was silver dream just with ghost getting the resets following through which means that they didn't time it properly jury panthers could be in for a really nasty surprise of that darius coming back with the call fields warhammer with that trinity force and just annihilating someone in the back line once again you're taking a look, I think that was also a shutdown that came out from the Kog'Maw, so just massive amounts of gold being dumped into Silver Dream's pocket. And you can see, uh, Yoda Q is like, nah, I ain't, I ain't even yeah. touching this one with a 10-foot pole. I mean, he can't. There's, there's no way to walk up to the Darius. The, the lane is, it's essentially, I mean, it's been over because the tier, tier 1 has already gone, but like now it's just over, over. And side lanes are just like something that they can't contest for right now. As with this pressure in the top side, they will just be able to take out this Rift Herald and... Get that one in the back pocket. More objective control coming out from the University of Arkansas, who have been doing such a good job in this early game of taking those advantages and using them effectively. As on the other side for Jury Panthers, I mean, the way back for them, it feels like is in the back pocket of the car. It's like Camille can't really, unless we get to like, you know, you know 35 minutes, Camille can't really do it. Jin is an okay prospect now with the Gale Force in their back pocket, but doesn't team fight as well as the Jinx. It really does seem like the team fight with something like a cataclysm on top of a Kogma, you know, some Kogma artillery damage is a way back in a team fight for three Panthers. It's really only one way to get back in the game, and at some point you gotta pull the trigger and say, yeah, we gotta send it. They kept up in kills, but they haven't kept up in the global advantages. They also haven't taken a single tower. Not even that, they really haven't even scratched it. You can see on the mini-map right now, all of the outer towers for University of Arkansas are very, very healthy. Uh, granted, that doesn't show, I want to say, up to a third is when the graphics start really kicking in, but that means they haven't even done a third of damage. You can see there, what? That is minute damage. It's like someone yeah. actually knocked their head against it. Bottom lane, <laughs> of course, a little bit worse for wear, but overall, they lost nothing. University of Arkansas did an absolutely immaculate job of defending their global objective towers yeah and i mean it's a 5k gold deficit right now for jury panthers and you know uh, something that's a benefit for them now is that they do get the luxury of having something like objective bounties on the board so if a team fight you know goes scary they are going to be able to potentially convert that into some more standing gold than the map Whoa. if you look at the player gold i mean it's the three people you probably don't want to see at the top of that if your jury panthers are at the top <laughs> of that list well, you know what? Lazy Lambo just got knocked out, so uh, Killer Guy is like, Hey, I'm up there. I'm good. I'm, here. I'm good, guys. Guys, <laughs> where, where is everyone? <laughs> yeah, they, they're getting close, but again, it's going to take a little bit of time. And as you said, all the eggs kind of in that Kog'Maw basket with the Leandries it is going to be bringing a lot. But that's a teleport coming in, and oh, good hook shot. Good hook Thankfully, shot. Yeah. that came out and didn't land before the upper hand came in. So Silver Dreams, with that pop of the ghost, is still looking for a little bit more here. With the deep spread of University of Arkansas, they actually do want to back away because that, that damage output is still somewhat scary. Good drop this of that Rift really Herald, though, to give him so such oh! an advantage. Oh, the catch is good. They're going to try and catch Killer Guy. He is going very, very low, Three and the follow through from Lazy Lambo is good. That's going to be the kills. The follow-up damage is going to be there. The laser to follow through, and Silver Dream gets the kill. No, that is going to be Lazy Lambo. That's going to be a double kill for the victor. And that's going to be it. University of Arkansas just wiped that fight. Now it's on the chase to clean up. Jury Panthers are routed. They are annihilated. They are cleaned up. Kid Quill, I, I don't know how close you want to step to this because yeah. you will get popped, but great. rest of the squad should pick it up easy. Oh, are they, is this the execute, actually? Oh, nope. the oh. W get zapped <laughs> in the back, and that's going to be more gold into the back pocket of I Look at Trees. Is so smart, I mean, from the University of Arkansas there and from Kid Quill, who... You know, knows they have Rift Herald, just drops it in that mid lane, and then in the confusion that Drury Panthers have after, it's like, you know, do we go kill the Rift Herald? Do we go and fight for Drake? Kid Quill just hits the go button. You know, just go in with the Q, put it directly onto the person you want to take out, which is going to be that Kog'Maw, get the resets for your team. That's a fight win for University of Arkansas, who are so incredibly ahead right now. 
and Drury Panthers down almost about 10k gold at the current moment. It's just looking dire for them. It hurts, right? This composition that they crafted specifically to lock down I Look at Trees has melted in front of their eyes. Silver Dream oh. has been one of those reasons that has worked, okay. but you know what? Killer Guy says, hey, we're not down and out yet. I'm still very strong. I'll get the shutdown and bring us right back in. That living artillery is going to bring more and more damage to the field. I mean, if there's a way back, it's through Killer Guy, like I talked about earlier, and it, it's through some of these objectives. Now, the fact that you've taken Darius out of the map for a little bit, you are going to be able to push some waves up a little bit forward without having to worry about the threat of Darius just walking at you and taking you down in the side lane gets Yoda a little bit back into the game with some of the waves that they're going to be able to catch and while it's it's good it's I don't it's not enough just yet right you need more of those types of picks to be able to really make an impact and dent this gold lead because it's pretty significant at the current moment. Scary, scary thoughts and looking down the itemization list. The Shadow Flame is ready to go for Lazy Lambo once again. Going to be burning through people left and right. <clears throat> with the push of towers, though, and with how far back Jerry Panthers have to play, Arkansas are just going for a very early Baron, and I, I don't think they it's going to be contested they have at all. no yeah. idea. Perfect they, they... play from Arkansas. They go ahead, take the buff. They're going to hand it over to their Victor and their Darius, who are probably going to start split pushing and look to take more of the base. I mean, that's just, again, with this top lane smash that we've had at the, top, at the early game and all the vision control that Drew Panthers basically can't contest with. The University of Arkansas can just walk forward into this quadrant of the jungle and put down as much vision as they want. Now with the Baron in their back pocket, they're going to be able to siege so well. And we have all five of the members of Drew Panthers up here. But while this is all happening, Victor's in the bot lane getting turrets themselves. <clears> so Drew Panthers have to make something happen if they're going to be all here as five. Either that or you just try and keep bleeding, try and keep giving a little bit more farm over to this Kogma, over to this Jin, And they know at this point, it is a five on four. You're going to try and go in. You do get the snipe, you get the slow, and you just lock him up. The hook follows through. The wild growth isn't going to keep Kid Cool alive for any longer. And they actually draw the teleport out. So one play is good. Killer guy and the rest of the squad are able to pick up a kill. Yeah, that's big that they got the teleport out because if Victor had stayed in the top side, it would have been a little bit scarier. Or bot side, a little oh. bit scarier. Ooh, here comes the engage, potentially. Oh, it was going to be the engage, but the rocket from downtown. Trees get some revenge for Quill. And University of Arkansas fire right back. They say, hey, you took our jungler. We'll take your bot lane. And I think they're going to be taking much more than that. They're going to be taking this turret right here, this inhib turret right here in the mid. Probably going to take the one in the top side as well. Inhibitors could potentially go down too because it's past 20 minutes. You can basically take those out without being worried about funneling too much gold into the enemy team. But don't have too big of a wave to work with on that mid side or that bottom side or the top side. So it's just going to be that one inhib turret and it will look to move towards the bottom lane. Pick up you know, pick up all the vision that they want and just push those waves forward a little bit more. This Baron power play has been pretty significant. 3.6k gold already with a minute still to go. And the lead for University of Arkansas just continues to balloon. It's never ending. It's it's never ending. But what you could try is at least cut it down a little bit. Take a little bit of air out of Oof. the sails. But that the damage movement. is too good. You can see on the split side, it's just a flash in. I look at Tree said, well, I'm probably dead anyway, so I'll take two more with me. Lazy Lambo says, hey, I might be able to do that too. Oh. Good shield comes out from Fat Cat. And the chase might be there, but look at that zap. That zap deleted Baymax's HP. Even though Lazy Lambo has no a, uh, any mana, it doesn't matter. The damage was just too good. It is a nice 1k shot down onto the Jin, mm -hmm. So going to be giving some gold over to that AD carry. But again, I don't know how much is going to matter. I mean, it, through all of that, there were still two kills onto the Jinx in return. So... And now, again, it's still a lot of vision control just here by this jungle. You are going to be able to just keep all of this for free and come back in and take this Infernal Soul. And when Infernal Soul drops, it feels like that's the end of the game here, Orbital. Like, I don't know how you can test Infernal Soul against a Victor and a Jinx. It just seems, like, miserable. It seems like... It's a sad moment, and you can see Jury Panthers are going to try and mount Ooh. one more defense. That laser is keeping Baymax back. Thankfully, Baymax has a way to elongate that battle. It's Killer Guy, right? Killer Guy really wants that blue buff, is going to be able to oh, pick it up. The fall through is there. Fat Cat does get hooked. Oh, that does go wide, though, with the Glacial Prison, but the fight has already been made. Look at the double kill. Make it a oh. triple. 
Pen as Silver him. Dream wants a bit more, is looking for those resets once again. A level 14 Darius is so, so scary. Follow through on the slow, a flash in, and then a kick Ooh. to the back of the head. Baymax is going to survive as, again, you didn't have full stacks of that hemorrhage. But it doesn't matter as Lazy Lambo is looking to just end the game. It's an attack on three different fronts here as a dragon is being taken. The base is being taken. The lives are being taken. And Jury Panthers are watching their base fall like dominoes. They are a little bit low on the back side, but Lazy Lambo... Jeez. Oh my god, you cannot step up to Lazy Lambo on this victor. Oh, but a double kill on the back end with the passive. Yeah, that was a great bomb to explode, but remember they got enough. It is going to be the save. Jury Panthers are allowed to survive for a little bit longer. Curtain Call is going to be used. Body blocked by Kid Quill. Might actually uh, be willing to take a bit more. Flash out of the way. Yoda Q does get bounced away with the Blast Cone. Kid Quill did a great job body blocking, and the University of Arkansas take so much. Yes, three deaths on their side. They took the base, though. They broke it in inhibitor. They have the soul, and they're looking at Baron here in the next minute and a half. Yeah, I mean, the game doesn't end, but it feels like it's prolonging the inevitable a little, right? Mm -hmm. University of Arkansas, again, has Infernal Soul. Drury Panthers are down 10K gold. It's just a very scary situation for the Drury Panthers to be in. And it feels like now they'll just wait till the Baron comes up in a minute. If you're University of Arkansas, take all that vision away, secure yourself a Baron, because realistically, like walking into the composition of University of Arkansas, if you're Drury Panthers, is a nightmare. You're walking into a Sejuani, you have no vision. You're walking into a Victor with no vision. It's just, you're, you're walking into a Darius with no vision. It's just a nightmare. You're playing a horror game, essentially, right now, if you're Drury Panthers. A horror game that they did not want to play, right? You came to play League of Legends, not Jump Scare City. It's like, don't, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> My heart can't take it enough already. So, <coughs> excuse me. We are taking a look here at the next few minutes as it could be the last for the Jury Panthers. If they lose here, they lose the series and are down at 1 in 10 here in the MEC week number 6. And that is a place that you don't want to be in. The options are limited, but even limited, they still have one or two. Kid Quill, of course, popping up. Baymax getting a good chunk onto Tuttle, who is going to oh, run away, okay. lose about 50% oh. HP. But a follow-through on the back end means it's a split fight. The, the Victor is nowhere near them, so they might be able to follow through. But no, Kid Quill is so tanky. The Rocket from downtown is able to keep Killer Guy on the back foot. And Kid Quill soaked all that up. University of Arkansas still challenging for this Baron. Yeah, but, I mean, Kid Quill did end up using the engagement tool of, of the Bolo and the ultimate from the Sejuani, and is going to have that for this fight, but this Baron is getting absolutely melted right now. There is a lot of siege coming in from Killer Guy, who's doing some damage off the back end. They are dancing this a little bit long, though, so this this does worry me a little bit. The stacks are starting to build up, and Kid Quill, uh -oh. I, I'm not sure if they want to stay in. This uh -oh. is going to be the curtain call pulled out and fired away, but the Lord Silver Dreams is running complete control here. The Zap, the Chaos Storm did its job. Yes, you lose your Darius, but the damage and the burn has started. The follow-through is so good. Double kill for the victor. And that is Jury Panthers annihilate. The J4 has to run away, and Lambo is already in the base. Yeah, Lambo is just going to take this one. There are some super minions here. Sir Tuttle stops the back on the oh. Jarvan. Oh, Othkarik. Uh, this is just going to be sad. Rocket? Rocket is going to be there, and it's a it's a polymorph. J4. I, I don't think it's going to be a solo kill. Sir Tuttle might fall here. But it's the base. The base <laughs> is annihilated. The base is done. Yeah, one super minion to rule them all as University of Arkansas Razorbacks take a series and get revenge for their week one loss. I mean, Arizona Razorbacks there, what can I say about the team fighting that we saw from them? I mean, getting jinxed twice, absolutely unreal plays coming in from the ADC of University of Arkansas. I think the jungling was also really impeccable in both of the games. And the Darius top side counterpick, so smart. Yoda Q didn't get to play the game of League of Legends, just essentially got taken out of the game all like all things considered there was nothing that he could do and university of arkansas two really good drafts and two really good play styles that take him to a 2-0 victory it was so well played and again well fought that jinx becoming a menace and 
Red Jury Panthers unfortunately can't get a win on their home field, and that's going to sting a little bit, but plenty to work on later on, right? Baymax in that bot side had a phenomenal game. Killer Guy as well, uh, pulling out the Kog'Ma. I hope we get to see a bit more of that. The Poke <laughs> Mage is coming in here, really laying in the damage. They just need a bit more, it feels like. They have the right ideas. The ideas are kind of floating around. It's in the brainstorming stages, but still can work with it later on. So very excited to see where they go from here. Of course, there's more League of Legends actions to come here shortly as the MEC will continue. We have three more series coming up here as for the next one, it's going to be such a fun time as we are going to see Grandview Vikings take on Ohio Northern, I believe, in our second series of the day. Don't go anywhere. Dancing begin. I didn't see that coming.
of silence. A moment, a moment 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 of silence. A moment, a classic, and at the same time, progressive. And welcome back. We are here and ready to go for an interview, actually, with one of the players coming in from the side of the Razorbacks. Again, congratulations on the victory. I believe we have Lambo here, and it's it's a good time. It's a good yeah. time, of course. How are you feeling after that victory? Uh, Good. Still a little, like, my nerves are a little racked just from, you know, playing the game. But I feel good. The game's went well. Awesome. Well, well kind of, like, tell me about, like, you know, take me through the early game, cause, like, or the first game that you guys were playing, because, you know, you were... Playing this very like you know quirky jinx yeah. late game scaling composition, you didn't manage to get hextech Drake. Kind of <laughs> take me through like your thoughts and processes. Like, where are we thinking? You know, do we still have an advantage? We don't have hextech Drake, but we have quirky jinx. Our bot laner has eighteen <laughs> kills. Like, what was the thought process there going in? Okay. Take me through. You know, guide us. Okay, yeah. A game one, our early game, just like touch on that, went really well. It was uh, nice and slow. We got that triple con into jinx, which was huge. Like almost went, like solo won us the game. We did have a few slip ups, but other than that, it felt like every objective fight, we would win the fight and then we'd, we'd just overtake a little bit. Like, I, I entered like four times at like, because we, we'd, we'd, we uh, flipped the drag each way, but then we'd get like two, three kills, and then I would just like go like hog wild, like W, w into them. <laughs> and I like Victor just one shot me like in that play, and ugh, that was bad. But like, then the last fight, we were like, okay, if we can win a fight, because we were winning every fight, and we were still confident we could win that even with Hexexel. If we can win the fight and then just rein it back just a bit, we can end the game. And that's what we did. It was such a fantastic time. And again, uh, 
facing off. I, I got to get some of the comms here because <laughs> trees in game one and trees in game two. It was so much fun. What what was the idea after a while? Because it seemed like in game two, you're just like, all right, screw it. Looks like trees is having a great time. <laughs> was that kind of what it was? It was just like, all right, we know who's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, uh, Will Will goes crazy. His name is Will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Will is a is a great player. I love him, man. It's <laughs> it's. He's all like, because as I said, game one, I kind of go a little crazy sometimes. Will's always kind of like the good, the good angel on my shoulder. Uh, like for the whole team, he's like, guys, let's just play front to back. We have the good comp. Let's let's play slow. Let's do it well. Like he's making right calls. He's positioning like perfectly. And then as you saw in these games, he just pops off. And, and speaking kind of your play a little bit, you like, take me through which one do you like better in the Corky Victor matchup? Do you like the Corky mm. or do you like the Victor? Because I I keep hearing that players hate playing both of them, but yeah, yeah. Corky more so than the others. It, it completely depends. If I if I think I'm better, like, okay, so Corky will outscale Victor, at least in my opinion. Like, very, like, I love playing Corky and a Victor, like, later in the game, but Victor has way stronger lane prowess, so, or, like, prowess. So you. Like, early you get the prio. If you're good enough, you can chunk him out, force him to lose CS. So if I think the other mid laner is, like, really, really good, I, I, won't, I won't take Corky into the victory matchup because they, they will punish me really hard. But if I think they'll let it slide, they'll let me scale, I love the matchup. As you saw, I, I pretty much got to free scale, and other than my deaths. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> it was a well-fought match, and again, a 2-0 for your team. You now move to, I believe, a record of 2-9, and nine, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> yeah. or 2-7. and 2-7, something like that. Uh, either way, it's a victory, and you got to tack it onto your record, which is Ooh. great. Is there anyone that you would like to kind of give a shout-out to uh, before we end this interview? Uh, just all my teammates, all of those guys. They've been great. We've had some up and downs, some stuff happening, but I don't know. It's a fun time. I'm enjoying it. And then my brother... And my girlfriend. That's awesome. Man. That's awesome. Again, again, Lazy Limbo, thank you so much for the interview and congratulations on the victory. And hopefully, you guys have a fun time out there at that Drury University. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. With that, we'll go ahead and head back into a break as we do get ready for our final match. It'll be about a 10 minute break to ensure that the players can get on the stage. Make sure everyone is ready for the second series. Again, it's the undefeated Grand View coming in versus Ohio Northern. You don't want to miss it.
And we are back, ready to go for this series. We are back with our second one of the day. It's still us here. Lovely, lovely Kenobi on the other side there. How you feeling? Are you ready for the second series as we're getting into the undefeated Grandview University? I mean, anytime I get to see Grandview University, I feel like I'm winning, honestly. Like, this team is just so good. Undefeated. The titans of the MEC at the current moment. Just when, I mean, they brought out Teemo last week. Like, how can you not love this team? They brought out Teemo in the year of our Lord 2022. It's just unreal <laughs> watching how much fun they have when they play this game. And not only are they having fun, they're doing it extremely well, right? Haven't dropped a single game so far, have been cruising through the other matches. And today we get another test of that as we are seeing a battle for that first place still for Grand View. But on the other side, for the side of, I believe it is going to be that lovely, lovely Ohio Northern they're the ones actually battling for, I believe, third and fourth place here. So they're currently sitting at six and three. That is one away from Ottawa Braves, who are currently sitting at fourth. So they don't want to dip down into that negative. So it's a uphill battle, but it's one that they're really hoping to win. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want to be on the higher side of the seating, you know, with third and so forth, because Grandview, I think it's like it's Grandview and Purdue Northwest who are pretty much the top two. And then there's a little bit of a drop, and that's where you get to, you know, Ohio Northern, Ottawa Braves, and Illinois College Esports. So I think when you look at this matchup, obviously it's against Grandview Vikings, right? It's a very hard matchup to win. It's the best team. They haven't lost a single map yet. It's just, how do you beat this team when they're bringing in things like Emo and when they just are so, so um, good at just what they do in terms of playing league of legends and i think for ohio northern they have some ways to kind of do that you know they like to play through early game a lot they can make it a little bit volatile not let grandview vikings get comfortable that's usually where we sometimes see teams like start to falter is like when they are pushed off their comfortability but again it's grandview vikings and it feels like they're comfortable on everything it's a scary thought to hear that if you beat them once they'll have to get serious and you're like well crap what do we what do we do from here yeah. and it's just like <laughs> they weren't already it's like, yeah it's like, it's like the guy that was like a you know the whole meme like sit forward in your chair about two more inches and all of a sudden they're oh, in go yeah, mode yeah. it's terrifying <laughs> it's terrifying to think about and i think that's gonna be another testament as we were saying it is starting to get to the latter stages of the season so you're already locked in pretty much a shoehorn for that one of the upper echelon spots for the side of ohio northern so maybe at this point even you have to kind of sit there and go, okay, well, what can we get out of this series, right? Are we just trying to get practice? Are we going to try some new compositions? Like, if they are going to lose, are they going to lose with grace or dignity or anything like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's basically about having a good performance. Like, sometimes you can have a per good performance and not, you know, win the game. It's definitely a possibility. So it's something that I think going forward we have to look at and kind of judge this by, like, okay, maybe they haven't won, but, they, you know, there's some good things that they can take, you know, going into the playoffs against some of those other teams that they have later in the or later in the tournament because that's really where I think a lot of the value comes from playing someone like Grandview is it's kind of like a measuring stick, like a litmus test of, like, where mm -hmm. you are and what you are as a team compared to the best of the best that MEC has to offer. It's so uh it, it's scary to say the least again as we move in just to give you a little bit of an idea there are eight weeks total here in the mec season and of course we are into week number six meaning there's only two more series that you get to play after this for the side of i believe it is ohio northern taking a look they do have to play uh purdue northwest in week seven and then in week eight we'll be taking a look at a few others that they can do but it's still Purdue Northwest is sitting at about, I believe, sixth place, uh, sixth or fifth place, so a little bit lower in the standings as well. It's going to be a challenge. It's still going to be a challenge to try and climb up the ring. So get every bit of practice that you can right now and work your way from there. Take every ounce of information that you can take from the Vikings, from the top dogs. What are they doing well? What are they not doing well? Whatever you got, take all of that, steal it away, and use it for yourself. So that'll be very, very fun. But I want predictions now, Kenobi, because you talked about the uh, the Teemo coming out here. What else are we going to see? Like, are we going to see an ASOL come out here? Mm -hmm. Like, what what's what do you think is the craziest thing we'll see here? If this was pre-Hotfix, I think we would have seen Yi. I, I <laughs> genuinely think we would have seen Yi if it was pre-Hotfix from Grandview Vikings. And I think from, from Grandview Vikings' perspectives, like, we have to kind of talk about them in the same sense that we talk about, like, OQs and, like, Proving Grounds, where it's, like, Right now, for them, it's about cementing themselves as the best team in this region, and, like, your goal mm. now is to finish undefeated, because that's just, like, another feather in your cap, right? You don't want to, like, get to the end here and just, like, lose a regular season matchup, 
kind of but just by doing something that's a little bit off pocket like I, I think for them it'd be good for them to just have that idea of like we're undefeated that's a that's a goal we've set for ourselves that's a goal we've accomplished and then kind of move forward and going through the playoffs because you're like you're already cemented as the best team right you everyone mm-hmm. knows it everyone is aware that like gravy vikings are the best team and now you just got to kind of cement that really hard and like go for like an undefeated season regular season go for potentially an undefeated playoffs on top of that that's really where you start to cement yourself i think as a really good team and can take that momentum into something like a pgcq you know continue sharpening that sword that you have ready to go for the next opponents that come across and i mean let's let's see that i mean you you watch these teams battle it out throughout the entirety of the seasons kenobi i want to ask how well do you think they stack up in there i mean like if this is that one kind of stepping stone for them right and as much as i hate to say for the rest of the teams it is they this team as you said is a cut above the rest if they're looking to move forward further up, where do they start ranking in those kind of other scenes uh, that are current? Well, they haven't managed to make it to the top 16 of PGCQ, which is unfortunate because there were two times that they were very close in doing it. Like mm-hmm. They ended two and three both of the times. The first time, I think in the first one that they played, they were up like 10K gold and they just were able to secure that win. Um, but I think that they're they're very close towards being one of the really good teams they just need to cement themselves as like getting to the top 16 in a pgcq to really bring that home and like really show that like yeah we're here we're here to play we are one of the top 16 teams in the amateur circuit alongside how good we are in collegiate as orbital enough of us talking we're going into draft i mean we're still going to be talking but now we're going to be talking about league of legends and the draft a little bit more uh palatable potentially for the audience and for chat as it's gonna be blue side for uh, Grandview University, so a lot of power picks in that um, first option here. Aaron is one of the, if not the best ADC that we have, I think, in MEC, so expect a lot of bands to go his way, specifically like Jinx, Aphilios, Zeri, on B1, easy pickups for Aaron and for GVU. Might as well. It's just the easy thing to do, of course. On the flip side, we are taking a look at that Diana ban out. Kaz doesn't want, uh, or you don't want Kaz to be able to run away with that one. So looking at the top lane now, Aggression is also going to get banned out here. The Trindamir uh, taken away from that top side and follow through possibly a Kato <laughs> fun ban as well. So fourth ban to come out here, second for Ohio Northern. What do they decide to go? As you said, that Jinx is on the table. Maybe a Zeri ban as well. Just get them all out of here. Three bans and yeah, then just yeah, yeah. send just- it. I mean, that'd be that'd be pretty interesting if they were to three ban Aaron here, because the thing about it is this is Jinx. I think Zeri probably comes up next is that while Aaron is like extremely good in like the best ADC, the rest of this team is also like really sick. Like, Mezla is <laughs> really good. Prankuru is a weak side king, cannot be allowed to have Gwen, which is another thing that I think Ohio Northern has to kind of figure out is like, do we ban Gwen? Because you're kind of behind the eight ball a little bit if you're Ohio Northern here. You have to ban out so many things for so many players, and you only get three bans. You don't get any more than that until the second phase, so you have to really pick and choose your battles here if you're Ohio Northern. And if they do, it could be the all-important third. As you said, the Gwen is up. If it's not banned away, it is going to be picked up, and... They leave open the Zeri and the Gwen, the Leona, saying, hey, we can't ban away all the ADCs. Maybe we can lock down at least one CC route. It's a surprising one, to say the least, but maybe it works in their favor. Yeah, that's that's interesting that it's Leona specifically. I'm surprised it's not like Thresh, because Thresh is something that I think Grandview, like Pluto, likes to play a lot. Oh, Nautilus is also another thing. Is It's actually going to be Karma. Karma, super good as like a B1 option, I think, because you can flex it three different ways. Uh, it's also very strong in lane. If, you know, if you combo it something uh, with an ADC that can offer a lot of poke, like an Ezreal, I think it's an option that you can go for. Super, super strong. So definitely offering a lot of, not showing too much of their hand just yet with this B1 pick. And this does leave open, though, things like Gwen, things like Zeri to go on the other side. Thresh is going to be picked up by Ohio Northern here. Just keeping it standard again, we saw how well the Thresh could be played in the previous series, although it didn't net wins. It was still very good at deterring a lot of those fights, making sure that opponent's going to get close. The problem, of course, is Prankuru or uh, the Karma, wherever the Karma does decide to go, is going to start bullying it out. It's going to be very difficult for that Thresh to really find a handle and be able to carry over with that hook and flay combination. Last two seconds here, it is going to be the Zeri. This is something that we kind of figured was going to come through. It was left open all the way through the band phase, so might as well lock it in on red side. 
Yeah, so I mean, this does offer a little bit of this early lane is going to be a little bit spooky for Ohio Northern because Zeri is one of those champions that doesn't scale or that scales really hard. I was going to say doesn't scale very hard. No, she does. Um, <laughs> and it's very much a lane that like you have to kind of just eat your vegetables a little bit in terms of just like you have to really just like survive. You don't want to really be fighting in the early levels, especially against something like Karma Caitlyn, where you're just going to be miserable and you get outranged. Uh, you're going to be pushed in probably a lot because you are you know your thresh your thresh there you don't push too hard and already what i'm seeing from gvu super strong draft like you get you they basically have gotten everything it feels like they wanted here you got karma J caitlin really super good bot lane then you have udir amazing clear speed that we're seeing i wouldn't be shocked if we see like a oh it's actually a volleyball i was gonna say hecarim to kind of match the udir but volleyball here this tells me that there is potential that Cuz is just going to be playing topside with aggression or towards top mid or towards jungle mid. <laughs> All the options are laid out and available to them, of course, into the next band phase. It is very, very quick. Gronk is banned away on top, and then the Nico and the Syndra are both going to be locked out. The Wukong being banned means that this Wukong is not, not just a one-time special. It is starting to rotate into the uh, top lane pool, and it is going to be locked out. So very nice bands out that does leave the re open and it's immediate pickup for kato just saying look we're not we're not gonna let that one through we'll take it it's a good blind pick yeah we like it yep very very easy just pick up in the re uh super safe in terms of being able to lane super and has some good setup potential that you could use alongside a volley bear you know with a flash stun uh into a charm things like that work really well as it's actually gonna be prankuru gonna be taking the camille do you even see that gragas was banned against prankuru because i think everyone knows how good prankuru is on gragas but the camille is going to be something that's going to be locked in here so it will be ohio northern getting their pick of the litter in terms of counter picks on the top side we did see a darius come out in the last game i wonder if aggression opts in for something similar try and smash the camille in the early game or just kind of just break even one way or another, we'll have to find out the rise as the last pick. Another great blind pick here can do just about everything. We're not blind pick, it is a counter pick, but into the R, you're not looking to fully win out. The range is not really to your advantage. You're looking to help rotate around with the rest of the squad. It is Ooh. gonna be the Jax. A hard challenge to that top lane. The Jax versus Camille. It feels like a bit of a skill matchup. And that's where I sometimes get a little bit worried because I think people when they play skill matchups against Prankuru, Prankuru is very good at skill matchups. I think very, like, like we know Prankuru for kind of being like this one player, also plays a lot of the Gragas, but mechanically on the sticks, Prankuru is very good. So I think that aggression might need a little bit of help in a matchup like this. It is Jax versus Camille, so like you inherently do have like a slight advantage. I think it still kind of is a skill matchup, you know, when you're using your Counter-Strike effectively and things like that. But overall, like, I think that gvu has a significantly like a, a stupidly strong comp but so does ohio northern i feel like every team kind of got what they wanted in terms of what they wanted to do ohio northern gets to play a little bit on the early side through the top jungle um expect them as they always do as ohio northern to be at rift herald at eight minutes because that's what they do every single game <laughs> you don't necessarily have prio in a lot of your lanes especially in the bot lane but you are going to be able to i think survive through towards the get lane to like, like towards the mid late game where some spikes are going to come in for your teammate. It's such a good opportunity. And again, we get to see a taste once again of GVU and their solid, solid micro and a macro play. It'll be up to ONU to figure out a way around it. Of course, we are hopping into this game here. Grandview on the blue side and Ohio Northern on the red. You see the charge out. The lineup's going to be put out in front and Kato in that Fox form. I have to say, uh, I love the spectral trails that are left and kind of the animations that they bring out because that skin is lovely. It is a really good skin. I, I think all of the Spirit Blossoms actually are really good. I don't, I don't <laughs> think there's a bad one. I think, I, I'm trying to think of like, is there's like one that I really don't like? And I think they were all really good. I guess I'm also an anime fan, so I'm a bit biased, you know? <laughs> hey, it's okay. You're That's along with like 60 or 70% of the league community, I think. After Arcane, you tend to <laughs> be an anime weebs. fan, right? Like... We're all weebs. <laughs> Whether you like it or not after Arcane. If you liked Arcane, you're a weeb now. Oh, man. Check I can't wait for chat. season two. Season two is gonna either. be good. I can't wait for uh, Warwick to be in it. I can't oh. wait for. I mean, I I I wonder if Renato's gonna be in it because she's a chem baron, and I feel like that just makes sense to have her in there. They just drop her in in a ship again. It's just like, hey, we threw this in last yeah. episode just in case, real quick. Here you go. <laughs> 
my brain is full of like so much garbage lore. No, it's like it's just nonsense good. with League of Legends. I just I just know so much of it, and it keeps changing all the time as well. Remember when it was just like you were the, like you were the summoner, like you the player. <laughs> And MF still has voice lines where it's like, mm -hmm. you think you can handle me, Summoner? It's like, well, yeah. that's not. I, I remember that. when the uh, the description boxes for abilities were only like four or five words. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think <laughs> it's still like Nasus's entire kit uh, description fits inside of like Zeri's Q or something. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's yes, hilarious. Yes, I, I love it. <laughs> oh. It's, uh... oh, we're getting underway oh, here. Micro pause. Yep. A little bit of a micro pause, but we're still going. You know, it's freeze. Freezing time, freeze frame. This way, you must be wondering why, how I got here as Udir fighting animals, even though I am a spirit guard to the animals. But we'll let that one slide as, again, I, I this is kind of what we're going to see, be seeing the bot lane a lot, push heavily from Grandview because they do have the double range. And this does leave open an option for Udir once he full clears to, you know, they want to stack up a wave for Grandview to dive, or they could just stack up a wave and try and... Get a quick cheater recall. That's also a possibility for them. Such an early, early push, though. As you were saying, with that Udir, it's going to be given a lot of brevity, as you can already see on the bot side here. It's a huge wave stacked up. That was, <clears throat> of course, Aaron and uh, Manager having a blast there and making sure that they can keep pace here. But it's free open season, right? This bot lane, it's doing exactly what they want to do. Uh, Grandview is going to have complete control of this bot lane, unless we get to see Cuz make an entrance in the mid lane, though. We are seeing a Meslo might get ganked here. This could be very dangerous. Both flashes are available, too, and both of them are level 3, so they have their stuns available to them. But Meslo doing a good job of playing towards the bottom side of the lane, so it does have somewhat of an out. But here comes Cuz. And a chase in. That's going to be the slap down into the charm. Well played Great. on the CC train. Kato and Kaz are going to lock down that first blood. Kato actually taking that one home. Yeah, really well played. And that's kind of what we see from Kaz. Kaz is mostly a jungler who focuses towards the mid and the top side. Bot lane kind of gets left by themselves a lot of the time playing weak side. And it, I mean, it's a good thing, though, that they do have like Thresh Zeri because they can, you know, survive the lane, especially with Thresh available to them. It's going to be miserable playing against like something like Karma and like Caitlyn. But it is going to be able to survive, most likely, unless something disastrous happens, like a dive as Colthro. As, you know, once the Volibear went mid lane, going to start taking some jungle camps away on the enemy side for Ohio Northern. And this is kind of what Udyr just does. Udyr just walks around the map, tries to farm early, and then sees what they can find later towards the mid game in terms of ganking potential. Another thing to think about is the fact that now uh, Kuz should understand that every gank you put down is going to come at a price, right? Yep. Every single gank that you go for, you will lose a camp. Whether you are able to get something out of the gank, and that way you can at least trade gold back, that that has to be understood, right? This is the price you pay when you're playing against an Udyr. You focus mid lane, you got a kill. Great. You got 300 gold back. That Udyr is going to soak it up in about, I want to say, two or three camps. That's what's going to be earned back. You always have to have that in the back of the mind for Cuz as Ohio Northern march forward and attempt to take this game. Especially because you are, you know, Volley Bear, and Volley Bear doesn't necessarily clear the quickest. Mm -hmm. There is some good ward coverage, though, coming out from uh, Ohio Northern where they are putting wards deep into the jungle of Grandview so they know exactly where the Udyr is going to be at all times. As Hook actually comes in, potentially Ooh. a kill. Nope, gets that the flash out of Manager Gap. Is going to be the flash out and the immediate return fire back. And honestly, uh, I believe Tango came out worse for wear on that one. Mid lane, we are going to see a little bit of a chase down. Again, that I hate phase rush uh, rise so much. <laughs> it's so good sometimes. If you're up against a really good rise player, it is the most frustrating thing in the world. One of the things I am slightly worried about here is that there is only really one AP threat from Ohio Northern. I mean, a Volley Bear does do AP damage, but isn't going to be building AP Volibear here. It's going to be mostly that tank. And Meslo, we know that Rise is just, like, unkillable now with this new build of, like, Everfrost into Fimble Winter. So much armor stacked up. And there's a lot of AD damage coming in from Ohio Northern with this composition. So if, you know, we scale the Rise getting three items, he might be unkillable. So far, though, one that's unkillable is going to be Prankuru, who is holding this wave in top side very very well and honestly cuz uh, baited out cuz for a good 15 seconds there which has given the opportunity for cold throw to wander into the bot side good bait out whether they knew it or not and it's going to be first dragon a minute and 15 after spawn 
Dragon secured, and the mid lane is also working out pretty well. I'd say for Grand View, Rise does have a little bit, at this point, a little bit better in terms of pushing power, where they can just melt the wave, and for Ari, it takes about one or two Qs, to, or it's like two or three Qs to destroy it, so you do have some sort of autonomy in terms of priority available to you as Prakuru, setting up a really nice freeze here, and getting back in in terms of the CS department, because with you know ohio northern right now aggression can't really walk up he is a little bit low on health and doesn't want to take any trades because a lot of the time Mill will win those Mill's gonna be very happy and as you said uh possibly winning out of here it is gonna be seen on both ends cold throw though you took the dragon you took a little bit more uh you aren't gonna get the blue buff as much as you would like to have it yeah but i mean look at the look at the C cs differential right now mm -hmm. like volibear only has 30 cs and like while this first like you know gank was really good you got ari in a good position with that kill you took a you didn't i mean you didn't even take flash away from meslo so basically cuz here is essentially sacking his early game to basically just get any of it some of his laners ahead and he's only done it on one person you would have liked to have oh oh that's no that's tragic i am sad for cuz right there <laughs> That was just, I, that was a cascade of unfortunate scenarios, you know? If you throw down the lightning, you miss, cool. You might have been able to go back for it. Coulter was right there. Coulter was like, yep. nah, it's mine. Get out of here. Smited, and it's mine as <laughs> both the jungler, um, well, actually not both the junglers. Only one jungler is level six here, but looks like Ohio Northern is trying to just force the issue going into the enemy jungle. But while this is happening, aggression's getting aggressed on. Yeah, no, they're gonna go ahead and flood up and aggression is gonna get with the rest of the team kato can't find too much though and that's gonna be the jump in great kill on the prank guru kato able to fire away run is now at 2v4 it looks like the kills are gonna fall through even rise. more so meslo wants to try and help out but how much can you get oh he's and doing they are quite damage. low that might be attack of the q and not gonna land so the follow through residual is out there well, the, the charm form. misses and that's gonna be the kiting the kiting is gonna keep going this fight in the jungle is prolonging for so long and it looks like they might be get a, able to get it on the bot lane oh. we are gonna see a kill come through meslo wants to follow through and the burn oh manager gap support gap it is gonna be the follow through now in prankuru is gonna teleport in after death and swipe up a kill the fight extended so long that grand view collect or between the top and bot across the entirety of the team it is a 4-3 count as ohio northern fall prey to the overextension i mean that was so it, it felt like it was on a nice edge you know if a charm hits if a root hits or something like that that fight looks completely different for ohio northern but grandview are able to scrap it out with the advantage and through all of that orbital in the bot lane aaron was able to solo kill the zeri and Look at just the gap now that we have in that ADC area. It's Zeri with 63 CS and Caitlyn has 84. So a 20 CS gap and a solo kill in their back pocket. Yes, Ohio Northern, as they always do, around before 10 minutes, take a Rift Herald. But that bot lane, Kate, is going to become a problem later in the game. Aaron's just like, yeah, I, I don't care if my team's dying in the top side for us. It's all good. I'm not worried about it. We are going to have a dive, though, oh. as Prank Guru is getting chucked nice out, beaten up, fought over. But they don't get the kill. And because of that, we are going to see uh, uh, Coltro try their best to slap in a little bit more. In comes the Thunderlord trying to get some more damage. And they do trade one for one. Resets. What more can they get? Coltro is going to fall, but not before taking the enemy jungler out. Meslo. Happily staying alive here in the top side. It is going to be another kill on the on the top. Sorry, it is a 2v2. I saw Thresh dead, and I was like, oh, another kill on the bot side. No, not even close. Sorry. And Ari will run out of the charms as Meslo here, trying to take oh. that aggression, but gets too aggressive. Wait, oh! <laughs> it was close. It was close. And uh, Meslo is just like, yeah, I'll take it, because bot lane fell. The fighting went on so long that Grandview collected first tower at 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Yeah, bot lane has been pretty doomed, it feels like. And they, I mean, they didn't really get any help. Karma, Caitlyn is just such an oppressive lane to deal with as well. And with the solo kill on top of it, now Caitlyn is just going to do what Caitlyn does, move to the other parts of the map, continue to collect turret plates, has five of them already in their back pocket. Gale Force completed at 11 minutes. The first one to a mythic. And now the macro game becomes a bit harder for ohio northern here yes they have rift herald in their back pocket but now this caitlin just gets to walk around the map and just start taking tower 
And where do they go? Nobody knows, except mid lane. Of course, it will be the mid lane and the Rise goes bot side. You can see the tier 2 boots already built. Uh, those <clears throat> Merc Treads being slapped on very early on. It means the chase potential is good and the runaway is even better. This is how you get the inescapable uh, Rise, by the way. It's just, you can't run away. And then also when you try and... Um, when you try and chase after, it's just it's impossible. So early boots into the lost chapter is going to be Meslo. We'll be able to farm appropriately between any lanes that are necessary. Yeah, Kato does is is pretty big fox right now in terms of just the ability to have impact in these fights. Has the Everfrost available to them, and Ohio Northern just is like bottom side of the map. Who, like who cares? We're only worried in the, about the top side is Rift is going to be dropped down and four people are going to come and try and kill Prankuru. Oh, this is going to be a bit scary. This is... They have a grudge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have a grudge. Uh, someone said something in chat. Someone said something about uh, someone's game. You know, oh, you dropped five LP and they said, bet, run it. <laughs> That's the third time that Ohio Northern has been up top with three or four members. And they have sacked not just the bot lane, but the mid lane as well at this point. They didn't even get power for their troubles. Yeah, that's unfortunate because now the lane, they get to like stay in lane a little bit longer and Frankuru can kind of survive. But like, while it's like, while I think that the, like the, the focus on the top lane like works pretty well, I think in terms of what they've been doing, Randview has been doing such a good job of just like making sure that while they lose something at the top side, they're gaining something on other sides, right? They they like mm -hmm. they're gaining they're taking camps away from Cuz in these uh, areas where he's ganking early, right? They're tanking, they're si they're split pushing, they're getting solo kills on other parts of the map. That's really the scary thing about Grand View is like if you attack one part of the map, there's still three other parts of the map that are still incredibly strong that you have to deal with as well. So much to think about and. So far, I will say as well, uh, Kado has had a phenomenal time, right? 5, 1, and 2. Already has a Mythic built, so very, very strong. But now we're reaching into that 14-minute mark. Plates will fall, but the towers will fall even quicker. How many can they get mid? That's the question. Uh, taking a look here, they are able to pull a total of 3. I don't think they'll get a 4th. Actually, might they? That's Yeah, 4th, plates mid. Very nicely done. That's a total of, I believe, nine plates overall. Considering Pinkaroo has not been allowed to touch the tower once topside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Aaron is extremely accelerated right now. Is probably has the most gold in the game. As turret platings will fall, aggression has finally completed their Triforce. So going to be even more of a scary proposition to deal with if you're Pinkaroo here. But, I mean, realistically here, what we're going to be seeing is actually Kato's the one who has the most gold with those five kills and pretty decent CS as well. So working out pretty well for this mid laner in Ohio Northern, and they basically have all the gold because you look at it, it's like Kato, and then there's four other Grandview players, and then the next one in Cuz. So a lot of this is going to be on the back of this RA to carry the side of Ohio Northern. And one of the things that I do see from Grandview, a lot of lockdown. So those RERs are going to have to be incredibly well-timed to navigate through these fights with a lot of CC that Grandview have. Gotta be on point. Gotta be ready to go. Have the fast fingers, the good mouse clicks, and all that fun stuff. Aaron, of course, still sitting in the mid lane, is going to be farming out 143 on that count. Very, very well done. The gap, though, in the jungle is starting to get... Uh, Canyon-like, I will say. 120 <laughs> to 84 in that sense. Still no Mythic, though, uh, for Kulthra, who I, I think is sitting on a, uh, on a plethora of gold right now. Uh, should have enough at that point, but still is just running around clearing camps. Hey, oh, no. What, oh, no. Uh, here we go again. <laughs> it's called this practicing it's top lane dives. I think this that's what they're doing. Mesla. At least it's not... Wait, they actually... I don't know if they know Mezlo's here. And they don't. Mezlo's just going to walk oh. out. Oh, <laughs> He's like, I want nothing to do with this right now. I, I, I will. Oh. oh, I will see you later. Oh, that was so good. Mid lane tower falls, though, as that's going to put it to a two to one tower count. A shot in mid means that uh, KMS is going to not enjoy that one too much. Rules hoping to get that Zeri online here shortly. The, the, the unfortunate thing, though, is that Zeri is so far behind at this point that they... What, yes, they do have the Triforce, but, like, you look at the other side in terms of the itemization, and it's pretty strong. I think KMS Rules is going to have to try and really accelerate themselves 
in terms of getting like gold and stuff because really Azari comes online at like two items and until then it's like not as much damage as like a Caitlyn's going to be putting out right so in a like 5v5 team fight which we haven't really had yet is the other thing right we haven't had like a you know true five on five team fight between both of these teams and in a team fight like that I favor Grandview I mean they have such a good mm -hmm. team fight composition with the amount of space that they can make create for Aaron who's going to be pumping out so much damage from the outside already has that rapid fire cannon meaning the elongated range of a caitlin is even more so good charm lands though so frank you are going to eat a little bit of damage but with the entirety of ohio northern corralled to this inside track of the jungle and with jacks on the top side not teleporting in early it means that the priority for the dragon is going to be set aggression now getting into that angle with the rift arrow drop this might be enough pressure to force grandview off they are going to chase Ooh. down. It is going to be Manager Gap. Going to get jumped on. They are going to force the ulti. I'm not sure if that's where they want to go. They they put so much for Manager Gap, but they are rewarded with Pankuru. That's going to be shot in the back line. Aaron is going to fall. Remember, this is the Caitlyn that's hoping to do so much damage, but against a tanky tanky Volibear, there's not He's much you alive. can work with. A great out as that's a double kill for Aaron. Oh, the cleanup crew is real as Zeri can't dance fast enough. You can only dash so many times before everyone else catches up. It is going to be a very nice wash of four, only losing one as Grandview take the first team fight of the game and take the third dragon in their pocket. I mean, you talked about it, Orbital. They used like everything to try and kill Manager Gap on the Karma there, but that's not really the one you want to be looking out for. You want to be using all of your cooldowns to try and take down Caitlyn, try and take down Ryze, champions like that. And if the fight is going to be in a position where Caitlyn can just sit in the back line, get peel from the other members, and just hit their shots, there's really nothing that Ohio Northern is going to be able to do with it, about it. They have no range to contest this Caitlyn. So in a fight like that, it's just always going to be favoring Grandview. And now with that win, they're on soul point. It's going to be Infernal Soul as well, which is realistically going to make it even worse to deal with this Caitlyn. Fights from Grandview looks so good, but I, I will say the engage looked okay. I was curious because uh, Aaron got jumped on very early by Cuz. I was a little bit worried about uh, you know being able to cut through this massive, massive volley bear, but it made it look easy at the end of it. So Grandview now sitting with a chunk of change, 5k still in the lead, and an attempted smite by Cuz, and that's gonna actually rope in Coltro. Coltro says, "Hey, I, we're not done. Get back here." Flay comes out and. He walks off the bear man says all right well you have won this in uh, this conversation i will bid you good day i wonder how volley bear like feels about like you know going up against udir who is also mm -hmm. like a bear kind of you know has a bear stance i wonder what, if there's a voice like? line like about that that would be interesting yeah there aren't any voice lines for udir no nice try yeah udir, I wish. Udir, udir pizza foot champion unfortunately so. <laughs> And we're, uh, we're getting the rework soon, though. We'll be getting that rework soon. Haven't they Until been saying that for, play... like, a couple months to now? Well, they actually, like, have, like, you know, they've actually done, like, some of the concept art and stuff. So that's okay. Cool. Until then, you're Pizza Foot, and you're essentially dead here. Well, you, we say that. However, the rest of the team is here to put that all to rest. The Thunderlord does nothing, unfortunately. That'll be Aaron on a rampage, cutting everything out, and it's going to be a full push on the top side with a majority share of Grandview. Yeah, again, it's interesting because they keep, like, engaging onto, like, tanky members or, like, the members that don't matter too much. And, I mean, Coltro is very, very far ahead in terms of itemization, like, against Cuz. And with Cuz being dead for another 10 seconds, this is just going to be a barren take. I don't know if there's any way that Ohio Northern can contest this without potentially sacking the entire game. You're just praying for potential cut down and at this point it's already gone so now they go ahead and sack it unfortunately got too close that'll be the kill going in and it's now going to be the realm warp as it will be tango chase down into the nether realm goltro is going to get the bear slap it is going to be the pinch and burst meslo takes a second kill on the back end and it is now four two and nine and this feels a little bit like we're not at the end of the game necessarily, but with where we are in terms of the itemization for a lot of these champions, it feels like a little bit of a wallet diff mm -hmm. for Grandview against Ohio Northern here. They're up about 8k gold right now. All of their carries are fed. Meslo and Caitlyn are, or Meslo and Aaron are in a fantastic position in terms of their itemization. And 
you can already see, I mean, Meslo is already at the point with the Fimba Winter and with the Everfrost that they're just like, okay, I don't die really anymore. Like, they, unless I get like bursted down 100 to zero, I'm going to be able to live so long during these fights. And Ohio Northern, they just straight up at this point don't have the damage to deal with a lot of what Grandview is bringing to the table. So it's going to be even scarier for them to deal with these side lanes as well because you have Ryze and you have Camille while Prankuru had... Uh, basically got bullied in that early game orbit. I'm just going to call a spade a spade. <laughs> is still Camille, is still going to be on two items shortly, and is still a side laning menace. And is very upset about the early game as well. Like yeah. that, if you get dove three times like that, I would be livid. I would be hunting down every member <laughs> that went for me. I'd, I'd make it my mission. I don't care if I die at this point. I don't care. Whatever. Get the kills on these opponents. And we win the game from there, right? That is going to be the call. Aggression is now going to get a taste of their own medicine potential. Like, Colter really wants to do it, but uh, unfortunately, Cannon is actually out of range, so you can't. Yeah. Mid lane is going to fall, though, and that gives Grandview an open section. Five towers to two now as we move into uh, the latter stage of the mid game. Yeah, Aggression's got to get out of dodge here because they're, th this whole like top half of the quadrant of the jungle just belongs to Grandview at this point, and... You are, while you're Jax and you have Counter-Strike, you are definitely still in danger of just getting absolutely plopped by the entirety of Grandview as... I mean, I was talking about Camille being a menace in the side lane, so is Ryze. Ryze also can't die as your goes oh, Cold Oh, that's just... Well, goodbye. Rules wasn't even part of the top lane dive. Why are you picking <laughs> on that Zeri? That's mean. That's rude. This is how you do it. You pay it back in space, or you try to at least. Aaron is going to get jumped on, but that's going to be a flash out and immediate retribution sent right back. Oh, that hook that you don't want to bring anyone close to you. That'll be the kills. That'll be the game winning fight, I think, here. As it's going to be five charging down. They get the flash into the hits. That is going to be the Jack Long as well. The Grand Master's Might is no more. As that is the ace. For Grandview University, the Vikings stormed their way to a game one victory in just 23 and a half minutes. The undefeated team remains undefeated so far. They're looking to take the series 2-0 oh, after that's the mean. fountain dive. And you know what? It's not mean when it's a rise in there. You're going to do that because it's the rise thing to do. That was a good exclamation point. You know, got to even out the kills to 20 at the very end there for Grandview University. And they will be taking this first game of the series with, I mean, extremely clean, just macro wise, utilizing the split pushers incredibly effectively. Everything about this play from Grandview was just really clean. And that's kind of what we were talking about, where it's like, as Grandview, you have to make these look as crisp and clean as possible. To kind of give yourself that momentum going into the playoffs going into things like pgcq and that one looked really clean like extremely clean macro wise with the split pushers meslo and aaron had great performances and all in all can't really ask for much more if you're grandview there it was it was solid and, and i love it again even with prankuru getting jumped on on the top side it still felt very smooth I'd like to see them accelerate it a bit more, though. Um, I, I sure. love the fact that they control just about everywhere. They control the mid. They control the bot lane. The jungle was out of control. I want to see them be able to push that tempo, even, because that is something that also in the PGCQ and all these other areas, the tempo shift, not letting your opponent have that available time to try and run it back. I want to see it accelerate. Once you know you have kind of that foot, you have the wheel, you have the pedals, you have everything run it send that car to 120 miles an hour uh, and really take over the game so maybe we get to see that here in game two and i get a little bit of taste of the mec as we are continuing on throughout the rest of the days of coverage but before we do we got to give a huge shout out to our sponsors here with the midwest east sports conference we have so many fantastic sponsors here with atlantic to palti skulls and gangster thank you so much to everyone that makes the mec possible and of course we do have merch on the skulls website if you go ahead and take a look here there is the lovely lovely jerseys the hoodies the sweatpants and the banners for any of those that love to fly those high and of course if you are gaming and you want to protect your arms a little bit there are some um, arm covers down there for you go ahead check it all out on the skulls website under the tab for unified with that we'll go ahead and go to a quick break and ensure that we get you a very fun game number two as we start reaching that midway point of our broadcast here today thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be right back
And we are back, ready to go for game two as Grandview Vikings took a storming game number one. Although Break Crew was uh, kind of floating off in the lake there, uh, dragged <laughs> successfully along to the rest, got some revenge in there, and we're ready for game number two, Ohio Northern. Putting up a fight on the top side, maybe they can bring that aggression to another lane now. Yeah, and I wonder if we, you know, it took them 23 minutes for Grandview to win that one, and I wonder now if we're going to start seeing some easier lanes to play i guess i would say for like the other sides that aren't just like top side because if they're going to play through top side which ohio northern usually likes to do i think getting like some safer lanes like everywhere else would be good like you know <laughs> zary zary thresh is like safe in iso technically but like in the 1v1 like kate will just like ruin zary's day with just like the range advantage that she has in the early game so that's something that i definitely would like to see ohio northern tend more towards and if your Grandview I mean, if they're going to continuously just keep targeting Prinkuru in that top lane, just keep doing what you're doing with the rest of the lanes because the rest of the lanes played really well. I, I think, like, like you know, counter-jungling when these ag aggressive early ganks were coming off, staying in the other lanes, making sure you're getting CS and ballooning a lead that even though there is some, like, early volatility, it's not going to matter because you have some win conditions to come back on if you're Grandview. So I think they played really well around the you know bullying that happened to prank crew which if you're prank crew it's like you can't really do much more i don't blame him at all he just basically was bullied got four man twice it's not his fault it happens to top laners all the time it's one of those moments you're like listen listen if you just saw what i saw everyone's just like spam pinging him in the chat just yeah. like bro listen you're dying you gotta stop dying i'm like i can't do much more than that uh what what is it just leave tower and just don't play the game and at that point yeah, yeah you know it's better but <laughs> I have to agree. Crew just type like jungle gap in, like, <laughs> chat or something like that because I know that would have happened in my game. So oh yeah. Like, if... <laughs> well, at that point you're just like, why are you dying out in the middle of the lane, Frank Crew? Like yeah. that's that's the that's the <laughs> distinction there, I think. But of course, Frank Crew, I think handled it very well, right? And with all the grace and beauty that we can say that you can deal with a one v four in the top side, came back with a vengeance. That Camille did a lot of work. The question is, is what other champions do we want to see? If they know they're going to pinch it, I mean, are we going to see that Orin? Maybe that Scion, something that brings a longevity to those events. Gragas as well was something that I think was an option, but it was banned away smartly, I think, by Ohara and Northern, because that's one mm -hmm. of the Vancouver's pocket picks. I definitely don't think you can give him Gwen. I mean, they they did leave it up for him in that scenario, but I think they wanted to, GV wanted to play through sides pretty significantly with, like, Camille and with Rise. Um, so I think that that's something that I think Ohio Northern has to be wary of is like this composition that GVU is playing where it was like, we're going to get Caitlyn like very far ahead. We're going to have her, you know, move across the map, break the structures, and then just win through our sidelines with Camille and with Rise. And that's exactly what they did. Like there was nothing that really couldn't contest it from Ohio Northern's perspective. So I think you need to pick someone who is going to be able to have some, you know, strength in the side lanes. I think Ari is very good in isolation against Rise, but all in all, it's like you don't have the side lane pressure that Rise does. So maybe banning Rise actually is something that I think is a possibility if they don't want to pinch the ADC pool. And if they do leave the ADC pool open, uh, as you said, you know, the possibilities are endless right now. How do you start working around that? You were even mentioning a little bit about the Zara, you know, maybe swap it up, bring a different champion to the table. What do you want to see down there uh, in exchange instead if you are looking uh, for all these different strategies, these different opportunities for Ohio Northern to kind of work with? if they want to try and take in number two. I mean, it is hard because it's like the Caitlyn was the thing that they gave up. So mm -hmm. Caitlyn, like, matching up as an ADC against Caitlyn just sucks. Like, you <laughs> really, like, Ezreal's like the one I can think of where it's like you'd be able to play it, like, okay, because you have a little bit of ability to farm from, like, safe range. Um, Jin, like, I'm th thinking it would be, like, okay, like, better than Zeri, because, like, Zeri has zero autonomy in the early game. Right, like absolutely none like you can't really do anything until you get into like team fights and you start stacking up your passive and you have a couple of items under your belt whereas like other champs like do have some sort of ability to play in the early game uh, i would like to see just maybe a little bit of a stronger lane for ohio northern if they're going to be opting for uh that bottom side so the opportunity is for them as we do get underway into the draft phase here in game number two. Of course, GVU are sitting on that red side up 1-0. Oh, and you are going to try their best on the blue side. This does give them the opportunity to shave off some of those power picks, pick them up for themselves, maybe leave open one or two of their own and not have to ban it out. Of course, the Aphelios still at the table. Don't want to deal with it. Just don't, don't even want to test those waters. You are on blue side now, so you do get the option of getting like a power pick for yourself, but I would expect this is still going to be Ohio Northern pinching a lot of the ADC pool. I think Jinx is definitely something that they can 
I mean, they can either ban Jinx here, or they can take it themselves and ban Zeri. So, like, uh, ban Zeri Kate here. Um, that's something that I think I would be looking out for. The Leona ban seemed a bit weird in that last one, so I, I think that they, they would be better off, like, banning another ADC there. That would have been, like, a nice Caitlyn. So many good options to be had, but of course, just still waiting to see the large scale. The Jinx ban on blue side is one that does surprise me a bit. Again, that is one that you probably could have picked up for Reaper and try and run it forward, but they aren't going to do it, of course. Still the same bans for GVU for them. Again, like you said, should still play to their standard. Don't have to worry about too much. And so far, taking away the Diana and Trinomir gave them a very, very nice lane setups. And I think they'll also probably ban away Akali. Um, they're just going to do the same bans that they had last time. Uh, there's the Caitlyn ban. So three ADC bans for Aaron, respecting very much the power of this ADC player because he was the one in the last game who, like, was the most ahead. Like, got their Mythic first as an ADC, which is something that you don't see that often. I mean, realistically, like, you usually see that's coming from, like, a mid laner, from a top laner, jungler, things like that. So I expect here to see the akali ban and then now if you're ohio northern i think you pick your adc and you pinch the pool significantly for him. you it's take a shadow ban yeah you yeah. come out with that shadow ban see what else you can get here 20 seconds left uh i mean you could go for some craziness if zeri you so wish yeah it's an option i mean i would like the zeri now that there's no kate on the other side and then yeah. i think like if you're gvu you like pick like ezreal or Jin. I mean, Tristana is like kind of cropping up as well, but it's Volibear B1 is not the power pick I usually expect from uh, a B1 side of the draft. That's that. I mean, it is Cuz's like favorite champion because they play it like a ton. <laughs> and do, I mean, to be fair, like have some good gank setups. You know, they we saw it with the Ari and like how good that was at the early stage of the game. But now you've left Udyr open and we saw how much the Udyr did in terms of just like hard clearing and being able to outclear an Udyr, uh, or outclear the Volibear. You also leave Hecarim open as well. So basically, GV, you have like the pick of the litter here. You do, and uh, whatever can steal away that scuttle once again from Kaz, who, uh, you know, probably won't miss that lightning strike once again. The Hecarim is locked in, though, so that is going to be the speedy, speedy horse. Locked in with the Karma is going to be a very aggressive backline. And ONU, as you stated, still looking for that ADC if they don't grab it here. I am a little bit worried about how it falls into the latter stages of the draft. They can look for their support. They can look for a couple other options. Still going with the Thresh, saying we want to play with this champion and we're going to give it our best shot. Unfortunately, the Thresh here, I feel, is going to be Jin? even less uh, optimal considering the other champions on the board. Is this like Thresh Jin? I mean, Zeri is still open. So they could just opt in for, Z uh, for Zeri Thresh, but with the Karma already on the other side, like... Are you sure you want to play that? But, ooh, this would be interesting. It's going to be the Ziggs Thresh. So, again, a very just, like, safe bot lane here, it feels like, right? Where, you know, Ziggs can play for themselves, doesn't have to really worry too much about farming because you can just keep continuously throwing out your Qs. It's something that we haven't seen too much of, but I remember last year at Worlds, it was very popular. And it's not too bad against this Onslaught. Oh. Okay. I misspoke. I did the Vayne. For Aaron, how could I forget that that is an option alongside the Karma? If we get to, like, the late game, like, 20 minutes, it's going to suck in lane. Like, it's going to be a bit hard because, like, you're playing against Ziggs and you just have to kind of, you know, dodge around a lot of skill shots. But, like, beyond that, like, in team fights, if they don't get to this, if they don't get to Vayne, Vayne will absolutely obliterate teams, especially with a Karma in their back pocket. I wouldn't be surprised as I either see a Malphite ban pick or wherever because it's just vain spotting territory all over again yep. that would be hilarious to watch i don't know if aggression plays it though considering how hard they play up towards that top side i don't know if you want to put them on a tank it wouldn't really make sense however we will see the camille is banned away so rightfully so against prankuru that was one that honestly sustained very very well uh even through the gang so was still having a cs lead just don't want to give gvu that opportunity ragus is still Something that I think Owen you probably will ban here as mm -hmm. their fifth ban because they Prankuru is very good at that. Uh champ. Are you gonna be taken away? Kind of just basically allowing them to not have not allowing Owen you to have the easy, you know, mid jungle gank setup with the Ari and with the volley bear. It's basically guaranteed that you can get kills um with flashes that are available to them. So that's a nice ban from them. 
Wukong taken away because one of the things that does ruin Vayne is the ability to just like walk into the back line and hit Cyclone and then doesn't let them play the game. <laughs> Grog is taken away from Prankuru. Have to do it. Respect ban. This is where like I wonder what Prankuru is going to be opting in for in terms of the like Malphite is something that you were talking about where I actually think I think you need some sort of dive partner alongside this tech room. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be fine with the Malphite, but it looks like they're going to be holding the counter pick for Prankuru as the Sintra comes in. It's blind. I think it's fine. Sindra doesn't really have like too many losing matchups, so I think this is a good. Idea. It's just weird to see it, I guess. Uh, we, I, I personally haven't seen Sindra picked up a whole lot, especially in the blind pick. It is good, like you said. It's just not as high priority. I feel there are other options, and it does leave yourself open to those hyper farmers in that mid lane. That is going to be the Cassiopeia locked in here, and now we get into a flex territory as well for ONU because a Cassiopeia and the Ziggs both can be interchanged for that APC in the bot lane. And I'm a bit worried right now when I look at ONU's composition. I mean, Cassiopeia mm. does make sense because it is... Ooh, oh, the that's why. <laughs> ooh, laying down the gauntlet against Prankuru. Now Prankuru, what is the, what do they pick? I mean, this could be a Jax angle for them. If they ooh, truly what about the Teemo? Just, just send the Teemo. Just send it. Send it right now. <laughs> Not again, dude. We had that once. You can't do this again. It is possible. Like it is, it is definitely possible. I think it's not going to be as good as it was against something like an Akshan, but mm-hmm. you know, we do have that availability. Oh, it's okay, actually okay. the Jace in the top side. So, Rankuru, bring out the skill matchup against Fiora will win. I mean, early game Jace is like annoying to play against. Can you know hit the golf swing, um, <laughs> Fiora back as soon as they get close. I do like the fact that they have opted in for this kind of composition that I think into the later game will like just absolutely if you're Korean University. And for Ohio Northern, while I do like that Cuz is gonna be on this Volibear, where do you really go if you're Volibear at this point? You don't have a lot of gank setup. You have very little gank setup. Like Miasma maybe is like an option. Like you, Fiora doesn't have any setup in terms of stuns, so it's going to have to really be on the back of Cuz making a lot of these happen and potentially repeat ganking continuously because there's no other way, if flashes are available, that you can guarantee kills. I feel, though, that this does play into their top lane advantage. Uh, banning out so many of Prank Gurus on the second round, the Jace honestly doesn't have as much escapability and as much delayability as the Camille does or even the Gragas, of course, which we haven't been able to see so far. If you do plan to pinch that top side, not only do you kill the Jace, but the Fiora does get out of control a little bit. Fiora is one of those few champions that the shred is good if you play with the vitals appropriately, uh, especially in the 1v1 duels or face-to-face. So there is some Otis behind there. But I have to agree, there there aren't too many opportunities for Cuz. It's going to be manufactured on their own side. It's going to be a lot of baiting as well, waiting. Uh, can Aggression bait out Prankuru to jump in? Can they bait out Coulter to jump on Kato in the mid lane? Or even Reaper and Motor in the bot side? Can Aaron, Can you find Aaron and Pluto pushing up too far? And I think as well for Grandview University, what their, what their composition and what I think Coulter will be doing is Coulter, I think, is going to... Obviously, Hecker and Power Farms really well. But I think Ultra will most likely like try and hover topside because leaving Jace on weak side just feels bad. Like Jace <laughs> needs some sort of resources. And while Prank Crew is very like good at playing weak side, very, you know, understands that a lot of the like just soaking up the pressure, I think there will be some need for Coltro to be up there just because you don't want Fiora to be completely just gotten out of control, right? You need some ability to hinder the fiora so that side lane pressure is going to be something that they can bring to the table yeah it is going to be that opportunity again we'll have to wait and see what pranku coltro and meslo and the rest of the gbu squad can come up with because no one wants to go through whatever we just saw pranku go through that is that is not a trial by fire that you want to play with however we will go to a very short break to ensure a quality broadcast for you so please don't go anywhere the mec will return in just a few
And here we go back into it again. Thank you so much for being so patient. We are set to go for the rift here as Ohio Northern are still on that blue side, ready to kick things off and hopefully having a bit better of a game aggression on that Fiora. One champion that we really want to keep eyes on, but Kato in that mid lane as well on the Cassiopeia might be bringing a bit of poison and spice to this lane. Kato's going to kind of be the DPS, the consistent DPS, you know, shooting out those twin fangs. Basically acting like a pseudo ADC almost, it feels like, as it will be a little bit easy. I'm not going to say easy because I think it will be pretty good for the entirety of Grandview to spec into something like uh, Magic Resist because you're going up against the Ziggs and a uh, Cassiopeia as the main sources of damage. So they will have that opportunity for them to make fights a little bit easier for them. One of the things that I do like about Ohio Northern's composition is they do have a lot of kind of control in terms of zoning around objectives, you know, throwing down Miasma, throwing down the Cassiopeia Qs, walking into things like Ziggs bombs and Qs as well. It's a little bit hard for Grandview to get into fights the way that they might want to. And with something like a Vein, you sometimes do want to have a chance to fight front to back, but you do have some really good engagement just, you know, Hecarim. Hecarim is very good at engaging. Just hit that R button, hit that E, get into that back line. It all sounds so simple, but actually pulling it off is going to be the dangerous thing here. So uh, Kaz is going to go ahead, be able to pick up that lovely, excuse me, lovely, lovely red buff. And manager, that's, um, that should have hit, I feel like. But uh, <laughs> I guess, of course, it is going to be Reaper just going, eh, I'm a little bit too short. It went right over my head. So, I mean, just Ziggs things, you know, just that's the buff that Ziggs gets, Yordles, you know, <laughs> you're a little bit shorter, you're a little bit harder to hit, it feels like, as uh, as we're looking at the top side, I mean, Prank Crew versus Aggression, this will be a bit of a skill mashup, I think, here between both these, and already with Aggression getting level two, Prank Crew has to dip and use some of their pots, but we'll see where Coltro ends up going, because Coltro is starting towards that bottom side, and most likely because it is a Hecarim who likes to farm up, we'll head towards that top side and be able to kind of be able to mirror anything that comes from the top side. From the trying to keep pace, trying to keep up with it, as uh, we do see the trades in the mid lane as well. Meslo and Kado has so far traded a decent amount of HP. Already the pots are burned on Kado's side, and considering for Meslo that you're running the correcting potions, you're very much willing to try and take those trades over and over again. Probably going to get an early recall out as well. But for the side of Aaron and Miniature, they're actually willing to take that back as well as a Pluto calls for it, and Aaron is going to go back and pick up a full on cold they've identified at this point that they want to just go straight for that hard farming path which i mean it is against the zig's thresh lane so you're just like yeah i really don't have any kill threat here especially with the karma in your back pocket if there's any kill threat it's just off the mistakes of something that ohio northern does so just taking the call as full throw is here on the top side and you can already see cuz is along here as well so being able to shadow and cuz not able to get what they want in terms of an early top side push as cold throw is just here waiting patiently to see if any shenanigans happen and looks like they actually might be sticking around Ooh. good read from cold throw this is a good read but i mean are they going to challenge it yes they are both junglers are going to meet this is going to be very very interesting to watch cold should have seen this and they are they're going to just turn on Kaz, who has to try and flash away gets the shield up but they are immediately going to try and jump in. A couple more auto attacks. One more is there. And first blood goes to Prank Guru. A couple more shots might make it. Just jump under the tower. No, you can't because Repost is up or might be up. Still, though, because oh, they it's can still do so this. much yeah. there. And I think that might be the challenge. An empowered shock blast might be enough. Chase forward a little bit of a shot and a nice dash out. Aggression will not die. But my gosh, did Grandview read that like a book? And Cuz paid the price. And, I mean, so is Aggression. Aggression will also pay the price because a lot of the CS is just going to go directly into the turret, into the void. The TP is available, but there's so much CS that's going to be lost out by Aggression here. And Trinkuru will say, thank you very much. I'll take a little bit of a lead in this lane. You can already see a 10 CS gap in their favor along with the kill. And, like you mentioned, Orbital, a fantastic read coming in from Grandview and from Colthro, who now has those boots available to them to make their clear even faster than it was before and could be everywhere on the map at once. 
when the horsey is unleashed and has gotten out of the pasture, this is what happens. You don't know where it's going to come from. It might hit you from uh, just any corner. Coltro has already been enabled, so really keep an eye on where that pony goes. Weather goes back to the top lane and gives aggression a little bit of their own medicine there. That could be the opportunity. Of course, so many other range of fights could occur. Mid lane, we're seeing dead even pacing between the two NCS numbers. Kato is going to walk back and was able to pick up two amp tomes. But an immediate stun out means a Meslo is already level 6. Might be looking Ooh. for that kill. A dash out on that Q. One more is going to be there, and that's just the nice. kill outright. Meslo takes it home, and it, no dipping and dodging will be able to take it home. Kato is still only level 5 as well. I mean, that's also Syndra with only Dark Seal. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. that's got to feel really bad uh, for Mez Ricardo. They're not winning that one. And also had to use TP early because of the trading pattern. So, again, Morse, yes, is going to be lost here. Oh, no. Oh, they found him out again. The bear is getting hunted over and over again. And this is now a 3-0 league. Grandview Vikings going to be dancing a bit here, <laughs> even in the top side. Prankuru is like, you remember what happened last game? Aggression actually can't. Uh oh, uh, uh -oh. Can't. oh, uh -oh. oh Prankuru, you danced one too many times and you danced your last. Yeah, that was a uh, Prankuru, you know, maybe playing with their food just a little bit there. <laughs> I think uh, thought they were a bit too big for their britches. Uh, Caitlyn, or not Caitlyn, rather, Fiora still can do quite a bit of damage with their ultimate and with those, rocking those vitals. So Prankuru has to use flash, but still has TP in their back pocket, so can get back into this lane. Push it out while Fiora, unfortunately, will have to walk back. No TP for them after that starting gank. Good times to be had by all by Grandview Vikings and already getting a bit cheeky here, dancing in the face of the opponent. With the wards cleared out in mid lane, though, Meslo does have to be a bit more careful. Still has slash ups, so plenty to work with, but Tango coming down to have a bit of fun of their own. Trying to lock out that ward vision as Coltro takes out that scuttle and is going to empower themselves to an even CS score. So far, the jungle gap has not been there this time around. It hasn't been there, but uh, I mean, one of the things is that, oh, here comes oh. Coulter with the ult. All right, well, I said no jungle gap, and then immediately Coulter said, yeah, uh, there is a gap. It's just not as obvious. That's going to be the ghost pop just to try to keep pace with Cuz. It's a level six versus level five, and they just chase all the way around. That's oh, going to be the unleashed power going in. Weak. One more auto attack is going to go through, but I don't think it's going to work. Again, the burn is not enough. That was a petrifying gaze being used. The last bit of Kado's utility being thrown down just to save their jungler. Ohio Northern lose out on the kills and lose out on the Herald as well. I mean, they're going to lose out on the Herald. Ziggs also lost out on a lot of CS in that bot lane. And Aaron was just like, okay, there's going to be this little skirmish in the top side. I'm totally fine staying down in the bot lane, continuing to just fire up my call. I'm 20 CS ahead of the Ziggs in this scenario. And you talked about how there wasn't that big of a jungle gap. I actually think it might be a little bit bigger this time because mm. I think they've completely taken Kuz out of the game. Kuz is not really a factor because Hecarim and Colthrow have just been reading Kuz's aggression towards the top side like a book and it hasn't been able to snowball the Fiora and Frankuru and the rest of Grandview University are just totally fine staying up here dancing and feeling like they're so ahead because they are they have 2k gold lead right now and that will only expand it feels like I recant my statement about uh, whether or not the jungle gap is there. I agree with you 100%, and Kuz is going to be looking to recant that statement as well. Maybe try and get some pressure down, as again, it's a third visit to the top lane. At this point, I don't think you win it. <laughs> However, still here. yeah, yeah Coulter <laughs> doesn't have mana, though, so that is the big thing to note. And now at level 6, but guess who does? Guess who does have a lot of damage? Prankuru is going to try their best, uh, but of I... course, Coulter couldn't really bring anything to the table here. So finally, e. third time is a charm to take down Prankuru. I think there's a bit of miscommunication as well, because I mean, Kothro, I mean, while they're very far ahead in terms of just their uh, ability to get assists and help out, without mana, Hecarim is a very sad horse and doesn't get to really do much. So I think Prankuru got a little bit too aggressive there, too big for their britches, probably just trying to, you know, be a bit more flashy after last game where they weren't able to be flashy at all. They just had this kind of sit and be bullied, and now they want to... It's, it's his turn. You know, Prankuru's had a rough game one. Let Prankuru have some fun game two. Eh, they could try. 
They could try. So far, though, I still on this bot side, or at least the camera wants to give us a view, because Aaron has yet to really uh, steal away anything. And again, with the Farming Simulator 2022 here, it's to great effect. 21 stacks still left uh -oh, on this mark, and now it's the bot lane turn. Well, Ohio Northern are kings of the top lane ganks. This is going to be the bot lane dive for Grandview. They're going to get a hook go in. Aaron might be able to pick up one. Is going to roll straight into the wall, and they take two, but the follow-up kill is there. As Kado is able to get Retribution, it's still a good dive, though. You only lose one, and Aaron was able to secure those kills. So you'll take it. You'll say we're very happy about that exchange. And the other thing you've done is you just completely, like, completely took out Ziggs from this game. Ziggs does not mm -hmm. really get a lot to work with now. And from a champion that was, like, kind of picked as a way to, like, be safe, you know, farm safely, Grandview has done a really good job of basically not letting them do that, and Ziggs hasn't been able, to, been able to find those power spikes just yet, where at this point you'd want them to be a little bit Oh, aggression? Prank Guru. I love it so much. Watching these two go back and forth just goes to show their aggression. Oh, That's going to be a flash! Yo! And aggression dances on Prank Guru's corpse. That was a flashy kill, to say the least. That was very flashy. Love that play from Aggression there, and he's going to be rewarded with a couple of turret plates and CS in their back pocket. It was a bit rough in that early game after that 2v2 kill that happened, but Aggression is not letting this top lane go without a fight. Just beautiful uh, right there, and we see it, right? Aggression on this Yara, this one pick that kind of surprised us uh, in the latter stages of the draft. It might bring a lot more to the table than we expected. The early pressure coming out of Kaz has granted a, a aggression a chance at this opportunity, but it needs to happen at least two or three more times, right? We need to see the Fior really get off the ground and start being that split push monster that we know. And the way that they do that is they take, you know, the top turret, start moving them around, controlling that vision. That's how you really get the Fiora accelerated as and zooming out a bit, Dragon is available for both of these teams, but they haven't gotten it just yet, so it tells me that this game will last pretty long. I mean, Ocean Soul's been o Ocean Drake has been up for a long time, but it doesn't seem like either junglers are really interested in getting it, as Rift Herald dropped in that top sign just because I think it was had by Cole Throw, but they just were gonna run out of it and just had to drop it somewhere, so it's gonna head up to that top side. It's going to be dance up there, and with full HP, it's going to be nice. But, of course, that does draw the unwanted attention of a single member. Cuz says, hey, we're back. We're ready to go. It's going to be a dance in. Riposte, not really going to land. But the chase is there. Hey, guess who has mana this time? Guess who has the damage this time? It's still a trade of one for one. And Meslo came up to solidify it. All of the emotes spam. Going to be working in Grand View's favor as they take the fight one to two. That was so well played from Prank Guru as well, who looked like they were dead to rights and did end up dying, but the amount of time that they created for themselves was absolutely unreal there. They were able to use the hammer form to knock back away the Volley Bear and not get stunned, and that was huge because they were able to flash out and then create a bit of damage and, again, make time for Syndra and for Hecarim to come to that top side. And while we've been talking about top and jungle a lot, Syndra quietly meslo. I saw four, <laughs> four kills already, and... If you're Ohio Northern, you can't really walk up to objectives if you don't have vision because there's going to be a Syndra there who's going to scatter the weak you to death. I mean, it wasn't even that quietly, right? We saw a solo kill in the early stages, and then the rotates out from Meslo. It's been phenomenal to say it, right? And, and we wanted to see Grandview continue their onslaught. We know that the vein is going to get big and scary later on. Has already completed that Cole. Went back, picked up a full-on Kraken Slayer is going to be destroying some HP bars. But Meslo, this lane matchup, the Syndra that we were kind of curious about, hadn't seen it for a while, matchup against Kado, and Kado's been trying their best, actually opted for that Everfrost, which is one that I haven't seen too often, and I'm not sure if the range actually matches up. What does match up is the fact that Cuz oh. is not allowed at the Lantern. Not only was it a double ward, it was the Scatter of the Week, it was the hammer back. Cuz didn't have a single chance. Yeah, I mean, this is just such a good read from uh, Grandview University compared to how it was in game one where they just did their research in terms of adaptation, right? They were just saying, oh, you know, they like to play through topside and through cuz. Let's get Hecarim very uh, good in terms of the ability to form up in that early game and match somehow the Volley Bear. And 
So we're going to have a little bit of a pause as we wait for someone to get back. But like I was saying, it's just really good adaptation of understanding where Ohio Northern is going with their win conditions towards like what Grandview drafted for in this draft and how they're going. So far, Grandview's win condition is get the Herald and then push down another lane. This is, I believe, going to be the second one of the game. And with the mid lane down to about 100 HP, you might be able to actually push for Tier 2. They want to take out Aggression. Aggression has been a menace to the side of Guru. Now dropping three on the top side over a ward. That's good viable information. It does mean that Ohio Northern know at least where three of the members are. They can see the rest on the map, so no one's going to be dope just yet. As we kind of like zoom out, take stock a little bit of where we are in terms of itemization for a lot of these people, Zig still not on a Mythic at 15 minutes is a little bit of an unfortunate situation. I think probably we'll get it now on this back, but it st is still relatively late. Everyone else seems to have their Mythics completed available to them besides the sports, because sports don't get to play the game. But here comes Cuz. What? Uh... Um, that's so unfortunate. That's so unfortunate. At least it wasn't the scuttle, uh, right? Uh, I, I, uh... cannot, uh, I built it. I, I, that's like a go next to me if, I, if I'm the jungler <laughs> and I have this. Well, what, what else makes you do a go next is uh, that. Well, you got one back. You got one back, so you'll take it. But still, very aggressive nonetheless. Oh, it is going to be a fight on the bot side. Flash out by Aaron. So it is only going to be Cold Throw trying to dance in, but slowed down by the exhaust and the wall. Means that aggression just gets a full on chase off. All the vitals Ooh, being Aaron. but that's the third shot. Oh, the Kraken Slayer is just too good. Aaron takes two and says, Get out of my face. I'm the vein here. I mean, this is just. It's all coming up wins for Grandview. It's all coming up Millhouse. Every single thing that they need to have happen is happening to them. And unfortunately for Ohio Northern, it just feels like it's the exact opposite. And Grandview now with the Rift Herald being dropped in that bottom side, more gold will be put, put towards this vein who is already on three kills. Kraken Slayer completed for them. Completed the call as well. And man, it's just looking so, so good for Grandview here. And it really, again good draft from them i think that you know opting to pick a vein in the place that they did on that r3 was so smart because they're like okay well if you're playing zigs i'm just gonna pick something that scales to the moon you have no kill threat over me and they did exactly that i loved what i saw from them in their draft and it's working out beautifully for them in this game it's going to continue to work all the way through. Went back immediately, picked up a Null Magic Mantle, I believe is going for a little bit more safety on the back end. But I mean, you're not too worried about it, right? You, you know you're going up against double AP, might as well. Aggression at this point is also being locked out of the fights, right? Uh, I, I don't think Aggression can fully 1v1 anyone at this point. Maybe the Syndra, of course, uh, the Syndra is still relatively squishy. But it's still just every avenue for Ohio Northern has been locked down so much earlier on. Again, in game one, it took about 22 to 25 minutes, I think, for Grand Tree to really start uh, pressuring down that game winning push. By the way, Drake still has not been taken by either of the teams. <laughs> so, so we're like, this game will go like elongated pretty significantly as Prank Crew is getting dove on aggression. Oh, oh, oh Prank Crew. That is come rude. On. You <laughs> One auto attack, but that was majorly a burn of the AOE field, and the and the that static field normally it, it does nothing. It does what like peanut damage. Yeah, I want to say like twenty damage per tick every second, which is ridiculously low. It's so rude to that. do that. It's basically <laughs> yeah. getting kills with that is it, it's it's rude. It's rude. You're right. That's <laughs> sure it's gonna be taken here. Oh my god, Pluto with the dive in. Pluto said, screw it, we're going. Meslo takes the kill, and Pluto says, thank you. As Aaron is going to push down mid, this is Grandview doing what I hope they would, which is instead of waiting, instead of taking things slow, they accelerate the pace of their win and are looking to try and break up with the base much earlier than in game one. Yeah, I mean, acceleration is the name of the game right now. It's a 10k gold lead at 20 minutes, and Baron is going to be on the table relatively shortly and you look at the top side it's going to be a nightmare for ohio northern to kind of clear all that vision and try and get into a chance where they can get to the baron pit as we look at the player gold i mean yeah this this just makes sense doesn't it all the top four players 
on the side of Grandview University Aggression, the only one who's closest next, and it's uh, it's getting to that, what I like to call the, uh, what's your favorite type of Pokemon state of the game of the Legends, because uh, Grandview right now, it's really up to them to just continuously just dot their I's, cross their T's, and this should be a win for them, again, unless something, like, really disastrous were to happen. This is a game one. Disastrous would be every single member just like walking forward and trying to take it like a Pokemon battle, except yeah. you met a, a stampede in the Pokemon battle. It's just like, oh gosh, I ran into five Pokemon instead of one. That would be that would be about it. And even then, I would assume at least two or three would still fall, right? Like Mezzo right. is gonna one shot someone with the Shadow Flame in pocket, and the Soul Sealer now stacking up has been sitting on ten stacks for quite a long time. And you, the only reason you know that is because. That Mezzle has not died yet, right? You know that was just the upgraded, I think, recently uh, on the last recall. So, Grandview have everything. They have everything. They want nothing except more turrets, more kills, and maybe this Baron buff. Yeah, the, the way it feels like it's like if a Voltorb comes out of nowhere and just, like, <laughs> self-destructs over everyone. And, you know, the game gets to a relative state of evenness here. But, again, Baron was on the <laughs> table, and it's just going to be taken. They're just going to start doing it. I mean, Cuz is nowhere near here. This is a free Baron. It's just it, a free Baron. Is this going to be one of the times that we actually see Baron taken before Dragon? Is that yeah, actually is. what we're seeing yep. here? It is. It's going to happen. Yep. What What am I watching, <laughs> Kenobi? Is this standard in MEC? Come on, tell me. No, I don't. This is, this is not standard. Usually, Dragons are, like, <laughs> gone. Like, this is... We're already at two Dragons, usually, it feels like. I mean, this Dragon has been here forever. It's probably been, like, guys, why am I still alive? What is happening? <laughs> Usually you kill us so quickly and I've lived for 21 minutes. What is this? What is this? <laughs> it's so weird to see that and now we're still waiting for a second. We don't even know what soul is going to be right now. That's the weirdest thing. At 22 <laughs> minutes, we don't know what soul is coming up. We do know it's going to be mountain or infernal. And if it's a second infernal coming out here, that'll put it at three infernal oh, souls oh. that we've had in Kato, two Kato. series. Kato. Oh, That's clear. okay. Kato. It's fine. It's fine. Kata, Kata Kata was, was over there, and I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> it's a horror game. They're going to walk it in always and get is. jump scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Pop out the flash and they just run away. All right. We're good. We're good. Oh, mm. man. Looking at it, though, Coulter is going to hide off on the wing. Going to wait for this bot lane to try and be taken over. And Prank Guru is going to now be lane swapped in as we get a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. It's kind of the feeling that we're getting. Yeah, I mean, this is good that they can they get split push here. I mean, no one can really match the Syndra. Jace is pretty strong right now. So if you're a higher northern, you have to... Onus is really on you to, like, send multiple members down to specific lanes and try and beat it, especially with the Baron pushing into you. Kato has to be very careful. He gets hit by one scab of the week. I'm pretty sure he's going to get melted. It's the terrifying thought of pain coming to aral you up here. And the inhibitor doors are already being knocked on as Meslo is full on shoving this top side. It is pushed off a little bit, but that's a flash over the wall as we do see Meslo getting jumped on. There's a flash out on side, and it's going to be the challenge. Thunderlord is being dropped down. Meslo should fall, but that's going to be the unleashed power. They get the kill, but at what cost? Mid lane tower does fall. The inhibitor is open for the taking. They put so much towards that top side, and all they got was a singular kill. It wasn't huge shutdown though so that is something yes. that they can hold in their back pocket but like in the grand scheme of things how much is that going to matter because grandview is still ahead 11k gold so it is a really good pick i mean getting just getting that pick i think it's good you have to like force something you know you're in a position where you have to start forcing things have to start getting these kills on side laners and doing it is really good for ohio northern but grandview is still very much in control what the kill does is it does kind of make this Baron not as strong as it could have been. Yes, the base got broken to an extent, but you keep all your inhibitors, which is definitely something that you want to do, and you don't lose as much as you could have. It's only a 1K, 1.5K Baron power play. Only 1.5. What could have been worse? It, it definitely could have <laughs> been worse, but it's still in the positive, I think, and that's what Grandview is just like, yeah, it wasn't really there to do anything but they broke up the base that's all they really need to do they need to break up the base they're not worried about the gold as you said they are excessively in the lead seven towers to one so far and it's only going to continue to rise Meslo said listen top lane isn't deterring me i'm right back up there i'm right back <laughs> up there pushing yeah don't no worry and also had <laughs> it's funny Meslo does have a book in their back pocket with no chapters in it so that's unfortunate <laughs> 
That's so you mean. Did. Someone ripped out all the pages. It's like, oh. Yeah. Now I guess you gotta do it all over again. It's a writer's worst nightmare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, we can't all be Brandon Sanderson, who writes four books in, like, 2019 <laughs> alone, and is just oh like, hey, gosh. I'm going to start this Kickstarter. Oh, I got funded in 33 seconds. Oh, I made, like, $35 million. <laughs> Woo! We win, right? That's like winning at life, I think, at that point. You're just like, I've done it. I've done everything that I need to do right there. <laughs> Still, though, we assume those chapters will be filled up very, very quickly as Meslo is still very powerful at 5 and 1. Has the Shadow Flame still went up and picked up a needlessly large rod. So this is all in on the uh, on this specific damage. Might only be able to pop out, I want to say. It might only be Reaper at this point because uh, Kato is actually ranked up a little bit with the Rylize. It does give it a little bit of a health boost. We'll throw. Still dancing around that mid lane though, so it's a little bit more difficult to break open the inhibitor. Grandview gonna jockey for position for a bit longer. We're just seeing kind of uh, posturing from both these teams. Not really too much in terms of engagements just yet. Us looking along this side, trying to see what they can find. But one of the, I mean, some positives for Ohio Northern here that they do have is that like Cass is now on three items. Ziggs is getting there as well on two items. So. There is some damage output now that you have from Ohio Northern. The issue that's going to come is that you look on the other side, everyone's like chalked up with items. Everyone has like three, basically. <laughs> Except for Arma, who, you know, we don't... We don't talk about sports when we talk about items, because they don't matter. No, I'm just sad. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, looking at it, though, Dragon is now coming up. And finally, we get the battle for the at Dragons. It only minutes. took... Tw yeah, <laughs> 26 for people to challenge here, by the way. That is ridiculous. That's going to be a Mega Infernal Bomb being dropped down into that pit. It's just simply picked up. It's going to be Mountain, so not Infernal. Oh, However, guess who got picked on? Prank Guru. We're pranking you again. Aggression is going to get pinched as a result. That is a painful sight to see, but guess who's getting caught on the other side? Oh, cuz! Cuz tried to flash with a lantern and doesn't get to. Tango got jumped on by Cold Throw. This is disaster after disaster as the final bolts pierce the thresh. Death is denied from Aaron as Aaron takes the kill of the Warden. Ohio Northern go ahead and watch their top jungle in support fall, which should allow Grandview to break open this inhibitor. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is there's a lot of good anti-siege for Ohio Northern. Still a lot of poke damage. I mean, you saw just one Q from Zig takes away half of Mesl's health bar. They can't really siege without the Baron. They need the Baron with this composition because there's not a lot of long-range siege on this comp besides, like, maybe Jace, but Jace isn't here. So you need the Baron to kind of secure yourself the ability to break the base. And with, Kane, I mean, with Vayne being this fed, it should be melted relatively easily, and there's nothing Ohio Northern can do about it. Have to sit and watch as their demise is almost imminent here. Oh, they didn't do that smite, wow. actually. Oh, I was... <laughs> that could have been... The fact that the Ziggs bomb had the damage going in, that could have been very <laughs> scary. That would have been that would have been something I think I'd never seen before if that would have happened. I, I've seen Weeder. Uh, I, I have seen a Yumi steal away a Baron and a Dragon before. That should be but illegal. That's... It is, because that was like iron. I don't know how I got an iron, but I looked him up, and I was like, in iron kill? I was like, this is <laughs> this is interesting. But it happened, it happened. And uh, I I also believe that uh, the jungler didn't know how to smite because they were down a lot of CS. Either oh, way, uh, steals do not occur here in the MEC. It is fully taken away by Grandview, and this should allow Meslo to push a little bit better, right? This is going to allow them to have a bit more in that 1-3. However, Jace is still pushing further down the lane and this is going to give at least 20 seconds for Ohio Northern to decide if they want to try something or not. And these minions are just going to be escorted into the base trying to take down these inhibitors as you can see a split push is happening a 1-3-1 one, one here as Aaron needs to be a bit careful but now with the thresh hook not being there and no flash on volley bear should be able to move back up move forward a little bit more in position. It's just the pinch. Look at the base. It is in shambles for Ohio Northern. That's going to be the call. Cuz goes ahead and tries to rush forward. Gets a flash out of Aaron, but it's still the base. That's all that you need. Inhibitor falls and Ooh, might be one more. Good scout of the week catches two. But no one else is going to fall. Ohio Northern, they got to try something. One last ditch effort. They can't keep bleeding out like this. 
every inhibitor is down. And here it comes. An empowered shock blast takes out aggression's HP. The scout of the week again finds multiple unleashed power, destroys Reaper as his own life is reaped. Grandview University looking to finish things off here. It's gonna be the onslaught of shadows securing the win. Backline aggression looking to try to get more. Baited out the petrifying gaze is Aaron as three bolts do not take the kill, but it is gonna be enough. The towers have fallen. The fountain is assaulted and Grandview take a 2-0 win over Ohio Northern University. Grandview University continued their perfect run through the regular season of the MEC with a great performance at the end of this, uh, at the end of the series that we saw from them letting the vein scale some really good mirroring from Coltro on that jungle and what a performance from them to round it out for them during this regular season. I think they're now 20 and 0 in terms of their win loss. So huge congrats to to Grandview Vikings for a perfect regular season. I think they might have to play one more game. I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure, but at least for now, perfect season for them. Yeah, so we do get a chance to talk to, I believe, Aaron. We'll be coming in for an interview for Grandview and to get a little bit of an idea of their perfect record. I mean, like you said, they're on pace to go ahead, finish it off, and I wouldn't be surprised if they take it into playoffs as well. This is a squad that can easily dominate here. We didn't get to see any of the spiciness. I am sad. I want to see that Teemo come out. <laughs> I want to see some craziness come out. Uh, the vein, though, was definitely a treat for sore eyes after watching some of my solo queue games. Please don't don't ask me about that. We will go ahead and take a look, though, as I do believe we'll go to a very, very short break. Make sure the interview is set up, and then we get to talk to one of the members of Grandview University to get their insight into their current record. Please don't go anywhere.
And welcome back. We are here with an interview with the one, the only Aaron, having a phenomenal time in that game. Aaron, how are you feeling right now after that 2 0 victory and the continuation of your perfect MEC season run so far? Feeling pretty good. I like. I want to keep undefeated for the rest of the season because our director said if we go undefeated, he'll buy us food and boba. So gotta gotta keep it. Clean. <laughs> Heck yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, so kind of tell me, Aaron, a little bit about what you're doing in drafts because in drafts, I feel like people have gotten uh, a little bit. It feels like they're bullying you because they ban out all your champions. How yeah. do you feel when you know you're going into a game and you see like two or three off the bat, just like eighty carry bans? Honestly, it's been Ophelia's jinx for so long, and those I would say probably my best champions. So when they're all banned, I get to like pick something more fun. I would say, I mean, like. Ophelia's Jinx is fun, but man, I've been playing that 50 times a day, a week. Like, so boring. But then I get to play Vayne today, so it's pretty good. And what about that uh, that revenge for Pankuru? As a, uh, of course, you kind of knew Ohio Northern were going to be pinching that top side. What were kind of the thoughts going into the draft for that one? Because as you do have to plan for Pankuru to maybe not be in the game as much, did that influence your style, or was that well within your expectations? So for the first game, we wanted to play completely bot side because it's Cake Pharma. So we sent we, we cast bot, but we realized like their play style is just to oh my god, not mess over our top. Not fuck over. <laughs> Messed over our top, and Frankaroo was getting a little tilted up here. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he, was, he was getting four man, rightfully so though. He was. Yeah, so he got he got five man, and I was feeling a little bad, but we were winning both sides. So. Hey man, come on, man. <laughs> Dude, on. I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask who so keeps Frankaroo sane on. because it feels like every time I watch Frankaroo, he's getting like. Three man, four man, five man. Yeah. He's just who keeps him sane in the team. Honestly, we just let him, we just let him go crazy. I mean, oh, we don't say much. Him, let him tilt. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind you, of funny. You press mute. Yeah, press mute. Legit mute. It's fine. We just mute him. We rage his. Oh. Or prank your. Why not? Yeah. So for the second game, though, we realized that they're just gonna play top side. So we popped up, and just AFK farms mid and bot, and then we just hover further dive, and we won two v two top. So yeah. Look like it was a great job. And again, congratulations on the victory. You guys are continuing through your run of the MEC. And to round things out, I got to ask, are there, is there anyone that you want to give a huge shout out to? Anyone that you want to, you know, send a little bit of respect over towards uh, before we close out the interview? Uh, shout out to my teammates. They give me all the CS so I can carry. <laughs> uh, shout out to my mom. Shout out to my mom. Yeah, love my mom. And uh, shout out to, wait, hold on. Special shout out to this guy. My support, he always dies for me. <laughs> My dog for life. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And again, congratulations on the win. And thank you so much for the interview, Aaron. Have a thank good one. Thank you. And of course, with that, that will be the end of the interview there. But we have some more MEC action to follow as the LAN at Drew University continues. For those that are actually at the LAN, please keep in mind that although the FGC and some of the other uh, tournaments have already started and will be ending shortly, there's even more games to be played tomorrow. If you're in the area, sign up for the Valorant and Rocket League tournaments that will be going on at the start of Sunday's event. You don't want to miss out there. We'll have more action, though, as again, we have our third series of the day coming up here very shortly it is going to be the ottawa braves versus illinois college esports so you don't want to miss that at all we'll go to a very short break and we'll be back in just a few to give you the entertainment that you so deserve
Welcome back to the Midwest Esports Conference. I'm Axman87, joined by DJ Cast. DJ, we're on the docket here tonight, and it is uh, it's Ottawa University versus Illinois College. DJ, what should we expect from this matchup? What we should expect is uh, actually probably a lot of fun here, Axman. We've got two teams kind of going in slightly different directions, and, and I think the standings, and, and in my opinion, you know, Kind of the, the the play we've seen thus far this season will certainly still favor the Ottawa Braves, Axeman. But Illinois College has, has been on the up in the last couple of weeks, right? They started out with that very brutal slide four weeks in a row. They did not win, uh, you know, a series. They had one game win after those four weeks against the Ottawa Braves, actually, who are playing today. And now they've got two series win under their belts against Drury. So they have been improving. They have seen a lot of the players that they kind of harped up to us, uh, myself and a couple of the casters at the start of the season have been showing notable strides. And now they're going to try to strike at the heart of this Ottawa Braves lineup, who suddenly is only one spot above them in the standings. Absolutely here. And looks like we are going to be able to get into draft just shortly. I'm not sure if we have a, a link for that or what's going on there, but we'll get that underway in just a little bit here and see if we can't get into game one here on week six. Uh, yeah, just going to wait a little bit uh, on the draft here to get started, I believe, Axeman. But uh, I'll be looking forward to see what we do get uh, for these picks. Of course, we always know when you're playing as Ottawa, you're banning the Warwick away. Uh, so it has been kind of a uh, season-long journey to watch what Brixton is pulling out in the top lane and to watch how he's improving uh, on those picks. I, I personally have been impressed uh, with Brixton this season. I think he has made a lot of strides, right? He, he has admitted himself in interviews that you know, he's got a lot of work to do to get up to that level, right? His level uh, was a lot about that Warwick, but I, I have been impressed by his candor. I've been impressed by his work ethic, and I do think he's taken a lot of good strides. So that's always an interesting one for me to see in draft, Axeman. And then, of course, some of the changes we have coming in the recent patches. I'm interested to see what Illinois College busts out and where they want to put their resources. A lot of it uh, has been into Usopp in weeks past. But some of the roster swaps that they've made away from Usopp actually have netted them a couple of wins. So the roster and then what they draft for that roster will be a question mark for me going into game one. 100% looking forward to getting to cast that work top if it does make it through draft. Though oh, it, it sounds like uh, it probably will not. That is interesting, though, having to draw a ban like that. We're in a meta right now so full of hyper carries and uh, you know, things to that effect that uh, having to draw that Warwick ban is a really n interesting draft tool. I mean, uh, if you get like a, a B1 Jinx pick out of this Warwick ban, that's uh, you know infinite value for your team. And uh, we'll see what he can uh, get going for his team here as we get into the draft. But um, yeah, drawing bands like that is always super nice. I, it's something that gets left on the table a lot, too, when you're talking about one tricks, is that uh, the reason they get so good at this champion is because they know how to play it into any matchup, and uh, that does translate fairly well when you're talking about competitive. You know, if you're in draft and you're like, hey, what are you going to play into this Darius? One tricks will probably know, right? Know how to, how to take down uh, that champion. So we are in the draft now here. And uh, see what that opening ban is from Illinois College trying to take down this Warwick uh, Challenger top laner. I mean, fi I got 50 bucks on Warwick here, Axeman. <laughs> yeah, it's just first banning, taking it away I, right I, at the I'm, outset. I'm, I'm, all, I'm, all the, I'm all the trade. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever you want to bet, I, I'd be on it. Oh, yeah. There's, oh, boy. Karma ban yeah. away at the start here for Ottawa. This makes a lot of sense, actually, Axeman. Illinois. For sure has been taking uh, a little bit of a page out of the GVU drafts from the early part of this season where GVU would uh, first pick Karma on blue side to give it to Pluto or kind of feign the option of the initial smite Karma. Uh, but it's just a really strong pick that gives you a pushing lane even into something like a Jinx if it is drafted. So like the ban away and uh, yep, there we go. <laughs> taking any question away whether or not Warwick will make it through this draft and yeah I like the Karma Band too I feel like if you're down in rank going into a top laner that's um, you know just highly favored more favored than you are uh, picking a, a support top laner can be a really powerful tool you know you go for the Karma top that maybe uh, is more historically uh, strong there in past metas but you know other support tops have come through in the past few weeks as well as uh, competent options and that could be something you go for into uh, an enemy top laner that's a little bit outside your purview but the corky band coming through there it's all about the hyper carries baby and corky is one of the biggest ones yes he is he's also a favorite of temporary so like the ban away from blonde we'll see if they continue to try to pinch that pool 
we do see a Soraka ban away actually here from OU, something that of course Nine Lives he loves his ambulance champions, uh, Axe Man. He's got the Yumi, of course. He's got Zillion. He's got Soraka. Can't let this man be on a healing champion. Force, force nine lives to engage. Take a couple, of, take a couple of those lives off. Is always a good option. Senaban away is finally, I think, uh, a champion not bugged with Tom Kench anymore. I would hope. I don't know if you uh, saw any of that bug, uh, Axe Man, but it was, uh, it was not very pretty uh, before it did get fixed. Nope, not pretty at all. Did not like watching that. But uh, for me, blue side, if you're banning Senna, you're trying to ban out like lane bullies, people that are going to push out your late game champions like Jinx, right? Love that red side Jinx ban here from Illinois College. Great read on the meta. Uh, there are minor regions where Jinx has like a 100% win rate blue side first pick. So yeah, you, you want to take this away from any blue side that you possibly can. And uh, reading that Senna ban really well with this Jinx ban, like to see that first pick coming through here in just a bit from Ottawa. There you go, Lee Sin coming out at you. Pretty good first pick. Yeah, it's an interesting start, I will say, Axeman, right? You ban away the Jinx, so you are leaving the kind of other side of the jinx Ophelios combo available. Thresh is still also up, so if you did ban, or if you did pick the Ophelios, right, if it's, if, if it's part of the matchup you want to play, they can't answer it. They might have to take Thresh to take it away from you, and then you could still play something like Lulu which is still on the table. So a little surprised to not see the AD carry prioritized. But again, Levi is the newer uh, at this point. Uh, AD carry brought in for Young. So maybe uh, going to look to not play around that lane as much this time around. Speaking of playing around a bottom lane, though, Axeman, uh, you draft a Kalen, you draft a new deer. Um, it, it, you kind of got to play around the game, right? <laughs> You really do have to, and uh, it's an unfortunate part of the meta being so fo uh, focused on hyper carries is that they eat up so many bands, so we oftentimes see the same three or four junglers come through. I know there was a game the other day uh, in Academy that had four jungle bands and forced Malice onto like a Shivana pick. That's so exciting because I'm like, finally, you know, a different jungler that we haven't seen in a while, but nope, there's no jungle bands this go around unless you're counting the Warwick ban, uh, and I know we're not in this game. So it is Lee Sin into Udir. This go around. See, Ophelio's pick coming down as well with uh, Rise for Blonde. It's good stuff. Yeah, the the uh, the Rise, of course, very, very strong. Will give some side laning potential. It's a nice 2v2 in the mid jungle. Uh, definitely would have gotten banned away. Again, I am a little surprised to see them not prioritize a support partner and pick up a Lulu, which I certainly expect to be banned in the draft. You see the Thresh taken away. I expect the Lulu to be the second ban as well. Axe Man is the Camille. will round out the uh, draft here for I see the first phase. A lot of pick already on IC. The the interesting part of their comp I, I see happening right now is you've got subsidized on this, Caitlyn, that you want to play towards, you want to path down towards. But the jungler is a setup slash farming jungler, right? Your deer wants to full clear, like, really hard. That's where he gets his advantages. He's going to out clear Lee Sin. Coda will be the one who wants to make plays on this pick. And so they're kind of two champions that want to do slightly different things. So I'm interested to see where Hulk, who is starting in today with Holmgaier, the normal jungler, actually starting in top, uh, he's going to have a little bit of responsibility to decide how they want to play this game out. And the Lux just kind of uh, sinking in more of those resources into the bottom lane. All right. Looks good to me. The Lux coming through there. Looking for back-to-back -back picks. Set coming through. Should be going up top side for Brixton. Deciding, hey, if it's not going to be Warwick, it's going to be set. Down bot side here. I think we're still looking for a support for Levi. Lulu's, Lulu's still up. Yeah, Lulu's still up, I believe. Now Thresh taken away, so that's not up. Wow. Desire. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. A lot of early game damage there. Uh, critically, a lot of uh, turret uh, turrets as well coming through, which is a little interesting for a bot lane in Season 12. But um, what are we looking for from IC? I think they still want, uh, still want a mid laner maybe. Yeah, could go Vex here. Still available. That can play into Rise in the side lane. Orianna, of course, is an option, but... Ah, they left it open, and I did not see it. The Camille Galio combination is still available, and that is, of course, incredibly powerful and will be particularly effective against OU. As we look at this composition, Axe Man, the later this game goes, there's really only one side lane threat. But yes, uh, Set can play in a side lane, uh, but he really can't threaten you under a turret in side lane. He wants to push the lane and then try and find a flank angle. It's really just Rise. Well, what's great at picking off a single side lane? Uh, Camille Gallio. It's like the best combo in the game. It's just ruining a single side laner's game. So, Blonde's going to have a tall, tall task if he wants to carry this game in the later stages. And, of course, this will set up a lot of pick potential 
or icy which is what their comp is designed to do they do need to play around this bottom lane axe man subsidize and loan force they should get the push they have all these resources at level six to come dive their bot lane you know influence their bot lane and of course hulk can be there early on as well the very interesting thing about how this lane will play out of course this has been made a lot more volatile by nine lives as pick it's good in deluxe in lane you can stop the light binding with the the roots you can get damage out but not the kind of most common combination with the Ophelios. He's not exactly a kill combo kind of character or, or AD carry in the early stages, uh, unless your gun combo is really correct. So I'm fascinated to see how Nine Lives plays this out because if they can negate some of the pressure from the bottom lane, they can let their scaling come online. But if they do not, uh, he can just die over and over and over again as this game progresses. For sure, and something both these drafts leave out to uh, out to dry a little bit is that they don't have a lot of support, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we're just talking raw heals and shields here for these hyper carries, for the Aphelios, uh, and for this Caitlyn, so... Um, you know, normally a draft and in season 12, the meta right now is going to have some enchanters. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's just the mage supports coming through here. So a lot of damage in both these comps, but not uh, not so much really protecting uh, these AD carries. And that is something Levi and Subsidize are going to have to deal with going into this late game. A lot of dive. We'll go ahead and say that. You got the Lee Sin coming at you if you're an AD carry this game. Uh, you got the Camille coming at you too. So you're going to need uh, at least some peel from those mage supports if you want to succeed in these team fights. Uh, yeah, good, good luck with that one, actually. I, I can't remember the last time I saw Zyra peeling for me with, with the plant. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that route is usually reserved for uh, offensive efforts. Uh, I, I do think uh, Levi, it's going to be a tall task for him to stay alive in team fights. It's going to be a tall task for Blonde to stay alive in a silent. They're going to have to play very, very cautiously. I do give them the edge you know, as this game progresses in terms of pure scaling. But I do think access in team fights could be a, a, a tricky prospect. Access, you mentioned the dive. It is. It feels very hard for me, uh, for an Aphelios to kind of stand and auto this composition. It feels like it'll take him a long time to get through the the uh, the Udir. It feels like it'll take a long time to get through the Galio. So a little bit of a challenge, I think, for Ottawa Braves to execute on this composition. But they should at least have the clearer stat uh, scaling in the later stages of the game. The question for them in this early game will be can you stop? pushing the bottom lane that Illinois College is clearly looking uh, to do to invest in subsidize and loan force. 100% here. Both of our teams in retrograde opposite sides of the map. Nobody's going to be able to find anybody in these first few minutes, DJ. So maybe not the most exciting level one, but it's a little fun to watch if you're watching the mini-map here. Certainly is. Oh, one thing here I've... we go. One thing I've noticed here, uh, Axeman, as we do look at the rosters, it is Usopp actually in for Illinois College, and he's about to walk into a little bit of damage from Nine Lives. Gets a nice root down. And uh, I'm excited to see Usopp uh, in to start this series, right? We mentioned that they kind of rotated their lineup last week. Their win came in the game that Usopp, uh, I don't, I believe he got one win, and then their second win came with him, uh, with Holmgeier actually up in the top lane. But Usopp is the member that they've been talking about all year as their prodigy freshman, someone who I do think has grown quite a bit and loves his mechanically um, kind of intensive champions like this Camille. So I'm excited to see uh, how they look today with him. A lot of agency in this game with temporary in his back pocket. And I want to see him really try to take it to Brixton and the rest of Ottawa, to get them off to a good start in this series. It is a champion that has a lot of roam potential in the mid lane that doesn't really get utilized as often as the Twisted Fate and the Rise, right? But this Galio really does bring a lot more uh, just assistance from the mid lane, right? Whereas those other two bring more damage. Well, if you're a side laner in Season 12, top lane or bot lane, you don't necessarily need the damage, right? Uh, at least not at certain stages of the game. If you're a Jinx, I think you appreciate the CC a little bit more than you would uh, the damage from a Rise from a Twisted Fate. So. So it's an interesting pick, and I'd like to see him work out. Uh, see it work out for him here. I think you win this lane pretty handily if you're the if you're the Galio anyway. Uh, yeah, laning phase is really hard for Rice to do anything to you. This is uh, this. You know, most of the time we like to joke about the island in the top lane, Axe Man. It, it's kind of shoes on the other foot this time around. The, the, this mid lane is, uh, as I like to joke with Kenobi, it's uh, a combination of the Resident Evil and uh, Resident Evil game series and Sleeper Cell resident sleeper uh that's what we have in mid lane <laughs> at least until level six when these two will get their semi-global abilities online and then it is all about picking your time 
and coordinating with your teammates to get that more kind of creative play from it. For sure there. Waiting for your moment and then pulling the trigger at the correct time. A little bit of vision there. Not sure that ward from temporary caught out the Lee Sen. A little fight up top side there. Just some trading back and forth. Nothing too major. Perhaps anyway. <laughs> we'll see if that heats up here moving forward. There we go. Just watching the Lee Sin take the red buff here for the time being. Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of, kind of tell, kind of gives you an indication of, of the action or lack thereof that we yeah. have on the rift so far, Axeman. Of course, this is Olmgar's slight advantage as he gets onto this first scuttlebug. He just does have that slight bit of extra clear speed compared to the Lee Sin, and will continue to kind of get extra camps as time goes on, unless Coda can either find plays or disrupt the pathing and. Ooh, they might challenge for this buff. Ooh, uh, yeah, ooh. big fight topside here. You saw just narrowly out of there with the hook shot. Still had that in the back pocket. He's going to have to take the reset. Might be the dive from Lee Sin, actually, as he walks up backwards. I don't think he has time, though. Oh, no, they're going to wait for the TP. Uh, don't yeah. do it, Coda. Don't yeah, here he do comes. it, Coda. Don't, don't be this mean. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, big wave stacked on top side there, so the dive is pushed away a little fight mid lane now braves is taking him on 1v2 dj hello so much damage from the rise oh here we go yeah now it still fights up top side brixton you got to be careful here because he's got the hook shot up in a second what a spending quite a bit of time doesn't really have any camps at the moment uh just the gromp although that is the highest exp camp finds out that the krugs uh, have I think they're up. I, I don't know if that resonating strike just or that uh, sonic wave just missed. A little unlucky there for Coda. But again, we, we see the time spent here by Coda in the top side, right? These are the kind of timers that we need to see him take advantage of. Again, he will just get out cleared by Holmgeier the longer this goes on without kind of any action happening. It's just better for Holmgeier. He's already two camps up. It will get worse. That is the power of the Udir. They will end up trading the Krugs here. So a lot of champions will invade this hard and actually just put a ward down on Krugs just for some tracking, but uh, this is the Udyr effect, right? You are so fast around Summoner's Rift, taking these camps back to back that, yeah, you just invade solely for enemy Krugs. That's what you like to see here. Should just get the Krugs before backing out. Zyra looking for him now down bot side. Actually going to find him out. He's just too fast. Got this champion. <laughs> he just ran past the Zyra, just walked right out of there. Come on now. Yep, just got a pain threat and a flash away actually yeah. uh, from Blonde as uh, that was a lot of CC that was about to come down. So he respects it, flashes away. And we, we mentioned kind of this lane more about getting to level six than anything else. And so he does not want to give any advantage over to temporary, just wants to hold on and wait for that level six and the realm warp to come in Axe Man. Home gear just taking camp after camp away from this Lee Sin and you hate to see it. He's even going to help push in this wave now for temporary. He's having just a killer wave time. Pause drops down. We're going to see if we can get uh, what exactly is causing that pause for you up here in just a second. But until then, looks like a bit of a ping spike coming through maybe for somebody. But they're working it out. They're trying to get the internet issue solved. Uh, it's a bit of a Comcast diff, I guess you could say, DJ. I wonder what the internet act they actually do have, uh, uh, Axeman. I am, I am myself a Comcast man. <laughs> I uh, maybe not the most proudly. I think it's it, it. They're fine sometimes. Yeah, really. Both teams having bad ping. You think they have better ping uh, with both teams being so close to Chicago? I mean, one of them's like literally Illinois College, and then Ottawa is not that far from Chicago either. But uh, I guess it is the ping issues. Might be having some issues with the weather. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm being told that they have Bell Internet prim primarily in Ottawa. Whatever whatever Bell is. So. Uh, if you're a Bell subscriber, maybe give him a call. Ask him what's going on up there. Yeah, Bell, uh, ask him. What, I'm not sure if Ottawa is at the land, of course. We haven't been able to ask them yet. Of course, the uh, land taking place at Drury today and this weekend. Uh, uh, oh, it is Man. Comcast. I knew it. Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> at least if you're live, right? Uh, of course, with COVID restrictions, not every team has been able to make it to every land. So not sure exactly who is down there at Drury at the moment, but... Whether it's Bell or it is Comcast, uh, one of you, get your, get your stuff together, guys. We, we got League of Legends to play here to watch and enjoy as we're still kind of waiting for any of the action to jump out now, Axeman, in game number one of this best of three series between Ottawa and Illinois. 
we sure are and um yeah people are messaging me that it's back up we should be back in to the rift here in just a little bit um while we wait for that spectator delay but yeah so uh, map situation right now lots of fighting in our top lane there they're trying to get camille shut down early prevent that scaling meanwhile down bot side bit of a snooze fest down there as those mage supports have kind of canceled each other out a little bit there you have mountain dragon on summoner's rift right now i believe both junglers are on the bottom side of the map so we might see a fight here around dragon pit as we get back in the game yeah, it could very well be. We'll see which team kind of has priority on it. You know, some teams do not really believe in dragon stacking that much. I would expect a little more priority on it from Illinois College, given that their uh, composition here is designed to get subsidized and loan force ahead, get them priority, uh, and allow them to kind of take early game advantages. And usually when you have that, Drake is just something you can take to threaten the late game win condition with your early game champion. So I would expect them to have a little more priority on it than Ottawa University uh, does, but it really depends on kind of what your coaching staff uh, believes is whether you kind of go for the first Rift Herald and try to swap or you are a, uh, a resource giver uh, into the Drake stack. Yeah, 100%. And personally, I'm a big fan of drag stacking because it works really well for me in my solo queue games. I, I don't know what it is about solo queue, but enemy junglers are just like objectives. What is that? And I'm like, uh, I, I know exactly what, what objectives are because I'm, I cast games all the time. And, uh, yeah, it's it's all about dragon stacking for me. like to see that first Rift Herald taken down as well. Uh, good to see that get dropped on the plating. And we haven't really seen either jungler make a maneuver for that quite yet. So that's something to look forward to here in the future as well. And and uh, should be getting back in in just a little bit. Looks like teleport situation on Summoner's Rift is that Rise is teleport down. Uh, and, of course, the, the advantage is going to go over to temporary on Galio having... Uh, that uh, summoner spell available. I'm not sure if we're level 6 yet. Yeah, we did just hit level 6 here for solo lanes, and uh, those will be available going into this fight as well. Yep, so now the catch is online. You got both the Hextech Ultimatum uh, and the her uh, Heroic Entrance, if I'm not mistaken. I always get this one with Rakan, right? Granted, it is. Yeah, Rakan's W is Granite. Right. Okay, we're, yeah. We're good. Heroic Entrance uh, for the Galio, just a really evil combination for two you know usually kind of like you know camille's a little like yeah or what's the uh what's it uh, law she's definitely like lawful neutral to evil yeah ethically like? ambiguous would be yeah, the term i would ethically use yeah. ambiguous. <laughs> law, lawful for sure i mean she's literally just like enforcing the law but like yeah it's very unethical at times so not exactly sure what category that would fall in but galio is about as like lawful good as it gets here uh axe man but uh Still quite, it's, a, it's quite an evil combination. It doesn't feel good when you are the opponent. It does feel good. I don't think there's a good way to have like a 10 ton statue just drop on you from the sky. Like, I'm sure he's a nice guy and everything, but you know, if you're on the receiving end, you're probably like, yeah, this is the worst thing that could possibly be done to me. But Usopp up topside is doing the worst thing he can imagine to Brixton. This has been a, an interesting 1v1 here, but look at the freeze, man. I mean, you got to feel sorry for him. I know he's ethically ambiguous as far as the lore goes, but that's that's a sick freeze. That lane should kind of get back into its state, but mid lane oh. is really where the action is going to be, Axe. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Flash. Big engage here. Zon comes out from temporary, and there's just nothing Blonde can do. Absolutely deleted there in the mid lane. Olmgar picks up the kill there. That is first blood form as well, and you know what that means, viewers at home. It's the instant rotation onto the dragon, and there will be no contest available here for Ottawa. Yeah, I mean, I really, I'm a huge fan of this play from Illinois College, right? They know that Blonde is flashless, uh, you know, you're, whether you're Oriana, whatever control mage you are, is oh boy, Nine Lives is... A uh, little bit of a contest coming through. Your entrance actually coming down, but the smite is going to secure that dragon for Illinois. Uh, it's still at least in looking for more. That was, that was a nice little last-ditch effort, almost got them the dragon, and like to see the aggression from Levi and Nine Lives, but does not quite get them that objective. You gotta be careful if you're home, Geyer. You gotta make sure you're getting those smites down, but they're gonna walk away with the objective. Yep, they will get the objective. It is a little bit of a contest from Coda, and now he will actually use his tempo to move up towards the Rift Herald. So, like the pathing at the very least, right? He, he gets a chance to take the Drake and uses the base timers that had come out, plus the fact that Heroic Entrance is not available. Walk up and at least trade the Rift Herald out again. Really like to play from Illinois. You, you, they understand that there's a flashless control mage in mid lane, and literally like 
Juan doesn't do a whole lot wrong there, Axe. He just he just is a control mage without flash, and that makes you vulnerable. Three members from Illinois College come to collapse on him to get the kill and the objective that they were planning on all along. For sure. It's just epic setup that Temporary brings to the table. And even though it's not like a ton of damage from the Udyr, it's enough. Oh man, this is an interesting 2v1 now. Uh, Blonde just can't... Uh, it's just it's nothing you can do, right? I mean, it, it's if you're going to walk around the corner into your jungle and it's just the enemy Udyr standing at your raptors, I, I don't think that's something you can anticipate. But uh, I guess he probably should have there if he wanted to stay alive. Yeah, and that is uh, starting to bleed a little bit here now is Ottawa Braves, right? This is your kind of scaling mid, uh, mid laner that wants to go out into a side lane. Now, Owen 2 does not have TP available. We'll have to haul it back to lane. The, the one nice thing for Ottawa in this situation is there's no objective to be taken. It's just going to be farm and EXP that is lost by Blonde to make up. Uh, but it is still very nice proactive work from Illinois College using their tools, using their tempo. Speaking of... Ooh, very nicely done there. The big set ultimate comes down, and it's Usopp going in for the 1v2. He's got the damage here, DJ, but not quite uh, enough to get that uh, get that Lee Sin down. It seemed like the 1v1 was a win there from Camille, but as soon as the Lee Sin showed up, not so much. Oh, here we go. Down the bot side, home guard looking for the gank. It's subsidized walking up. They're going to catch out nine lives. A lot of damage going down the Zyrace, and the hole picks up the kill here. DJ, what a kill it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Press R, delete champion uh, in the bottom lane. Nine lives just accepts his fate, and he's trying to laugh about it because in top side, uh, yeah. Usopp is getting bullied uh, here. The Rift Herald, this is what it is used for. They take him down, they get the plates, and they have the Rift Trail in the back pocket to destroy the turret. This is very nice for Ottawa because we talked about this a little oh. bit in the draft, but you're playing set as the yeah, second charge does come in. Yeah. As the game goes on and your laning phase, your power with the double punches kind of fades away, you have to start getting clever. You have to start looking for angles and flanks to get onto important members in team fights because you're just a run at you champion, right? If you just run straight at the enemy composition, it's very easy to peel you away. And this turret now gives them the kind of angle where you can come through the jungle, out of vision, flash over a wall, or find a clever engage angle and try to make a really big impact with something like the Showstopper in a team. Yeah, it was a nice Showstopper. And um, I don't know. I feel like still uh, Usopp still takes that 1v1 if for no other reason than he's just got the Ignite and able to, to use that advantage. But it really has never been a 1v1 up top side. It has constantly been the Lee Sin up there, and nothing really you can do about that if you're Usopp. Ooh, nine lives, just barely. I think he used up one of their lives there. That was a close one. Lone Force almost with the kill. Getting very close there. Uh, there is a price to pay, of course, for the attention in the top side, Axeman, right? We mentioned the Coda needed to make some plays, uh, and you can see why. He is down nearly 20 CS at this point. Holmgeier enjoying the fact that he can just take away the camps, continue to full clear. But I I'll give Coda some credit, right? We asked him to make plays, and he's done so. He's opened up top lane, and he's there to bully it again. Yeah, he is up top side here. The kick starts off the fight. Big X tag ultimatum. Going to lock up Coda briefly. Dodge some damage as well. He's out with the hook shot, but... Is he gonna run down? Lee sends on the hunt. He's in onto the ward, gets that kill, and walks out scot free, DJ. Yeah, that's pretty nicely played by Coda. Just the execution uh, was uh, kind of the, the difference maker. Usopp played that very well. He actually got out of the showstopper very quickly with his Hextech ultimatum. They can't dodge a sonic wave, and uh, Coda gets all the mechanics right at the back end of that fight to finish him off and stay alive himself. It feels unfair. I mean, we're asking him to dodge sonic waves, but no one could dodge sonic waves. You can't be faster than sound. Come on uh, now, but uh, it is what we I, are I, asking of Usopp, right? I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it's a very unfair comparison, but I, I don't know. Did you see the highlights of Summit on NAR? Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where he just sidesteps uh, River's uh, sonic wave, just like the deftest little, like, tiny slight side to the left. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, an unfair comparison to Summit here as Ottawa. We use all five members to uh, deter any quick dragon soul away from Illinois College. Yeah, deterring that there for them is going to be the Infernal Soul, the Inferno map as well here, DJ. So this is the number one uh, 
highest win percentage dragon soul for hyper carry champions i know it's an interesting stat but it's one they pull from pro play worldwide and uh, i always like bringing that up when there is something like the Ophelios and like the caitlin on summoner's rift because uh, y you gotta keep this soul away from them right it does just win you the game kind of like ocean soul did last season um and uh, you, you want to keep that away from them at all costs it's just way too much burst damage in the late game yeah, Earl Drake is very strong. I'm almost, I'm a little, I'm, I'm wondering, do you know how uh, much higher it is than Hextech? Uh, it is much higher. Hextech is actually last place. Um, really? Yeah, so the soul uh, in and of itself is last place there for win, um, the win percentage. The dragons are actually at highest uh, percentage. So the more Hextech dragons you have, the higher win percentage. But if you get the soul, it just drops off the map. Isn't that interesting? I feel like that, that statistic is, is so cool. That is kind of wild. Like, Hextech is a good soul. And if yeah. you're a hyper carry and you can slow the enemy team comp, that's like really good for you. I, I'm actually quite shocked that that's the case. Yeah, yeah. So it goes uh, Infernal Soul and then Mountain, Ocean, Cloud, and then Hextech is all the way at the bottom. And Dragons, really? you have Hextech at the top. Uh, and then Infernal, Ocean, Mountain, and then Cloud again in last place there. Looks like we're coming through with one more pause out here for you. It should be uh, Ping being the easy... Uh, Thing to blame there for you i mean personally if we could blame anything in life on comcast i'm just gonna do it Ed. I'm, I'm gonna blame hextech soul actually <laughs> this is hextech soul's fault coming through yep. for you do you go ahead and type to riot uh type out your angry emails now and blame them for this pause i was gonna say i i'm still just like shocked by that dragon point now actually I'm, I'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to follow that a, a little closer now I, definitely I'm below cloud soul or hyper yeah. carries. Yeah, That's for the nuts. soul. And yeah, and Cloud Soul is actually not that bad either. Um it's it's oh, still I like second that, but... yeah, second to last place, but anything that gives your hyper carries a little bit of a, of an edge in late game team fights, that's where the the win percentage comes from. And things like the the 300 health shield uh, for the mountain soul in and around there, those are super good and then that burst damage on top as well. Uh if you, it's the type of thing where like if it helps you just one shot a jinx in a late game team fight, that's that just wins you the game right there. Yeah, that that definitely tracks with I I, I definitely track Infernal and Mountain. It's, it's Cloud Hextech one that's a little bit uh weirding me out here, Axe Man, as uh, uh yeah, I I will say, um the kind of like cloud related drakes uh in uh, Elden Ring are also pretty weak, so I, I'm just not a big fan of uh in general so it's kind of like yeah it's so a dragon like i get it it can fly <laughs> it's cool air whatever man <laughs> oh uh, boy. just weird yeah uh, the interesting thing about the uh, kind of drakes being where they are at one one right is we we don't have a quick soul coming up we do have infernal which makes it a lot more valuable so how much is ottawa going to spend to continue to go towards these drakes again you mentioned i i think Maybe this was enough for them to try to let their scaling come online an extra five minutes um, because they used the priority they got in top lane to walk Brixton all the way down to basically deter any sort of team fight around that. They could try to use that tempo again to go back and forth, you know, kind of go back and forth and then back to the Drake uh, if they choose to, but I don't feel like they need to. Uh, so the question will really be, does Illinois College think it's still important to get that Drake uh, with 15 minutes now still on the clock before you can get it? Hey, we'll have to keep track of that, right? I mean, this last dragon has just been more of a, um, like a macro look type thing, getting first move back on the map than really it has been like, do we have the better team fight composition? That's really what that first strike was about too, right? It's just a nice gank. You break open priority for your mid lane, rotate over onto the dragon. And, uh, yeah, if dragons are just going to be like things we pick up through, uh, macro knowledge, just outplays and not things we're actually fighting over. Yeah. I'll go ahead and give them that, uh, Ottawa from here on out. And really to, to any team that, uh, particular is looking for them right now, it doesn't seem like either team is super interested in it. It's more, just to like hey you know they just took the reset or hey we can look for this mid lane gank and then look for dragon uh, and taking more as a, a secondary prize than anything else what i will say is that both teams uh really like focus on that rift herald i think if it wasn't taken so quickly uh up top side there uh, by ottawa uh, you know I, I think it would have been looked for there by illinois i think they were looking for that objective as well and i like to see that focus on rift herald i think it's very important uh, I, too, am a Rift Herald enjoyer uh, a little bit. I, I think in, in our my level... Of, okay, hold on. Ooh, wow. 
Yeah, so. big fight coming through there. Big knockout from the Zyra. Looked like an opportunity to maybe engage for some follow-up from Levi, but uh, he's got white and green, and uh, there's no rhyme about white and green. Temporary looking for Levi now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it is it uh, is just the disengage from both sides. I can come up with one. White and mean is still uh, white and green is still very mean. Uh, particularly oh, yeah. at range. Home guy are going to get rooted. <laughs> oh, yeah, rooted up there. Lots of CC onto the Udyr, but it's just no uh, follow-up once again. Oh, and your big kick coming down. It's a flash in from temporary. Taunt lands on two. Final spark gets one. Lee Sin back in on to subsidize his home gear that ties to the damage from the Rise. Rise with the Realm War brings some of his friends. They look for Lone Force and find him and subsidize back to back. It's three for nothing, DJ. Just an absolute blitz. A storm comes through from the Ottawa Braves. Apparently, they are not happy about where their trajectory is, and they. Maybe we still aren't happy about dropping a game to Illinois College earlier in the season, Axe Man, because of that. That was a very decisive fight in the mid game uh, on a team composition that should again outscale, and they just completely destroyed everything. I mean, the CC chain chunks home guy out. They kick him away to make sure he can't get onto uh, the Rift Herald, and then the the Realm Warp, just so good from Blonde, bringing everyone in. And now you look at the map, right? You look at what Illinois College just drafted for themselves. This is a comp that wanted to invest in bottom lane, that wanted to have turrets, that wanted to have run of the map and control in the early game. They're now 5k gold down, yet to take a turret, Axe Man. And really, where does your Caitlyn go now to try to find these turrets, these advantages? It's already so far behind, and that's not where Caitlyn thrives from. You really need to be ahead of the curve. They're in a lot of trouble in this game and are going to need to find some picks really quickly around objectives to try to vault themselves back in. Not only that do you like playing from ahead on Caitlyn, but your team comp kind of demands it, right? It's certainly in this scenario anyway. Usopp is down, uh, two deaths there, and uh, behind in CS as well up top side. That was another primary damage source for you. Uh, your home gear on Udyr is going full tank. You have a Galio mid lane. Where's the damage coming from from this team, if not from Caitlyn? And it just doesn't seem like it's going to come from Caitlyn either now, DJ. So uh, not a lot of damage coming out of this team comp. You look across the flip side, where does Caitlyn have to go to get a win here you can't square up with levi that is for sure that is a fed of felios yeah, that is a strong boy uh right now for levi 2-0 oh, and 3 nearing his second item and as mentioned where right, it might be a little tricky for him to stand and auto win a fight but if he does at this point uh it, it's it's gonna wall up axe man it is going to hurt quite a bit and we, again we need to see illinois now look for some creative picks right before or around objectives if they want to push their lanes, if they want to have a chance of taking objectives, because I don't think they're winning a 5v5 from this kind of deficit. They don't have the items to do it. I mean, look at the top side, like double Gore Drinker at this point. Everfrost is in. Like, these are scary, scary spikes for the Ottawa Braves. They sure are. There is no plating left available on Summoner's Rift, but the Rift Herald's going to hurt nonetheless. Perhaps even a little bit more here. Takes down that mid lane turret, outer turret. Next one is up on the docket as well. Doesn't look like the defense is going to come through from Illinois College. Yeah, it goes down as well. Interesting stuff, DJ, and a great push there from Ottawa. You can see why they like the Rift Herald so much. I mean, they, they just kind of like everything at this point, Axeman. I mean, they lost yeah. that first Drake, but since then, it's been double Rift Herald. It's been three turrets. It, it's going to be the second Drake again in a row. I mean, it's just four objectives in a row, so like Regardless of what you like, they're just dominating the game. They're just everywhere. And props again to Coda, who we asked to make these kind of plays, who we asked to put his team ahead. Well, look at him. He's 3-0-2, 5 out of 7 KP at this point. He has just been a monster to set up so many of these plays. He really has been enabling his team and doing a great job on that front. Two Dragons now for the Ottawa Braves. I, so I, I always like bringing this up is that uh, when the dragons are split like this uh, and you don't just take four in a row you do get a lot more of instances of one dragon and infernal dragon is a nice one to stack up right and you start getting some really serious damage numbers really quickly and uh, as fed as they already are levi will be doing that much more damage with uh with those infernal dragons stacked up Stacking Infernals will only make this nicer and nicer for the Ottawa Braves. Maybe they don't have as kind of clear a poke lane in, in the bot side, but they have some options uh, as well. Still, Levi 
and Nine Lives will probably be the biggest enjoyers of this. Even a, even a stray uh, Sonic Wave can do a little, bit, uh, apply a little bit of that uh, burn damage from the Infernal Soul or from the Infernal Drake that comes in. Uh, but I'm less concerned about the stats at this point, uh, Axeman. And again, sure. I'm more, more <laughs> concerned about the uh, the map state uh, for Illinois College. They just have barely anywhere to stand at this point. The entirety of the first hurt line is down. Already lost their mid lane tier two. Like, where do you stand? Where do you try to find a play? You can see Nine Lives in Ottawa starting to do their diligence, clear out the line of vision. And with Baron on the map now, any mistake, any time that you get picked on vision, that you lose a team fight, uh, you're just potentially looking at a soul crushing deficit. You really are. 7K is pretty insurmountable at this stage of the game. If we're later into the game, maybe it's not as bad. But, yeah, around the 20-minute mark, it's a, what, a 7K gold lead? That is wild, right? That's like uh, two completed items for your uh, hyper carries there. And you can see uh, that is coming through with the LDR for Levi and uh, with the Guardian Angel. I think Saris and Brace actually is for Brace Nation. They're doing, oh, man, they're really doing the Baron right now, aren't they, DJ? Yes, they are. They can just try to draw <laughs> Usopp's TV or TP, but they're just all it's, vision. The, yeah, it's just gone. It, it's just gone in a flash just like that. There's no map control topside for Illinois College, no uh, vision or anything to that effect. So it goes down. It goes down in darkness as well. Lone Force tries to pick up the steel but does not quite get it. Well, unfortunate. Yeah, it's just clever use of vision. Ottawa Braves have been in complete control of this map and of this game since it's about the eight-ish, nine, ten-minute mark, right? Right around that Rift Herald fight. We really haven't seen Illinois do anything since that point. They're now down 8K, facing a split, and uh, oh boy, home guy. Are, um, yep. Yeah, that's that's not great, right? The pick coming through here. Um, it is actually Blonde that picks up the kill, picking up his second kill there. I, I don't think it really matters at this point, DJ, but you know, I think most people say, hey, give that one to Levi, but he's got the four assists now. They're looking for the inhib turret. It's uh, it's not looking super close at this stage, DJ. We'll go ahead and say that. Inhib turret going to go down. Engage comes through on to subsidize. He's going to net out of that situation. Almost got himself insect, though, DJ. Close one there. They managed to push out Ottawa for the time being, but for how long? My instincts say not long at all. Temporary looking for the possible engage. Instead, going to find a bunch of skill shots in his face. Doesn't feel super good. Looks like they've repelled Ottawa for the time being, but... You know, it seems only temporary. Yeah, I was, uh, well, I, please tell me you intended that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay good, good. Just needed to check, <laughs> Axan. Just needed to check and make sure. Because uh, it definitely is, right? Yes, they repel the push. Yes, they don't lose an inhib. But I don't even know if Ottawa wanted to take the inhib at 22 uh, and a half or 23 minutes, right? They don't really uh, need to. Um, and, the, right, like, they've already opened the base right so now with the turret down you you've kind of pierced the armor so to speak you haven't made a giant hole in it just yet but the weakness is already there with the base open any big fight win at this point is either base destruction or potentially even game ending and uh that is just great for an auto side that has showed a super clean late early to mid game to this point 100% there, and then there's taking an inhib too early in the game, and then there's taking an inhib on your Baron power play because there's nothing else on the map to take, right? And you're 10k gold up, and I... Oh, there we go. Usopp in on two. Lee Sin gets the Hextech ultimatum off. is kicked away. Ace in the hole, not going to connect, but it's home gear now with the stun in on two. Nine lives. They almost got the pick off. Final Spark almost gets the kill. Oh. Big! Knock up there from Bricks that gets a double kill, actually. You saw back end eats that sonic it's wave game. and uh, Lone Force going down as well. It's just subsidized left on the map here for Illinois College. I think you're correct on that one, DJ. I think that is game. They're going to look for the dragon, uh, yeah. but uh, not much else left to do on Summer's Rift but to do it. Yeah, I, I they could have gone for it. I guess there's no need. They could just kind of do this uh, in a safe fashion, right? They had TP available on Blonde. Brixton did TP into the fight. But there was this wave already in the base. Instead, they'll just walk to it. They'll take an inhib. They'll take the Drake, and they'll walk away. So one more fight uh, will be required. But at this point, it is just one fight away for Ottawa. And, I mean, how do you even approach it if you're Illinois College? We finally see them try to use their pick composition. Axeman, right? The first real Camille Gallio combo used this game. And who do they use it on? 
the one guy who can ruin the Camille Gallio combo by knocking Camille out of her own Hextech ultimatum. Oh yeah, that kick to start off the fight was so unfortunate for Illinois. Nine lives, just dropping a bunch of damage on the enemy jungler, just like it was nothing. The Zyra pick, I think most people will be surprised by, but uh, I don't know. How much of this victory, and we'll call it a victory here, folks, uh, do you attribute to Zyra? Because personally, oh, yikes, Sonic Wave does connect, and Lee Sin follows up on it. Insects, you saw backwards into his team. Down goes Usopp, and an unfortunate pick if you're Illinois College, but just one in a long line of unfortunate things that have happened to the college so far this game yeah i i, <laughs> I, I, I don't see a I, i'm trying to see a way back here uh, axe man but it, it's it's just well so hard. desire how do we feel about desire pick because it uh, looks good i i am with you in that i do not think it has been the uh, major impacting force of this game yeah i think uh, nine lives could have picked a lot of things and it would have been just fine uh, I really think that this game has been uh, about Coda and Brixton's two-man game in topside, right? They use their um, kind of their resources and, and assets to get him very far ahead. They broke the top lane turret. And what they did once they broke the top lane turret is really what broke the game open by Brixton walking down, slowing down the Drake, showing up for Rift Herald, and now finding these big engages. That's really just where things kind of spiraled out of control for Illinois College because... They didn't have any map left to stand on, right? They had to come to objectives. They hadn't taken any turrets just yet. And all of that work had kind of ruined part of the strategy that Illinois College came into the game with. It really did. Ruined it for me anyway. They're going to transport the team over. Uh, just one lane there. Trying to get the rotations through as they start to put the choke hold on to Illinois College. This mid lane inhib turret is the next go down. Looks like they're chasing somebody down down there in the bot lane. But that... Uh, doesn't particularly matter. It is Brixton. Going to go down eventually, but I think he's done his job well enough. <laughs> this will be the end of the game for Ottawa as they tank down the enemy Nexus oh, no. turrets. That no, teleport the not even going to go through here as the game reaches its twilight and uh, they're in looking for the bonus kills, but and uh, they, they end the game handily there. Illinois College, uh, that was a rough one. Hard one to watch there if you're an Illinois College fan, but uh, yeah, that was, that was quite the Ottawa victory. Yeah, I, I mean, Brixton trades his life for the Nexus at the end of the day. He'll, he'll be happy with that trade. It's pretty pretty good trade deal, actually. Yeah, but take this those. game was, was over long before. And, I mean, Ottawa just came out flying uh, out, out of the gates here with this composition. Just a great understanding from Coda and Brixton how to bust apart uh, what the Illinois composition intended to do, take turrets, get advantages. Well, they did it ahead of time, right? They beat them to the punch in the top lane and then used that power around the rest of the map to completely nullify uh, subsidize and loan force in that bottom lane and I, I feel like Illinois just got a little bit lost in, in their composition in that game Axe man they they never found a way to rotate the Caitlyn to the right lanes they were off tempo on the Rift Herald and once they were down there was just no clear idea of how to get back in the game the fact that you have Camille Gal uh, uh, ulting in with Camille Galio comp or er, combo onto Lee Sin who they know can kick her out of Hextech Ultimatum I think just shows the desperation and, and kind of uh, lack of direction that Illinois had in game one. They'll really need to turn it around for game two if they want to extend the series. 100%. And looks like we're going to go into the game two here uh, in just a second. Illinois College should be blue side coming up here in a bit. I wonder if Jinx... Um, We'll make it through on blue side first pick uh, this game. That should be interesting. Yep, could be interesting. We'll see kind of how Illinois decides to go about this one, Axeman. But I think there's a lot that needs to change either in draft or gameplay. So uh, whether it's drastic or not, uh, Illinois, they, they kind of need to wake up. They want to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and agree with that one. Looks like uh, we're moving into our next segment. DJ, you want to take us in there? I think we're just going to wait for a, a break here between uh, games one and two. But before we do that, we will thank our sponsors. Of course, we have Atlantic, Capalti, Skulls, and Gangster. Uh, so thank you again to all of our supporting uh, sponsors. And of course, we want to give a special shout out to Skulls. Uh, Skulls has been providing a... Wait, wait, wait. Skulls has been providing us with a, a lot of uh, support behind the scenes. Of course, we are... Uh, in a partnership with them for Unified, having our gear on Skulls.com. So you can check uh, collections slash or Skulls slash collections slash Unified to find all of your gamer gear, hoodies, 
joggers, sweatshirts, and more will all be available. So you can go check out the website for that and uh, continue to uh, up your gamer swag. Yeah, I know I'm picking up some of those armbands for myself. Those look pretty sweet. I like the color on those. But uh, with that, we're going to cut to a little bit of a break here for the Midwest Esports Conference of Maximum 87 and DJ Cast. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Midwest Esports Conference.
Welcome back to the Midwest Esports Conference of Maxman 87. Joined once again by DJ Cast. DJ, we're going to uh, game two here of the Illinois College versus Ottawa uh, series here. And I'm looking for adaptations Illinois can use to get back in this series because the game one was rough, man. It, it was hard to watch, right? Yeah, game one, just very, very one-sided acts, man. Illinois never really got their footing down with the comp that they had drafted for themselves. So I do think we will need to see some uh, drastic-ish, at the very least, uh, changes. But again, I, I think the biggest thing for me is just a little bit of a wake-up call for Illinois, right? kind of feels like they saw in the game one with that comp, got to get lost in what they wanted to do. They never really found any advantages with what their comp wanted to do, which was taking turrets, pressuring through bottom side. Uh, so we just need kind of need a... Uh, a snap to awareness here if Illinois wants to keep this series going because Ottawa, they look sharp and they look like they want to get this done in a quick 2-0. 100% here. I'll tell you what, we're going to draft in just a little bit here before we do. want to talk about some things maybe uh, Illinois could use to get into this, right? I mean, they're on blue side this game, right? Switched ends of Summoner's Rift. And I'm thinking, like, blue side, if you want to win, it's Jinx first pick, right? And if you're red side and you're letting that pick through, I, I don't know what to tell you, right? I don't know how many games I've seen just solo won by that Jinx first pick blue side, but that is the way to win games if you don't know uh, what you're going to do in the enemy team. It's just like one size fits all. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Axeman, right? A, a Jinx fits every composition, right? From the all the way to the the depths of bronze. You know, we, we don't we don't we don't mention the other division, Iron. Uh, Iron's too, too <laughs> that, that's too deep in the in the bowels of uh the bowels and depths of hell there, Axeman. But uh, from yeah. bronze all the way to champions queue, Jinx is, is busted, right? It's just so easy to play. Get a reset, you win the fight. Can go with engage comps. Can go with rack front comps. Can go with hyper carry comps. I mean, it just it does so much. So we'll be interesting to see if Illinois can get their hands on that. Uh, they will, of course, feel comfortable with it. But given that everyone can play against it at this point, right? You would imagine that Ottawa would feel pretty good playing against it as well, uh, depending on who they want to play into. Of course, Aphelios is the typical uh, kind of answer to it. Uh, but we'll kind of see how the the draft goes. I mean, usually you're you're banning Zarya on red side, so that's uh, usually an, uh, not going to be an option either. For sure, right? I mean, the Zeri ban comes through a lot of the time. I think a most banned champion is like Caitlyn, something like that, worldwide. But uh, she's calling, falling off a little bit as well. We saw Caitlyn last game. Didn't really end up working out for subsidized. I think that was more of a comp issue than a champion issue. But um, with the, with the Caitlyn, but uh, yeah, it's something you want to look at as well. Bans coming out here as we are into drafts. First man, blue side, uh, for me, I like uh, you want to take options away from Nine Lives. I think we mentioned uh, during the break, Nine Lives, the big Senna main, and we've seen that Senna taken away from him several times now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Nine Lives has a really dirty Senna. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's his main or if it's Yumi. Uh, I, either way, again, all these like Healy champions, kind of utility champions, he's just so good at them, uh, Axeman, so... See a lot of them do get taken away from him pretty commonly, but of course I see they have to start with the Warwick ban. OU, they don't really have any onus to change anything at this point, Axe, so I, I expect at least two or three of the same bans, right? We will see the Karma started off. Yeah, Karma banned away there. Lots of supports taken off the table, and uh, that is Brick since Warwick gone as well. And keep in mind, folks, it's uh, Hulk top lane for IC and Holmgar is uh in the jungle position at least last game they were anyway i'm not sure if they were swapped uh for last game i would imagine probably not but um hey you know your guess is as good as mine lisa and the caitlin bands coming through here you know that that it's got to be the jinx first pick right i mean it makes it through here uh Felios also makes it through so we can uh, almost anticipate the red side first pick oh wait oh wait axe zary's not banned Oh, yeah, Zeri. Uh, a lot of hyper so, carries made it through, actually. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, the Jinx is going to get picked up, as you predicted. It says, of course, a strong V1, but now Ottawa has all the answers, right? I mean, you you don't even need to pick Zeri here if, if you don't want to, as long as you pick it before Phase 2, right? Um, you basically decide whether you want to play Felios or Zeri into this because both of them are open. 100%. Both of those open as well. Lots of mid lane picks oh, open here. Oh, uh, the Rise. Boy. Oh, yeah. That's at uh, Oh, that's set boy. Senna. Nine lives Senna. Ah, uh, this is... Uh, I am... It, it never... Like, you look at it and you feel like support Senna shouldn't work, Axeman. And trust me, I had the same thought when I first started casting MEC. But also trust me when I say... I don't... Has nine lives, like, Ooh. died on this champion? <laughs> like, this man is insane. And yeah, there's the Zeri. Um... 
I am afraid. I, I imagine Thresh gets locked in here. Uh, it is available. There's no way. I don't think you pass up on that very strong factor for the bottom lane. Of course, can also be a problem for Senna if you land a hook. Uh, and then we just need follow-up. Still pick it here on three. And I like the fact that either Home Guy or Hulk have given themselves a playmaking tool. It felt like we really didn't have that for IC in the last game. They couldn't really strike back once they were behind. This will always give them some engage with the Jarvis. It really will. J4, a pretty solid pick there too. Thresh, that uh, you mentioned, eventually coming out. I uh, like that you uh, you anticipated that one. I didn't see that one coming. But, uh, yeah, moving through with the rest of draft here. That's a that's a big, like, bully by lane, right? You got the center down there with the Zeri. It's a lot of damage coming at you really fast in the early game into this Jinx, and it's going to have a hard time scaling up. Lily coming through. <laughs> A lot of legs there on that champion. <laughs> oh, boy. Coda Lilia. Interesting. Coda having a little bit of fun. I, I think with this one, uh, uh, Axman, I've not seen him pull this out. I know it used to play it quite a bit, uh, particularly last season. So uh, oh, yeah. this will be a fun one for him. Does mean that this uh, kind of gives the signal to Illinois College what to ban away in Phase 2. You do not want to let AD uh, mid uh, and or top laners uh, be available as much as possible. Definitely there. Looking for uh, some solo lanes, I think, on both sides now. I think that uh, top lane Zeri might be pretty good, but, you know, they got the audible call on that one. See what they end up going for. Bans coming out, LeBlanc, the Aatrox, the Camille, it's all coming down now. As much as they were able to dominate Hulk's uh, Camille in last game, I think it is good to take it away. It's just a really strong champion, right? Uh, you don't want to give up. Uh, it's strong champions if you don't have to there. That's set band away. Brixton going to show us that he can play a third champion. Uh, a tough thing for any one trick to be able to do. We'll see what he picks. Yeah, he's had a couple so far this season. Orn has been one of them. I think, think we've seen one or two Malphite games, depending on the situation. So definitely a couple picks he can fall back on. And, uh, oh, boy, we got... Uh, it, we got oh, boy, Blonde's on Ari. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm scared. There are some answers into this. It is blind, but uh, Blonde can pop up. And then any champion that kind of has assassination attend. Well, speaking of countering, uh, that that's not bad. Uh, the uh, the always present, ever available, uh, just uh, the nope button, right? Uh, you want to have a fun champion? You want to have a fun yep. time playing League of Legends? Guess what? Uh, Malzahar says nope. Yeah, nope. And the blind Aurelia comes out here. Interesting pick. So no Graves top for Ottawa. But perhaps looking for something else. I think Gwen's still on the table. Something we mentioned uh, could be interesting to Aurelia. Trindamir still on the table as well. No, the Malphite comes out instead. That's a. I feel like Malphite isn't a great pick into Aurelia. I don't know. You're the color caster. What do you think here? Uh, I mean, if you can weather it, it's definitely fine. Um, you just need to control your wave position and just kind of farm with cues. But yes, I mean, in, in lane. Uh, whether it's home guy or, uh, or it is Usopp, they and I, I would imagine Usopp since he does really like kind of these melee, um, you know, mechanically kind of intensive champions that like the duel. Uh, yes, it should be a nice time in the laning phase, but of course, team fighting, uh, Brixton, you just can't deny the value. The one very fascinating part of the SoU competition is that their entire top side is AP. Um, you know, Malphite will likely build tank, uh, even if he doesn't, he's building AP. So like itemization, I mean, we should see Wits End Rush, uh, we should see Magic Resist coming in and. Malzahar, I think, is actually a really good answer into Ari. You can just clear waves. Uh, a big kind of part of the buffs for uh, this champion was on the W to get more uh, pushing opportunities on the wave. And, of course, the Spirit Rush reset. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter how many times or how many resets you have on a dash when you're just going to get pre you're just gonna get R pressed on you, and then you're going to die. Like That's just like what playing against Malzahar entails. So I think this is a very good counter pick, and I like IC's team fighting composition. The big question I have is, can they deal with nine lives? I mean, just straight up. Like, this man has taken over games when he has this Senna. And when you have Senna Zeri, even when I look over at IC's composition, and I think that they should have an easier time fighting 5v5, fighting 5v4. If Brixton gets a big ult and, and Levy's just allowed to kind of pop off in the fight with nine lives behind him, that is the agency to win any fight if you play it well enough, Axeman. It's just a little bit harder. So OU has kind of thrown down the gauntlet to give themselves an interesting draft, but I, I feel like they're feeling pretty confident after game number one, and uh, they're going to try to kind of throw it on top of IC right now. 
I know I would be confident right after game one. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. A couple of matchups here, not as much uh, data on those. I know Zeri Jinx, Zeri being a new champion, uh, and both of these champions having such high draft priority, eating so many bans worldwide, that uh, both of them coming together actually isn't all that, uh, you know, often that they, we get to see in this matchup, actually. And certainly with the Senna support, that makes it even a, a little bit stranger. But both teams out on the rift now, looking for level 1 advantage. Just looks like the 5 point here from IC, not looking for anything a level 1. See where the vision gets placed, Axe, man. I thought Brixton actually hanging around the red buff for a potential a late invade. They're a little bit worried about guy coming in, uh, wrapping around, but it doesn't look like that will happen. And we should just have a... Peaceful beginning to Summer's Rift. A little, little nature watching. Yeah, a little nature here. Got some animals coming out. Looks like dragonflies here, primarily. But also Holmgar looking for the invade. Drops a little bit of vision around that red buff. Brixton, I don't think it's going to catch him out on his way back up the top side. Meanwhile, down here around the river, subsidize. It's a, it's a little bit of a bear trap waiting for him here in this river. Yeah, don't do it. Nice. Definitely don't do it. Okay. Um, are they going to push up in onto the Jinx? Looks like they will. Well, they want the Raptors. They, this is the, the old Lilia. Oh, are they going to go for red buff? Usually Lilia tries to steal Raptors away because of the yep. AoE, but they're going to flip this for red buff. It's a late invade coming through. I don't think there's going to be... Well, actually, I go ahead and say the death sentence comes out. It lands on a Levi who gets uh, absolutely blown up. There are lots of damage going down on Dakota and Levi. It is the red buff secured by Holmgeier just narrowly escaping for Lilia. Nine Lives isn't out quite yet, but he's close. The fight continues. This blonde is in on to temporary. Lots of damage on to the oh, Malzahar no. now. Oh, Holmgeier going to eat the root, but he hooks his way out. As he had hit level two off of the red buff. Okay, he did get the level two, but now there has been a lot of time for Coda to walk up. He'll take his Raptors, no problemo. Should swing up to his red buff and be okay. And Lilia will out clear. Uh, just an absolutely wild start to the game. I think the biggest takeaway from all of that, we look at Summoner's heal's been expended by Levi. Oh, oh, trying to punish. Might be wait a little a late second here. here. Yeah, he's too late. Yeah, a little late. I'm not really sure where Coda goes from there. I think you're able to clear... Uh, the camps with that level of health for Lilia. Holmgar just starts right on to the enemy red buff. It'll be neither red buff for Coda here as you can't really walk up to the J4. And that's going to be uh, the double buffs for free. We'll be able to back up onto his blue buff for the triple buff clear. Yep, should be a three buff. That said, I think Coda not too worried about it. You don't need red buff to clear on Lilia. He's going to walk up and probably take <laughs> Raptors here. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he'll just be kind of on his way. Uh, farming wise, two level six. Love these AOE camps. Uh, really, what you're looking for elsewhere. Uh, Usopp kind of doing what we thought he would do in the lane. Very far ahead right now of Brixton. It is about yep. surviving in that lane and being useful in the team fights later on. But one big takeaway, and I, I would like to actually kind of. It's a little bit late now because we'll, we'll have souls. I feel like Nine Lives got like eight souls off that first fight. <laughs> Like, how many, like, just double auto, like, chunks did he get, like, in, in that first exchange? Like, I feel like he got up to such a good start to the lane. He already has seven, okay. Yeah, he's doing just fine, right? And he, they should be starting to bully the Jinx relatively soon. You see Levi's level three already. Ooh, that was close. That root almost lands on the lone force. But, yeah, they're starting to shove this wave in and should be pressuring subsidized and lone force big death sentence lands on to nine lives in trouble now this might burn one of their lives here dj subsidized lanterns in but does he have the range nine lives eats the rocket flash forward from the jinx and gets first blood is gonna go down for their sins so double. levi maybe the double kill looking for the thrash keeps missing the cues doesn't have the range flash forward oh the q gets the kill the double kill on the lone force what a play DJ. Yeah, nine lives. Does it again here, Axe Man. Just baits in the enemy bottom lane, uses his body as a shield, literally flashes out at the last possible second. Forces flash commit from Substance. He's hoping to get a reset and get out. But with his dying breath, he hits the W, roots him up, and it just guarantees the two kills for Levi. So, yeah, sure, nine lives goes down for that first kill. But you, your bot lane's ahead now, and Levi is the one who gets accelerated off. 
fantastic there. You love to see it, but um, look at the pie. Is, uh, he just got shot yeah. and hearthbound axe. Hearthbound axe coming back into it. You, you have Triforce on next reset if you get a good uh, a good uh, cycle here, but it's it's not good. I'm still a big believer in the Jinx pick, and I feel like you can still pull this rabbit out of the hat, but it's gonna take some serious magic at this point, DJ. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's subsidize is fine. He's got a decent buy as well. It's it's less my cons like I'm less concerned about the Jinx. I still like the Jinx. I'm just more concerned about the Zeri at this it's point, massive. right? Like, you, you that is a champion that you just do not want to give leads to. We've seen it just take over the Rift time and again. Uh, uh, Axe man, and it's just so terrifying when it just starts jumping in like an assassin. We. Uh, we, we, we haven't really seen Levi on it just yet, so I'm, I'm excited to see. He's now got this game kind of in his hands. He's been playing a lot of Jin in his first couple of weeks, a lot more supportive champions. This game is now very much about him at the moment with two kills already to his name uh, and obviously all of the agency he could possibly want in the later stage. It's the lane gank from Holmgaier up top side. Take a look at this alcove up top here. And it, Brixton's just playing so safe. He's pain gaming, really, DJ. Uh, up top there, sitting under turret. Uh, I don't even think he's in the XP range of that wave during that freeze top side from Usopp. So you can see he's down like 30 CS, and it's nothing really for him to do. But things do turn around a little bit here for him after he picks up that uh, the Bramble Vest after he gets level 6. So maybe this uh, this lane turns around. But for the time being, uh, it's, it's pretty rough for the Malphite. Yep, it is a bit of a struggle. You can see Usopp actually has that kill as well, so he'll be feeling very nice. Got a really good buy going back with Vampire Acceptor. Um, like the buy from Brixton, he's he's just going to have to kind of accept that this is the lane. This is what we talked about. It is about maintaining. It is about surviving and then being useful in the fights. And so far, haven't even needed him just yet as his 6 is available. His TP is down. They're just going to walk over to the first Drake at 7 minutes with Cryo in their bot lane, and they're going to take it down. Oh yeah, that's the biggest thing about Senna's support, and really just Senna, like, at all, is you get basically free prio into most bot lanes that are meta right now. That's one of the reasons I like the pick so much, uh, is not only do you get free prio, but you pair it with things like the Tom Kench, and you also get really difficult to gank. Um, so yeah, I really like this bot lane. Home guy are not liking the game so- oh, jeez. That- that was very fast. That was a lot faster than I thought that would be. Blonde just kind of blew oh, him no. up. Now they're looking oh, for the die. The 4v2. Oh, Lone Force. Doomed. It's the Spirit Rush forward, forward, and then back. <laughs> There's no wave there yet. Blonde, unlock your camera, dude. Here's he the just, wave now. He was just running out of timer, <laughs> but yeah, this Bali's dead. Yeah, super dead. Subsidize going to eat a bunch of damage. Hits a rock and it'll leave. I force him to back off. Meanwhile, Koda. Nice. Actually goes down there, flashed over the wall from temporary, looking for the oh, no, ultimate. Wendell, you can't it's do this. burning him down. Blonde, he just narrowly escapes with the flash temporary, almost getting that kill. Holmgar walking up now, not gonna, not gonna take his chances with that one. What a dive from Ottawa. That was really well done. Yeah, extremely well played dive. I mean, Coda just dies by the skin of his teeth right on the ignite. The flash away was exceptional. Levi timed the heal very well and. It doesn't matter that Coda goes down, right? Holmgar still had to pass down here to try to cover or clean up kills, so he's not going to get super far ahead off this. He's already down 15 CS, and you've just buried the bottom lane again. I mean, look at Levi's 2-0-1. They're going to lose an entire wave, and that bottom side subsidized and Lone Force will, so uh, this should... Oh, he doesn't quite have enough for the Triforce. My God, if he had Triforce off of that uh, axe, I mean, you can't win this fight. You have to leave the Rift Herald as it is. They can try to take it down. Yeah, they're trying to look for it now. Coda arrives on the scene. A little contest there for him. It's the E on Lone Force. You don't have the ult up if you're the Lilia here, so not a lot of team fight options. But yeah, they're just gonna push him off once again. The uh, the prio from the mid lane is really allowing them to control the map like this. Uh, Temporary is doing his best to follow up, but you just can't out rotate the Ari. The uh, wave push is just a little too extreme there. Yeah, it's just a smart play uh, from Ottawa, right? They recognize that the Rift Herald's up. They recognize that with them taking Dragon, uh, Illinois is going to want to rush up there and think that they can take it. But the big thing that is deterring Illinois on that particular occasion, Brixton has his ulti, right? How do you team fight that when Holmgaier does not have Cataclysm, Temporary did not have the Nether Grasp, and Brixton has the Unstoppable Force? That is not a fight you're really winning. So they have to back off as Nine Lives roams up 
and ensures that they take the second objective in a row. For sure there. Now, all of this rotation from Blonde has allowed Temporary to pick up a level lead here. And uh, that, I mean, it's something, right? And you got something in, in return, but how much that's going to matter as this lane continues to progress uh, remains to be seen. You're the Malzahar. You're trying to spike in the early game there. Uh, if you're using all of that early game potential to kind of sit in lane by yourself, you're not really uh, making use of it, right? So he's trying to follow these rotations and bring that advantage with him, but hey, there's only so much you could do. Oh, going to be another dive down bot side as Koda looks for that angle. Wave, they're trying to push in now. Down comes oh the E, the Rift Herald no. along with it, and here's Blonde Thanks once again, 4v2 bot lane, and Ottawa are just uh, doing the most river. down here. Yeah, Illinois, uh, they're going to stun him up, but Temporary goes down as well on uh, on the back end of that fight. Brixton, oh, belt forward on the Usopp, doesn't quite catch out, but I Borrelia wants more, I guess, queuing forward? Uh, I don't know about that one. The flash from Brixton secures the kill onto Usopp. I, I don't know about all that, DJ. Well, what did we just watch there? Um, uh, over aggression. <laughs> Brixton got the flash and then was like, okay, I got flash. And then uh, Usopp was like, um, yeah, he just decides to go back in. Brixton's like, yep, yeah, thank you very much. You know, flash this Aurelia. And uh, honestly, Axeman, um, I think we can pretty much wrap this one up. Like, GG's, <laughs> Ottawa, your early game is uh, looking a lot better than it was last week. This is a just a blitz of our performance. I, I mean, could you bury this bottom lane any further under the ground without just, like, hitting the straight core of the earth at this point? I mean, I, poor, poor yeah. subsidized. Like, he's just not allowed to, like, touch his wave, touch his turret. Like, four-man dive on two, like, consecutive windows, essentially, there, Axe, man. He's now 10 CS down. His counterpart is 2-0-3 with a mythic item. He's lost so much EXP and waves, and now the lane that was getting bullied, Brixton gets a solo kill. Like, you're just, you're just you've lost everywhere. All I'll say, DJ, is I really hope Ottawa dialed 6-1-1 before burying Illinois College this deep, because they might have hit power lines, right? You got to be careful, folks. Uh, don't hit those internet lines. Knock those out. You want to call 6-1-1 before digging. Dude, and, nine uh, lives is more, it is more I just, gold than blonde. I just don't. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, they tell us in cash school, don't call the game early because, you know, it's super lame. But, hey, folks, I, I don't want to sit here and lie to you. Hey, oh, it's steal. the flag and drag over the wall. Holden Geyer picks up oh, yeah. at least something for his team. Flash the wall from Coda does eventually burn down the J4. But signs of life suddenly from Illinois College where before there were none. The flag and drag over the wall. That, that's pretty sick, right? You like to see that as a jungler. Yeah, really nice combination of skills there to steal that away, but uh, that, is, that is still a consolation prize uh, for this game. I, I do not think Ottawa needs the, the Dragon Soul to win this one. Uh, Axeman, and uh, they're pressing in onto the mid lane turret. Yeah, here they're in. The dive forward lone force goes down first. Charm. And temporary to follow. Eats the charm. Does actually survive. Dude, nine but lives. But not for long. Nine lives! <laughs> Wow, goes down. The Jinx Rocket gets a kill onto uh, onto Coda just uh, at the end there. But yeah, that's a, just a great play from the Senna. The root coming out. I, jeez, DJ, this is this is one of the best Senna players I've seen. Yeah, it's insane. By the way, subsidized, nice super mega death rocket. We did see that. That was a very good snipe. Um, Stop looking for the. Oh, he's gonna miss Again. He might die here. He might die here. Hey, yeah. You land the ult, but it just doesn't oh, do it. Missed. Oh, okay. He dodges the ultimate. Is actually able to get the no, kill on the bridge. No, no, he, he escapes. Oh, what? Come on. There's no way he escapes, right? Yeah, he's got the speed from the Q. I mean, that wasn't like. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's so funny because that's a, that is another solo kill for brixton if he lands the unstoppable force like just no way around it it's straight up a solo kill and he just whiffs the unstoppable force but he still gets out alive by saving the q there uh axe man so a pretty funny exchange in, in the top lane but i mean i gotta go back after i gave you know we, we gave some slices credit we talked about top lane right for the mega, the death rock and now we talk about top lane but i mean nine lives on this center like dude how can you be this good at this champion? Like, he's got chem he's got the right item too. He's got Kempunk early on. He's more gold than four members on the enemy team. He's more gold than his freaking mid laner. Like, and he's just diving tier two turrets, rooting up temporary, killing him alone. Like, what can this man not do on this champion? Like, this might be more important than banning Brix's Warwick. I'll say it. 
Yeah, no, I'll say it as well. I leave the Warwick up. Get, let's see the Warwick. That's what I say, DJ. But um, you know, I I don't know if it's see in the meta. It's the meta for me, right? Because like the Zeri ban changes the course of this game. The Senna ban changes the course of this game. So you're banning things like Warwick. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. How good is the Warwick? I, I mean, maybe it's just because I haven't seen it yet. But you know, I I would still like to see nonetheless. Gonna be the dive up top side. Usopp just not surviving this one, I don't think, but here are the details for you. Subsidize actually landing the rocket, making things a little bit closer there. Brixton almost going down. Nine lives gonna eat three turret shots, I guess. Uh, that's that's interesting. I like this return play from Illinois College. There's really no oh, way yeah. that a blonde can stick around. Oh boy, but they're making a play. <laughs> what? Charm. Oh, very nice. Oh, they almost get the kill down the home guy here. Fight continues Brixton. He's oh, looking for sleep, subsidize. The sleep comes down big, unstoppable force from Brixton. Gets two. One goes down, though, and they're going to look for the kill in a temporary. Kota going forward with the Q, trying to find that one. They do get in, and there's really nothing left for subsidize to do. Uh, you're not excited, and, and you eat the charm from the RE. Triple kill there for Kota. And the Lilia looking fantastic so far. Oh, I didn't even think about that combination in Draft Axe, man. The triple sleep into the guaranteed unstoppable force. It's like the ultimate alley oop. It's like that's that's probably even that's even more fun than like Yasuo Diana alley oop. I mean, you literally just like put everyone to sleep, and then Brixton just like picks all three balls up and dunks them into the basket at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, right. I it was a killer combination there, um, and, and just the the run down the pick potential that the Ari brings in really seals the deal. Not only do you lose the team fight off those big team fight ultimates, but uh, nobody escapes, which is a really scary uh, thing about this team comp is that they have all this pick potential, but they also have such a good team fight. Dragon up now in thirty seconds. Both teams second dragon. I don't really know if we're even worried about dragons anymore. You have 11k gold lead for Ottawa, and uh, you know you, you had a, a very similar gold lead too. Just 10 minutes into this game. Yeah, it's uh, it, we were impressed with the early game in game one for for Ottawa. Wax, man, this has this has been even better. Uh, this has just been nearly flawless, honestly, outside of the chaos of the level one. Uh, but Coda. Knew where to go to farm. I uh, knew where to make plays. I mean, the bottom lane has just so efficiently and effectively buried in this game, giving no hope for Illinois College. Right? You look at the rest of the comp. If 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 Subsize is not ahead or or is not like even in can't team fight, how do you win? Right? Where does the damage come from? And I think Ottawa Braves recognizing that and just absolutely putting a six feet under double root. Oh my god just stop it nine lives stop Yikes. it dude yeah that uh, just nothing really you could do right he's still going for more blonde he's just so deep missed the charm gonna have to back off after that one but yeah uh, the fight's over before you even uh, started there uh and now they're looking for this mid lane turret oh, a little trade back up top side to get that objective bounty in on Two bricks and his use up looking for this kill. Ult lands onto the Malphite. Still chasing forward. Q forward on the minions. Kind of looks like he's playing with them a little bit there, DJ. Yeah, the, the thing is, you got to be scared about going all the way in, right? Because if you go all the way yeah. in, you take a turret shot. Ooh, you'll just flash forward. Force. Yeah, Dodged misses it. the stun. Oh, he's dead. Yep. Yeah, Bye. I think you're, uh, you're, you're pain getting after this one if you're the Aurelia. Uh... Q comes out of the Malphite. And uh, still, there's the unstoppable force. Gets the final knockup. Well, Kota picking up the kill there. And, uh, yeah, a good effort from Usopp. But, yeah, just just not quite enough there. Yeah, who was really toying or dancing with whom there? Uh, yeah. the, uh, turns out the turns out the rock man uh, has some uh, some uh, pretty pretty fast feet. Pretty pretty good feet there, uh, Axe. For sure. Turns out he's rock solid. As rock solid as they come. But um, <laughs> it's uh, just... Uh, just the Rift Herald up top, maybe they could play for. I don't know. How do you come back in a game like this? It doesn't seem <laughs> super possible. Yeah. Um, um, the the uh, I do. I, I am a big fan, of course, of the angle in which at this point in a game, you usually, as the color caster, look for ways for the other team to come back into the game, Axe Man. Uh, there are games, unfortunately, when I think that would be disingenuous. And I think this is one of those games. <laughs> um, I don't think you outscale. Your scaling option is behind and has been really set behind. 
uh, can easily be ulted by Brixton. You don't have any map, or, uh, I, I, it's just, yeah, I mean, there's not really, I don't think there's really a way back in this game. <laughs> now, <laughs> so, it's not a way back into the game, but one thing that has been good to see from Illinois College is that Ottawa had this almost exact same lead like 10 minutes ago, right? They have been holding fairly steady. Um, and, and that is something that at least they can brag about. Alt comes down from temporary onto Levi, but it's just not... Uh, he barely has any effect on the Zeri, who builds so inherently tanky that uh, that damage just isn't going to do too much. Maybe some follow-up would have helped there for temporary, but as it stands, just nothing really to do. Blonde in on Holmgeier. Maybe the charm comes out. Still hasn't Nine hit the lies. ult, the spirit rush yet. Just what the... Dude. Like, come on, man. Oh, they TP. Oh, no. This TP. Yeah, big teleport comes in. Usopp just eaten alive there. The sleep comes out now onto two members, and both of them die almost instantly to damage sources I'm not even privy to, Chad. I don't even know what killed him there, but uh, maybe Ari, maybe uh, the Lilia. Hey, Brickson but, didn't uh, even TP to that. Yep. He just stayed down bot. They're going to look for the Baron now, and uh, that should be just the end of the game. I think maybe if they have gold in hand, you take the reset to spend it, but even that, I don't think you have to, DJ. Uh, you're probably basing to spend your gold. There's a dragon coming up in 130. You want to take that away just to make sure that if there is a fumble in your Baron push, you do have soul point to go back to Axeman. Again, I think Ottawa Brave scales really well. Um, I don't think Dragon Soul is necessary, but should something go horribly wrong in your Baron Siege, you want to have that option. So I imagine take the resets here, get some vision down, and uh, Juan looking for a solo kill, so he'll just dash on out. Get up to Flash. Yeah, yeah he still had to Flash, but yeah, he's deathless on Ari. 25 stacks on the Magis. Oh, you got to be careful. Zeri trying to, trying to shoot you there. That's an interesting. So... Have you played Zeri yet, DJ? Yes, I have. It's weird, like, just kind of queuing something and it just being free, but also, like, you have to do it for your kit. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. Like, there are free abilities in League of Legends. There are, like, manaless champions, all that good stuff. But uh, just, like, a champion's kit demanding you just skill shot nothing uh, as part of the kit. That was really weird for me. I was like, so I just queue and I don't have to queue anything? It's weird. <laughs> It, it, it was a little funky the first couple of times I played it, but you, you get used to it. It is yeah. definitely a it is a fun champion to play as Nadine Carey. Uh, my hands probably aren't good enough to play it, so I, I don't play it that often, uh, actually, because I feel bad when I, when I when I don't carry like I should in uh, strong positions. But, you know, uh, it doesn't seem like Levi and company have that problem. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I also don't really think it mattered what Levi played this game. I mean, nine lives I do just think, looked Yeah, crazy that's kind of true. Good. I do think yeah. the Zeri did help with some of their dives. Oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Mm, yeah. Flash again! Yeah, that'll <laughs> do it. Yeah, they get the kill down to use Sob. Lone Force lands a death sentence on the Levi, but it only de uh, delays the inevitable there as Levi picks up the kill. Down bot side, Blonde is making things worse for them with Brixton on top temporary gonna go down to the malphite here in just a little bit I, I don't think that ult even really tickled him it might have healed him a little bit dj yeah if it might you have. ask me uh, uh yeah they're looking for this bot in during now before this game ends uh i i do need to ask production if we could take a look at usopp's hp and then i would like to see what nine lives hp is with this grasp that is that is that is a that is a personal request because i think nine lives has a lot of hp uh, <laughs> right I think now, so, I yeah. I think yeah, he, lots of I, HP. I think yeah. he might have more HP than Usopp. I think he might. Um, but Levi, like, on the Zeri, uh, with the Triforce and with the uh, the Hydra there, is pretty tanky too, right? Not not uh, not a small champion by any means. Rocket comes out, not going to get the Dragon. Not super close there, but... It's, uh, it is the effort coming down. Coda done really well in the objectives this game. Fortunately, our inhibitors overlay is uh, blocking us from seeing the gold at the moment. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll give it we'll give it a minute. We'll see if we can see it at the end of the game. I, I will still be interested uh, to know what the HP values are because I mean at this point we, we talked about the nine lives grass sun. It has obviously just dominated this game. Uh, Axe man, and uh, at this point, I'm not sure how many souls he has. I'm not sure how many grass procs he's gotten, but you saw him flashing in to an Aurelia and a Thresh just fearlessly. Like, this man has HP. 
This man's is <laughs> This man's is unstoppable. He really is. Um, got a lot of HP. Got uh, as much armor as he does HP, right? So, uh, just... souls, 1,946 HP. Now we just need to see how much HP Usopp That'll has do it. to see if that's... I I'm not sure if that's more or less. But It I seems it like more. more. It seems like more. This is the final push now. Ottawa looking for the Nexus. Usopp running away. He does. Away. Aurelia's 1930 HP. Incredible. The final fight comes down here, and there's just no victory in sight for Illinois College. This is one of the first quad... Wait, quadra kill? Nine lives? No way, man. Deny the Penta by just the one kill. That's incredible. You can see why they banned this champion away from this team. I, I have cast a lot of games of League of Legends, Axe, man. I do not think... I have ever seen such a convincing MVP performance. I, I definitely there, there might be a few games that I've seen. That was just if, if that's not a hundred percent like MVP vote in like the post game lobby. This is like LECLCS like MVP. If you're not like ninety eight percent LP voting on nine lives, you're absolutely trolling. That was just an unbelievable. He finished with more HP as a support than the enemy top laner. That's yep. stupid. That's yeah, that'll so do dumb. It. <laughs> <laughs> and the quadra kill right there at the end. It was funny because not only was it a support quadra kill, but I like didn't process that he was getting the kills before he already had like three of them. Yep. And <laughs> he just blew people up. Absolutely destroyed them. But um yeah, I, what, what a series there from Ottawa. Absolutely dominant. It doesn't seem like it really matters what you draft into this team. I mean, they got first pick blue side Jinx. I, that was the first I've seen it lose. Like, and it was into this uh, this Zeri Senna bot lane. So, uh, yeah, it turns out it's just a, a one-trick diff there over for Ottawa. You can't give them Warwick. You can't give them Senna support. What can you give them? Yeah, I mean... Maybe there's a way to punish this axe. I, I haven't seen it yet when Nine Lives has busted it out. So the, the bands are, are still strong. And it means that Ottawa can still be a threat in the playoffs. Everyone will make it right. There's been kind of a roller coaster ride in the middle part of the season. But uh, that's a pretty convincing way to, to start off your week six here with just a couple games left between the, uh, before the playoffs. And that is a really good kind of up part of the season for Ottawa. And this is when you want to be going up. So really encouraging to see. Uh, this performance and i'm sure these guys had an absolute blast in these two games too <laughs> for sure yeah it looked like fun to me there uh but uh you know I, I had a lot of fun dj i don't know do we have another ad read or are we gonna throw it there uh, i think we can throw it to a break we are waiting to get an interview so we will have an interview when we come back on the backside of this break uh with a member of the winning team the ottawa Braves. so stick around for that and we'll We'll have a little surprise to see who's on it. You, you know who I'm voting for, but we'll see if he wants to hop on, Axe. Oh, yeah. Should be fun. With that, we're going to throw it to a break. More Midwest Esports Conference on the Unified Esports channel coming back for you in just a second. I've been Axe 87 and DJ Cass. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back.
And we're back with Midwest Esports Conference Week 6, this time in a post-series interview with Nine Lies. Of course, Ottawa support famously here. And uh, we're going to go through a couple questions here with you, Nine Lives, if that's all right with you. Yeah, of course. All right. And uh, how are you doing today after that victory? That was uh, that was quite the series there, the 2-0 from Ottawa. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good after the 2-0. I think the games went pretty well. Uh, I think we played them pretty well. Not too many mistakes. Uh, Deathless would have been nice, but, uh, you know, I mean, it is it is what it is. Yeah, you, you know, you, you got to get a life ticked off occasionally, I suppose, right? We can't just be letting you have nine. That's kind of a little unfair to the rest <laughs> of us. Who, most of us have one or, you know, half of a life. You know, some of us don't have a life. Hi. Um, anyway, <laughs> Lives, uh speaking of losing a life there uh, on the death toll, with a win this big, do you, do you get lives back? Because, I mean, this was just an absolute slaughter from, like, start to finish. Like, ha, like what what happened between the game week in which Illinois took a game off you and today that just made this such a massive gap? Uh, you know, I don't know what the secret is. If I did, we'd be doing it every game. <laughs> uh, <and> hopefully not <laughs> dropping any games. But uh, I think, you know, we, we showed up to the series and just... We're in a good mood. We played well, and I think it showed. Yeah, I think it showed as well. Um, my question for you after a performance like this, so dominant, is like, uh, do you have uh, plans to like trying to move up into like you know, uh, path the LCS, like proving grounds, anything like that? Uh, you've gotten like AM, any AM offers you could tell us about? Uh, well, no, <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, Loud but, and clear, man. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I haven't been actively looking for like AM teams. Uh, I, I've been busy with this team, so I, I wouldn't have had the yeah. time anyways. Um, but yeah, moving forward, I like, you know, competing in proving grounds, path LCS, and everything. I'd love to. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna be, I'm addicted to playing this game, so I'm gonna be stuck playing it for the foreseeable future. Uh, <laughs> and I love competing, so. Uh, any 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 teams? If you're if you need a support, you know, further down the line, let me know. <laughs> there you go, man's offering his services, and we saw some pretty good ones today, Nine Lives. We know, of course, you've got a, a quite a wide champion pool. We have the Yumi, right? We've seen Soraka banned away from you. It, I mean, when are people just gonna? I mean, I know a lot of people ban Senna, but when are they just gonna replace the Brixton Warwick ban with your Senna ban? Because honestly, like. I feel like we're getting close. I've seen you play this pick three times, and all three times you've pretty hard carried the game. This one in particular, like, how are you so good with this champion, and why is Grasp Senna so much better than Fleet Footwork? Um, <laughs> so, lots of games, right? I, I've I've been playing the champion pretty much nonstop since she came out. So, uh, I yeah, I just know matchup super well. I'm pretty comfortable. Um, Grass Senna, I don't think is actually that good. Uh, I I run it personally just because I want the the runes. I want resolve and then I want precision, and that's the only way to do it. I think in a game like that, personally, I'd rather have three runes from resolve than three runes runes from precision. So that's why I do it. Um, she's kind of a champion that like doesn't really have a mandatory keystone she's not you know like aurelia or something who like needs conqueror she like is super flexible so i've just put enough games in it to like know when i can be flexible hey, it certainly looks like you put a lot of games into the champion for sure and uh flexibility your strong suit but uh yeah, I, I can tell if you're drawing Senna bands like that, I don't want you on my team if I'm coach. But uh, with that, man, do you have any shout outs? Anybody you want to uh, uh, shout out here on the stream? Uh, I mean, I, I'll just I'll shout out my team, obviously, for showing up and playing well with me. And uh, I don't, there's, there's not really anyone else to shout out. So. <laughs> yeah, you said you were addicted to the game. You're like, yeah, I want to shout out my team. The only people that matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not there wrong. You there you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I love it, man. I love it. Oh boy. Well, that'll do it for us here at Nine Lives. Really appreciate you taking some time uh, out of your day to provide such a great interview. And again, congratulations on the 2-0. And uh, go draw some more Senna bands, man. I uh, 
I, I hope it's not too often because the more we see of that, the, the better. That was uh, pretty insane. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate it. And I'd love to play her more, so hopefully <laughs> they don't ban her, but it'd be smart if they do. There you have it. That'll do it for us here on the interview desk. Uh, we will be taking a short break here in the Midwest Esports Conference where we come back with our final series of the day, Axeman. Uh, so do stick around for that one. We'll hopefully close out with an absolute thriller between PNW and Drury.
Welcome back to the Midwest Esports Conference. I'm DJ Cast, joined by Axeman87. Looks like they got our names swapped on the UI there. We'll get that fixed for you next game coming up in just a bit. Axeman, what can you tell us about our next matchup? Uh, what I can tell you, uh, I guess DJ, is that, I, I think my name is right there. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the screen. You, you, you got me all twisted up here, Ax. Uh, what, what I can tell you, uh, Ax Man, is that uh, I am very excited for this final oh, matchup man. because I think, as maybe a lot of people know, I'm a big PNW fan. I've been a big fan of the way they've been playing all split long. I think they are super clean in a lot of their gameplay. Their early games are good. Their mid-game planning is solid, and they close teams out pretty ruthlessly so i'm excited to see what they can do once again here against drury esports but i'm also excited because this is the drury land and this is our last game of day one and it is featuring none other than the home side in drury so i want to see what they can do they did uh, take a loss earlier on in the day and i want to see them bounce back after that 2-0 against you because i use that home court advantage and try to do something that really no team but gv has been able to do and that is stop the onslaught that pnw provides 
And I got to be real with you, Chad, folks at home, a uh, little bit of bias here on the desk here. I got a lot of friends over at Jury, so keep that in mind where you're listening to the cast this game. But um, we're going to try to keep it as unbiased as possible. And I know DJ will even me out. He's a big PNW fan, right, DJ? I am a fan of their gameplay. I am an unbiased caster, uh, <laughs> fan. Yeah, that's, uh, that they is, do dock your pay if you are biased. So that we're trying is to unless <laughs> you are a TSM fan, and, can, and, and in that case, 1-9 Keck W. Yep, 1-9 Keck W. It's all TSM haters here on the Unified Desk. You can take that all the way to the bank. Getting into draft here for game one just a little bit. Expecting to see the Sparks fly that B1 Jinx pick. I'm telling you, it's coming through once again every single time here. Should be Jury on blue side, I believe. Uh, potentially, either way. Uh, I do think the Jinx is an option. Uh, I think it often comes up against PNW largely because when you're playing as PNW, the thing that you always have to be worried about, of course, is the Poner. He is just exceptional uh, on this pick. A really, really solid player. And, of course, he has... Uh, we, we saw one good Zeri game last game. He might be the best Zeri uh, in the conference. Aaron's getting up there. He's been playing it, but uh, he is really sick of that champion. So you have to ban it away from him. You can't let him have it. And, of course, he can play everything else in the meta. So a really hard player to ban out. And if that Jinx is available, of course, as you mentioned, Axeman, it's just so easy to take. It really is. So easy to run away with the game like that. Uh, it really is just the uh, just the uh, the TV show diff there. It is. Uh, if you get the your arcane, own TV show. The arcane buff, baby. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you, you got the Jace out there. Uh, I know Heimerdinger and Vi are super meta right now. Maybe? I don't know. But is definitely it, Jinx uh, coming yeah, through. Are, are, are we in silver or gold? <laughs> Uh, we are in bronze, my friend. We are oh, that, turbo that, bronze that, right that now. Can, that but... can track. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, yeah, the Arcane buff coming through there for the Jinx and uh, incredibly strong champion. Hopefully we get to see Zeri in Season 2. That would be a lot of fun. But um, we are into the draft now. See the bands come out for you in just a second. Uh, once again, red side's got to be the Jinx band for me. We just don't see it too often. Yeah, we'll see what we do get here coming through. Jury actually starting on the red side this time around PNW. We'll get that blue side. So the uh, the you know Arian Dell from Supernova likes to call this ban prison on his stream. Uh, I agree with him. I think you have to ban Zary here. I think you have to ban Gwen away from any team that can play it. They're just the two best champions uh, in the game, in my opinion. Uh, you're, you're saying, well, I hope we see Zary. I, I kind of don't because you know Arcane buff, and uh, I don't think Zary needs any more buffs. <laughs> yeah, if we see enough of Zeri, they have to put her in season two, right? So the Zeri band coming out here, but um, yeah, I the Poner, I just you got to be careful there. It, it is the uh, the Udir band coming out, maybe the Hecarim band here in just a second. I don't think you first pick a jungler, but if you're gonna ban junglers, uh, maybe you want to secure one of the better ones for yourselves there. Again, if we get to four jungle bands, we might see the Shivana. Super excited about that, big Shivana fan, but. Probably not coming out here. Rally a band away. Yep, that one's just going to be a takeaway uh, from Yoda. Uh, top lane, they do like to kind of play this. Uh, I don't expect the killer guy uh, to pick up a champion of that nature. Does like his mages a little bit more, uh, Axeman, but I think it's, uh, they're taking away a lot of volatile options. Off Kyrick uh, does like the Sudiri, likes clearing junglers, so this is pretty smart. And of course, Volleybear has been coming back as an early game answer to a lot of the kind of Jin Zhao or Jarvan picks. I want to be taken away from No Use Think. Just one band remaining on the table. Um, and we think, think that Jake's might be up, uh, X-Man. Yeah, if you're telegraphing super early in the draft that you're going to play a mage mid lane, the Volo Bear makes a lot of sense. Really good at enabling dives, right? So uh, if you're playing something like an assassin into a mage and you have a Volo Bear on your team, super easy dives, really easy setup there. So uh, band makes a lot of sense. Ari band coming out. No Ari for the killer guy either. See what that last ban is. We, we talked about it so many times. I need to see it. I like the RA ban away from Killer Guy. He saw it on that pick, and they're actually going to ban ISO. So th this is... Nope. There are some teams for Jury that uh, that have banned ISO a lot more than this. Um, you know, we, we've mentioned the Poner already in this draft, Axeman. Uh, ISO is on a kind of a run right now through the entire mid lane bracket up until we, we maybe see the game tomorrow against GVU. He is, I believe, six matches in a row and might be like four games in a row uh of like a solo kill on his enemy mid laner so he is really on a tear he's only received the akali ban so he'll have plenty of options that is a scary option and one that a lot of teams have opted to take away but it's just so many things to try to ban uh from jury uh or from pnw you can see they left the jinx open 
Uh, and the Jinx will be picked up by Baymax on the other side. But uh, if you're picking Karma, like GVU and IC have in these drafts at B1, it means you definitely have a plan for this. Oh, yeah. And you know Baymax and my boy. We've been friends for a long time now. So seeing him on the Jinx is going to be a lot of fun because uh, it's just, just so free low, man. Hecker, I'm the pick coming through. We saw the Udyr ban. And this is the response that, that makes tons of sense there. But, yeah, Drury coming through with the quickness on this draft. These are some very powerful champions. I need to see it from PNW. You need to see the performance on the champions like the karma they drafted so far. And uh, I don't know what else they got to pick here, but it's got to be something special. Yeah, this might just be a Jin. Um, of course, the Aphelios, there's the other part of this matchup. Uh, so that will be taken by the opponent. I think this is totally fine because Karma can nullify a lot of the pushing that Jinx does put out in the lane. The Hecarim pick, uh, Othgir can play it, but I think this is actually more of a takeaway from No You Stink uh, because if you do leave that Hecarim up, No You Stink's really good at it. And the Karma Hecarim combination is obviously really disgusting. Uh, but speaking of champions, I could get sped up by a Karma. Uh, we're going Olaf. Oh, yeah, the Olaf pick coming through here. Good stuff. You like to see that one. Yeah, exactly like you were saying. Big, uh, you know, speed boost coming through with the fat shield on as well. That's really nice stuff. And Olaf seeing a bit of a resurgence after the changes uh, to uh, the death item. God, what is that called? Death blade? Something like that. Death's, death's grasp. Death That's stance? What, uh, Death stance. That's the one uh, coming through there. It's really nice because you get a lot of resistances to magic damage now as well, which is really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that really helps out the pick in that uh, area there. So we see a lot more Olaf picks. It's kind of the reason for the Udyr Hacker meta there too. It's just a really solid item. You know, I just realized, I, I think Miyazaki probably should have put, he, he's made a lot of references with the items in Elden Ring. I feel like Death Stance would have fit so well in Elden Ring. That would, wouldn't that be sick to like just have that weapon? And it's like, it causes you to like constantly like lose HP or like lose extra HP, but it just like does damage and gives resistance. That's sick. I think that would fit. I do uh, really like the idea of like you finally last hitting a boss and then just hitting you with a big attack at the end and you don't die, but like five or six seconds after you kill the boss, you <laughs> die and then the you have to respawn and the boss is absolutely not dead. Like there's that timer on it. That's really oh funny, boy. man. That would that suck would so be bad. Funny. Yeah, that would be brutal. I uh yeah you're uh, right it sounds like it belongs in the game <laughs> it does it really does that would that would definitely fit the brutality it's been fairly brutal to me x-man as a you oh, know, yeah. so, solo queue and elden ring sharing a a lot of similarities in that case we do see two iso bands finally since the mid laning pool mid laner has not been selected they'll pinch a syndra which has kind of been his signature pick they'll pinch the leblanc camille the takeaway and there's the nico that is a killer guy special we saw him get a big win on that champion last time uh, they played on it, and it was his most played last season. So pretty smart target ban uh, at the uh, end of this phase, too. And now the R4 in for Drury. Let's see what they're going to opt for. Malphite can always be like an angle into an Aphelios if you really want to disturb him. But instead, Yoda going to go for the very, very strong and uh, still just super impressive grade. Yeah, and it's difficult to, I don't really like this pick, but it's difficult to, you know, talk down to it because the enemy team, like, banned Aurelia for you, right? Like, it's so free to just pick the graves here. Uh, now you're fo uh, forcing the enemy team to go for a comp that has, like, what, a, a Felios, Olaf, Trindamir? What are you going to pick? Yeah, no, you don't pick, you don't pick Aatrox, and that's, that, that's not good at all. But, um, yeah, that's super free. So, yeah, great graves pick up there. Uh, they're going to take the Aatrox into it and save that last pick for the killer guy he said he liked mages he bans out Syndra, bans out the leblanc that's a lot of pick potential i feel like the oriana maybe uh here for the killer guy uh ori could be fine on top of olaf we could also see vex uh would be an option oh forgot rise is actually still available yeah why would yeah. you not pick that up yeah rise for iso iso but who for the killer guy to match this rise twisted fate's still available there too really solid pick i don't we have n i i don't honestly i don't think we've seen twisted fate played once at this conference and I don't oh, yeah? think it gets banned very often either. Yeah, no, it doesn't need a lot of bans. It's a 100% pick ban in a lot of regions. But yep. uh, other regions, yeah, you just never see it. No way you pick Cassie. Cassiopeia, okay, let's go. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Yeah, killer guy, gonna bust out the Cassie, of course. It's a very good lane matchup into Rise. Can match in the side lane later on. So you do see two side lanes that can kind of match each other. I'm not sure. I don't think we have, um, what's the hole breaker? nerfs yet right no i i don't think so but all right um, so we'll see if solyndric this will be interesting because solyndric might have to go gore drinker and it is just an inferior item to hole breaker uh in a side lane does require yoda to kind of be in that side lane and not group with his team but of course that item is is 
So what we'll we'll see how these sidelines go. There are two sidelines that both teams can play around. There's a really nice front to back team fight available for Drury. The one maybe kind of weird thing is they don't really have a traditional front line. Hecarim can get tanky. He can go this chem tank. I expect he will. And Graves is kind of faux tanky with all the, the heal and drain tanking, but it's not traditional front line. And we're dealing with an Olaf who can just run through your petrifying gaze, your uh, miasma, your pretty much everything. Uh, I think the, the polymorph really the only thing that can try to slow him down. So um, trying to slow down OU Stink will be a big part of these, these team fights that are to come, Axeman, uh, because there are answers for Drury at pretty much every stage in the game. I do imagine it will come down to a little bit of execution around either side laning and or the 5v5s that are too. Couldn't agree more, DJ. I know you mentioned lots of things going for uh, the draft here. I, I think the grit passive from uh, Graves is going to be putting a lot of work, you know, into a almost fully AD team on the side of PNW. Uh, that 2v2 up top side is no magic damage, right? So um, it's all physical. It's all going into the Graves, and he's going to be blocking out a lot of it. So super tanky up there, like you mentioned, with the hull breaker coming through. But, yeah, I want to talk about this bot lane. It's my boy Baymax. He's got the Jinx. He's got the Lulu. Everything going in his favor. Uh, all I can say is blue side, they first picked this Karma. You don't first pick your support without a reason to. So for uh, Udon, Udon Bidon. Well, how are we saying this? Udon Bidon. That's Udon what we're going with. Udon Bidon. Um you know, I need to see a big performance in the Karma from this to really warrant this being the first pick and the Aphelios coming through on top of it. I think it's a great pick. I think it's a good pick for uh, the Olaf, the Aatrox, the Rise. You're getting all these really short-range carries uh, into range as quickly as possible with a, a nice primary engage there in the ultimate, but uh, I need more reason than that, right? It's got to be from laning phase for me. Uh, yeah, and I think it, it should do the trick here, uh, Axeman. Really what the Karma does, and I think of the reason a lot of teams prioritize, is because this Jinx Lulu lane is a traditionally hard-pushing matchup. You can actually shove lane against pretty much any matchup, uh, and then get a cheater recall, get prior on bot lane, you can play around Dragon, you can try and set up a gank, you can control the wave, right? It's just a really powerful combination, unless you are hard engaging onto Lulu and blowing her up. And LeBlanc was banned, right? That's kind of like a very easy answer that we, we usually see as like an assassin mid laner. However, Karma first pick actually neutralizes quite a bit of this. Like Karma is probably the hardest pushing character in the bottom lane in the early game. And so you can actually, with your clear, help the opponent push this wave back, get control, fight for it. And that is why a lot of teams are first picking this Karma because even if Jinx goes across and you get Jinx Lulu, you're not getting so hard pushed in the lane that you can't get control in Oboe Yoda. He's one. Oh, now he sees more. Yeah, in a situation like this, you eat one Undertow, and that's about it, right? You start getting them chained together, and uh, you get run down, so you got to be careful. Uh, it doesn't end up eating the Undertow, not really in range there. Oh, that's close. That's real close, right? They're standing on vision here, so no real danger for Othkirk, but... Yeah, no, he's, he's going to be just fine. I think they probably know by now that they're uh, that they're standing on the vision there, but... Good luck from Othkirk to drop the ward like to see that now bot side here on the bot side river might be the late invade we saw this last game in that final game of the ic versus ottawa series okay, i will say there's a lot of vision right now for drury so they really yeah. did expect some early game shenanigans they have placed four wards already axe man and they have placed them early like this vision will disappear so there is a price to pay for all the information they're getting now and it will come around this kind of Two minute mark as some of these wards start to drop off. I mean, you can see the one above us right there. That will drop off in like 20 seconds. So they will not have a lot of vision uh, around the point at which No Use Think can start to make decisions and try to gank. Uh, I will tell you, I let several of these guys know that if they do lose to my main Olaf, I will clown them infinitely for the rest of their lives. So that's there's some stakes here for Drury. They want to make sure they don't lose this Olaf. Deep vision coming through. And that is exactly how you counter this early game jungler and make sure that this Olaf doesn't show up in your lane without you knowing. Yeah, this ward down near the red buff will be really critical. Uh, we did see it uh, get placed pretty early. I think it should still catch the vision uh, of No You Stink walking by. Ooh. That's the other big question mark is this mid lane. Oh right? Don't see... my god. Okay, wow, it just got him. Did it? So did it get him or did he disable it with the... He might have disabled it. With the it scanner. Too. I think yeah. it might have disabled it. Um, close that there. Timing. 
good. Okay, he's going to steal Cam, so he can't really fight. I, I don't think they saw him. I, I don't. I think it's 50 50, maybe. But I don't think they saw him. It, it definitely oh, doesn't look flip like it. For this blue buff. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah. He's found out now if he wasn't before. And here's the fight. Yeah, no, you stink. He's just all the way in. Baby Baymax getting rushed down by Udombi Don. And they're going to get the Jinx first blood on the Aphelios now. They're continuing the approach. The Poner looking for Oth Kurek. Not going to be able to find him as he runs back oh under God. turret. Fat Cat still on the run. No, you stink. Running him down. It is. Oh, oh the Axe God. gets the kill down. Iso, Iso in on the back end. Gets the kill on the killer guy. What a good look from Purdue North. Northwest DJ. Oh my god, they're just relentless. This is exactly what I'm talking about, Axeman. They just understand how strong they are. They they just free force on Dejruri in their own jungle with no use thing. He's like draining his health bar. He's got Cassiopeia's face. He doesn't care. He's just marching forward, killing Fat Cat. He knows he has the backup. And what a start for PNW. I mentioned how impressed I've been with their gameplay all season long. This is part of why their confidence, their decision-making, their understanding, it is nearly unmatched outside of GVU. And it's a 2K gold lead. Olaf is 1-0-1. -on -one. Axeman, there's going to be axes flying all over the place. It's literally, your fa it's going to be your favorite kind of day. Oh, it's yeah. This... Axes everywhere. Yeah, no, Axes Everywhere is my favorite kind of day for sure. And uh, no, you stink. That's just a great Olaf play, man. Understanding that you could just wade into the enemy jungle because they don't have four enemy champions there is such an Olaf thing, man. No other champion does that. Not Shin Zhao, not J4. All of them walk back after that play. And uh, I, I think we'll be asking the question, would it have made the difference if that ward had caught out No, You Stink? Or would it not have mattered for uh, at least weeks to come after this? Because that changed the course of this game. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, we, it, we obviously it's not as bad as the last series, but you are already like absolutely quivering in your boots if you are Jury Panthers. 2K down at five minutes. It was at three minutes. It's like not the place you want to be. And it's not with all the gold going into it. I mean, look where the kills went. Olaf, Rise, yeah. Ophelios. Iso, the Poner, no use thing. Like, they are so primed to just absolutely run this game over. Exactly. I, I don't know if it would have been better if it was just the Olaf with the triple kill, but this is certainly scary in its own unique way because you can't just, like, outlast this team anymore. Wait, are you going to outscale Ryze? Are you going to outscale Aphelios? No, you're not. This team is going to be strong for the rest of this game. You have to find a way to shut them down, and you have to shut them down with a, a just very fed Olaf at their backs, too. The killer guy doing tons of damage, man. This is a nice Cassiopeia. Yeah, the trading pattern into Rise is really good for Cass here, right? He has to walk in range of your Q. You usually land it, and you can run him down uh, even as he kind of speeds away. That is why this matchup is good in lane. You can see even killer guy going for Ghost instead of the TP. Um, but again, Iso doesn't really need to play for lane anymore. He's got his kill. He's got his yep. The jungler's accelerated, and they're just using all their power and tempo to force onto the strike. It's pre eight minutes, Axe. I mean, we're literally only at six minutes. They have so much time to reset, to look for a dive before the Rift Herald is even on the map. For sure, there. And Baymax and Fat Cat, they smell a rat. They're going to take the back here. They do not want to get dove after that play. No, you think it's a, a bigger advantage that's going to spell doom for them here. I'll go ahead and give the Aatrox pick this. It's doing a lot better into the graves than I thought it would. That's a crazy trade in onto the graves. He'll have to take the reset. Has teleport to get back in the lane, but you only get to teleport so many times, DJ. Yeah, Solendric, make it a work regardless uh, of kind of where the matchup should go. You know, Graves should be able to dodge out of a couple of the cues out of the cage. Uh, out of the cage. Oh, here we go. Off here, up it. in the top side. Solendric, yeah, he's Solendric, gonna have a difficult wait, what time. Are you do? He's There's just five. no yeah. follow up. Yeah, what? there's no follow up there. I think he thought that maybe Yoda. Uh, Yoda, I, this is just a communication thing. I think he thought he was gonna follow up, but Yoda's like, yeah, I have a full wave up top here, dude. I'm not like coin flipping and engage on Solenkirk. I don't know why you thought I would, but yeah, yeah I, I don't know. We're a little busy farming these creeps under my turret sorry <laughs> for sure like i'm not gonna get one v2 by enemy aatrox and lose two waves like that's not that's not gonna happen so they do back off for the time being but nothing really wasted by Othkirk either just a little pressure exerted there he is a little bit down here two and a half camps he has not ticked six x or six yet which of course is very important uh for a uh, hecker get that onslaught of shadows and uh you stink critically does have his ragnarok again he has a 
Yep. This man's is this man's is, this man's is nigh unkillable with the items that are in the game right now. Uh, uh, Axe man. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the ghost as well. This is how you play Olaf in season twelve. You don't say flash. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, big engage there. The realm warp comes through, and no, you stay gonna pick up another kill, and the second kill goes to ISO. ISO killer guy in here now shows up. I don't know how successful they're gonna be. Udombi Don gets blown up by Hecarim. Now they're looking forward to Poner. They will find that kill. Suddenly, Jury looking uh, a little bit better as they go even on this play. Yeah, great response from Killer Guy. We've seen him answer these roams and plays in several consecutive matches, and he does get himself a very nice boon. A lot of gold going into the pockets of Othkirk and Killer Guy to set up a powerful mid jungle 2v2. There is still a price to pay. Your bottom lane will suffer. Baymax is not going to get that way if he is going to get killed and dove under his trade. It's just a good response to keep it from being a complete net positive for Purdue at Northwest. We're sure like to see that. They're gonna get the Rift Hero now. Preferably dropping this mid lane. We'll see where they go with it. Mid lane, something's brewing as well. As Jury trying to make a play happen on ISO ISO. On bot side, maybe the dive. This is a hard dive though. I mean, you know, it's red and white. You don't want to dive in, but green and white ain't much better. Kill a guy, not very healthy either, DJ. Oh, here he goes. There's a big engage push forward. Gonna draw the flash from Toponer, but not much else. Yeah. It's a hard dive there. Yeah, I think the Poner afraid that, you know, if he gets knocked back straight, no petrifying gaze, he, he will just go down there. So just respects that uh, his support not around, flashes away. That is the right call. And I mean, you could just, you, you could see the price paid right there, right? And the CS difference, right? Uh, killer guy, feeling pretty good now with the lost chapter. You really only really need. Uh, kind of mythic item uh, plus uh, stack gear to be online as Cassiopeia these days. Oh my god. It's sure is. I don't really know where they go after that. I mean, Othkura kind of just uh, kind of just surviving at this point. But uh, Killer Guy having an okay lane, I guess. You know, he's doing fine in this rise. I think it, my biggest issue is that the scaling, right? I think rise just scales a little bit better in the meta right now. I think the 1v1, you could probably give that to Cassiopeia most of the game. Oh, here we go. Big ult there. But no, you think it's coming in from, I don't know where, the, the back? I think he ran through turret range to get there. He dropped the Rift Herald off as well. And that is going to go down for free. Disaster play for Purdue Northwest. Just the execution completely dropped the ball there. Yeah, we, we talked about the mid 2v2 being a lot stronger for Drury after covering that play in the bot side. You can see it there just a step too far. Yes. As the Olaf, you want to impress upon your enemy. Yes, you want to go a little bit Viking crazy, right? That's the point of the champion. But that was a bridge slightly too far. A rainbow bridge, maybe, if you will. <laughs> Norse mythology. Um, but, uh, the Bifrost. Yes, the Bifrost. Yeah. Uh, Bifrost cracked a little bit on on, on that one, Axe Man. And uh, Killer Guy and Othkirk do a nice job turning around. Othkirk all of a sudden uh, holding three kills in his back pocket working on this tank hack room. So they will feel like they can still impact this game. They have the power to make plays as the mythic item completed by the killer guy, but there is still some work to be done. They're still down 2k gold. Their bottom lane is really far behind, and you can see No Sync is still not afraid to go stack objectives. Yeah, a lot of Norse mythology here. You mentioned the Bifrost, uh, Olaf's ultimate Ragnarok. There should be a couple of fin uh, Fimble Winters built here in this game. Um, I think it's interesting every mention of like Norse mythology in League of Legends is just about the end of the world. That's pretty funny. It's, it's a little dark. Fat Cat eats a big Q there. Dombidon is not messing around. Uh, top side. So I, I think the game has changed a little bit here. Um, Yoda, no real way out of uh, this turret range. Kind of just has to sit around up top side there. I don't necessarily think that Othkirk joining this fight 2v1 is going to change things for them either. Zatrox has been fairly dominant. We're going to see that 2v1 now. Solenkirk starts it off early. He just absolutely blows the graves oh, all nice. the way up. Oh, he doesn't get the kill. Yo, he's able to get out. Othkirk kills him just in time. What a play there from the hacker. It looked like he'd be too late, but he makes it in time and saves his graves. Yeah, that was massive by Othkirk. Just great timing and... uh really really close to just being a solo kill for solentric of course as with anything in league of legends 
spending those resources. If your lane is in trouble and you call your jungler, there's a price to pay. The bottom side is just really kind of sailing away here from Baymax. He can't even clear the wave. The turret is fully taken here before 14 minutes. And uh, oh boy. Wow. And they get uh, punished for overstay. Yeah, punished, I'll say. That's uh, that's Ragnarok used by No You Sink. Didn't have to use the ghost, just use the uh, the movement speed from the ultimate to get on top of the graves, close the gap, and nothing really you could do after that point. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and say I never liked the graves pick. I like it even less now. Yeah, just not working out great for Yoda in the top lane. Fortunately for him, he's uh, still has a turret to work with. He can walk it back out the lane, still has TP, but you can see that Purdue Northwest have rotated the Poner up the top side and... Uh, Poner is pretty untouchable at this point. Has another 30 seconds to try to get one more plate if he can and stack the resources into their big carry into the member that they have fed as the mid 2v2 again. Not uh, as easily assaulted anymore, Axe Man. So the Poner really going to be a big carry threat for the next few minutes here for, for Purdue Northwest as they potentially look for the second Rift Herald as well. Yeah, I would, I would encourage both teams to, to look for this one. You don't be down in on to Yoda. Gets him locked up there to Pona, providing the damage. No dive, though. They don't have the wave, but still, just forcing the Graves out of the fight there. Gives him a lot of pressure on the Rift Herald. Here comes No You Sink. Just the damage coming through. Any other champion in the game he's not able to run away. He's Actually, still going. Actually, Othgar, yeah, he's not out yet either, so... <laughs> it's just the uh, the Polymorph there, able to force the Olaf away. And, uh, yeah, this this is a lot of fun. I love seeing Wait, Olaf be Yoda this Did Yoda just uh, TP again to his wave? Dude, Yoda's just gonna die. Wait, what's... The... You can't TP here! Your jungler just got chased out! Uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be rough. They don't have the wave again. He's able to clear it just uh, barely, but I, I don't even know if they need the wave here. They no! got big shields coming through from the Karma. Here's the wave finally arrives. No, you sink in onto Yoda. The damage coming down is so extreme. He's able to dodge quite a bit of it, but there is just too much in the end. I think he dodged a couple axes there, which is pretty nice, actually. But, yeah, he, he just can't be there. I think you're right. He can't take that teleport. No, yeah. I mean, he, he dug his own grave a minute ago. Like, I, I mean, uh, that, that pun was slightly unintended there with the graves. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, if your jungler gets chased out and, and there are any camps up on that side of the map, you cannot make that TP. You have to assume that the enemy jungler is going to say, okay, thank you, I will take your camps and I will walk away because I have forced you out. There's no support. You're completely cut off of your team. That is just, that is a TP into hell right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not, not an opportunity for you at all. Uh, team kind of sacking the Rift Herald for a dragon play, but looks like they're not even really interested in that either. Trying to get the pick here on the rise. Camera moves over. And, uh, oh, big ultimate from Soldenkirk. He's in off. Oh. Whoa, big triple knock up there. The rocket from Baymax is going to provide some damage. They get the kill finally onto the Cassiopeia. Still trying to run them down a little bit. I don't think they have a way in here, DJ. Oh, it was a nice flank from Solendric. Big petrifying gaze again from Killer Guy, trying to nullify a lot of the engage. He does manage to get the kill back. Purdue Northwest does not extend their lead by that much. 20 seconds now to get No Use Think back to base, get out to the map. Soul Point coming up. It is that powerful mountain uh, Drake that you were talking about, potentially Mountain Soul. And Drake's really low. Is he even going to get a reset timer in here? They do have a ton of vision around the Drake, uh, Axeman, but I have to feel like we are heading for a fight. I don't think Drury can afford with a 5k gold deficit to give Purdue Northwest soul point and just allow them to be run around, allow themselves to be run around the map. I agree, DJ. I just don't know if they have the time. I think it's already halfway gone. Yep. Or, well, not not that far, but it is now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost gone, and they are nowhere near. So I think if you wanted to contest this, you had to move a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, I... I... Othgrig maybe hanging around his turret a little bit too long. Um, maybe without Killer Guy available. Uh, no TP, of course, on this castle. They didn't think they could get there in time and just called it off, trying to get resources elsewhere. But again, you are now looking at a Soul Drake in 4 minutes, 40 seconds that you're going to have to fight for. And Purdue doesn't necessarily need to go for it. They can take the time. They can take turrets if they want. They have two players that can play on a side lane here in Cylindric and ISO ISO, both of whom are easily strong enough to go out in the side lane, I mean, particularly with how much Yoda has been bullied in this game. As that Gordrinker comes in for Cylindric, he will kind of start to win the 1v1 as well. So they don't even need to take the Drake if they don't want to. They could play for turrets, give up a couple Drakes. It, it makes this game really hard to approach for Jory Prances because 
if you're going to spend your resources, look for a 5v5, and Purdue isn't 100% sure of it, they do not have to opt into it anymore. They really don't, no. They don't have to move for almost any objective if they don't really want to. And they are scaling really effectively as well. The rise, the the Felios coming out there. But, um, you know, I think, uh, I think Olaf, probably where he's at right now, does fall off in maybe five, uh, seven minutes. He starts to, to deal a little bit less damage. But until then, he's going to be a terror, absolute terror for Jury and not a lot of good ways for them to deal with him, so... Something they have to be careful of whenever they're going in for these fights. I want to make sure your carries are uh, really just distance. It is distance between your carries and Olaf. That is the safest way uh, to stay alive. Because, uh, you know, you want to outlast the Ragnarok. Make sure you're running that out. And then trying to fight him, but... You know, they're getting this top lane turret. Yoda and Fat Cat trying to defend, but... There's nothing really they can do, right? You don't want to get dove. Yeah, it's just... Really hard to sit under turrets, right? I mean, this is what the Karma Olaf can do. The waves are all pushing into you. Already four turrets from North West, and this is what I'm talking about when I compliment them on their mid game, just understanding how to pressure their opponent, make a lead that is even small, right? It wasn't that big. It was two, three K at the start. I turned around a couple times, but they've continued to find a way to push the lead, to take objectives, to be on tempo, to be on the right timers. And that is making this game so hard for Drury, still without a turret. Yes, they have seven kills, but they have no turrets, they have no control of the map, and they're down 7k gold, Axe. like to point out as well, at, at any point here, Jinx can absolutely pop off, uh, just get excited in one of these team fights and rip through a team fight. That's something that you know, Jinx will be able to do basically all the way through like 35 minutes. Um, you have to really shut down a Jinx for, for her to not have that carry potential. But uh, yeah, it's Tip Owner who's like up an item, like an item and a half on the Jinx. Um, so extremely strong. It would take quite the start for Baymax to have that opportunity to get excited at the start of the fight. Because of course, you have to get a kill, right? You have to, uh, you have to get the kill and start the fight off uh, with that uh, with that kill on the Jinx to be able to, to really get that snowball going. So difficult to do, I would go ahead and say, but you have several enemy champions that are coming at you, right? It's not going to be uh, an issue of, of hunting people down. You just got to find a way to kill Soldendrick, uh, to kill No You Stink on the Olaf, and get them down. So, you know, we'll see if uh, Jerry can pull that off moving forward. Next Dragon's up in a minute 25. This is Soul for Purdue. Got to fight for this if you're Jerry. You can't give over... The Mountain Soul for free like that. Very strong soul on champions uh, like uh, Aphelios, like the Rise. These late game carries that benefit so much from uh, blocking just one ability or so. Othkuric all the way diving in on to Solendric to get the kill right at the start of the fight. Just like we talked about, Baymax with the assist on that one gets excited briefly. There is no fight left for them to capitalize on. Looks like Jury might have a case for this dragon. You done be done. And though you stink, trying to get the fight down here. Push elsewhere from Purdue. They're taking turrets across Summoner's Rift. I don't know. I think you got to give the turrets. I think you got to fight over this dragon in 30 seconds. Starts with this team fight. Kill a guy with the ultimate down. No, you sink in with their ultimate. In kind, Oth Kurik is ripped apart. Baymax is getting hunted now. You want to get excited if you're the Jinx sign. He gets that excited double flash over the wall and the Jinx brings Baymax down almost instantly. The killer guy has no health to fight back. There's nothing you can do if you're the Cassiopeia. Yoda, Yoda's up. He's got the grains. He's got the damage. They're trying to get Iso Iso down. Oh, it's still alive. Oh, it's so close, right? You Dombi down over the wall. Just a very small amount of health. That The win was in sight. For Drury, they almost got that team fight, but keep in mind, folks, they were fighting over this dragon, dragging up now, and it is Purdue looking for it. Yep, uh, that fight will earn them the dragon soul, Axeman, and that means this game is, uh, it might just be doomed for Drury. I mean, you already are having trouble cutting through Udon, shielding his healing. Now there's a big fat shield that you already have to start cutting through. Honer is working on his third item at the moment, like, this is, uh, it's a very, you're talking about the, uh, the Bifrost. Any bridges you know that are longer and bigger than the Bifrost? No, not that I can tell you. The bridge between worlds is pretty long. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're getting, we're getting so. to that level of a bridge to be crossed for the Jury Panthers here, Axe. <laughs> yeah, just, just about there. And, 
Uh, it seems insurmountable. You still have some very important carries on your team. Uh, if you're Jury Panthers, you're five three and three, you know, two hundred uh, CS for the killer guy in Cassiopeia. That's a lot of damage. It's just about getting the damage on the enemy team. And right now, you got things like no use stink and ISO flashing uh, over the wall directly onto Baymax, keeping it, uh, keeping him out of the fight. And they're doing really well to focus the correct targets. Killer guy looking for ISO here. Does he have the damage? It's gonna be close. Yoda, meanwhile, down bot side, Solendrick looking for him. Arrives the Hecarim, ults in onto the Aatrox, but he's healing so much, DJ. Can they take him down? Look at the healing. It's like he's got 5,000 health. Meanwhile, across the map, Purdue are trying to take the Baron. Can they finish it off? Oh, Otkarik oh, still looking for this kill under Aatrox. There's no he's help left. Out. Yoda, come on, you got it! They kill and they kill the Aatrox! But the Baron goes down, Realm Warp comes out from Purdue Northwest, and now they're chasing down the killer guy. Does he have the damage? Can he flip this on ISO? He gets rooted up, and he's over the wall, but it's not enough. Q comes out from ISO. They're hunting Baymax, looking for Fat Cat, but they're going to arrive back at the safety of their inhib turret. Yeah, and that'll do it here for Purdue Northwest. They got all the tools they need. The Poner is just fearless, diving into it. Four enemy members. There's no Onslaught of Shadows. He knows he can't go down here. He knows he's too strong. He is all too strong. The Aphelia is pushing for the end now. Might have to back off. Might take the money and run. Red and green guns in on a Baymax. So much damage. And the range there from Calibrum is just so oppressive. They want the inhib turret. They're going to get it too, DJ. They'll get the inhib too. Killer guy just coming up in three seconds. They can take this inhib and then walk away. Axeman and look for one more push with all of their earned gold to finish this game. It's exactly what they'll do. I, I just don't think at this point Drury has what it takes to resist them, right? We've seen how hard it is from the team fight. They are scrapping with every tooth and claw to get kills at this point. It was one auto away from Solundric, probably 2v1ing that fight in the bottom lane that earned the Baron. So. Purdue has everything that they need to finish this game off, and now we're just looking for one of those patented, clean Purdue finishes in their final. For sure, here it's a Poner looking for the Blue Steel, not going to find that one. But, uh, yeah, Solendrick, he, he finds Othkiri, catches him out. Is the onslaught over, over the wall, and he's going to be able to make it out with the E, but... Yeah, another resource used there by Drury just to escape. Not a good situation for them as the Baron power play continues. Another minute left in that power play. They're already up just 2,000 gold from the power play alone here, DJ. Now they're looking for the inhib turret. Kill a guy trying to mount that defense. I, yeah, I just don't know if there's any way in here. Oh, big Ryan. ultimate there from Toponer. Yeah. Yeah, it's just oh, so split. The, yeah, the engage from Hecarim comes out. It doesn't get them too much, though. It's pulled back in by the Aatrox ability there. Baymax just trying to free fire. There's so much damage coming at him, though. There's nothing he can do. Now you stink. Now he's going to dive all the way in. Three-man knock-up from the Aatrox. Brings Othkirk to his knees. Yoda is next on the docket. Dives to the burn from uh, oh, yeah, actually, the cast. Yeah, they went one for one. The mid laners kill. killed each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they both burned to death. And uh, this will be the end of the game here is maybe one last kill on the Baymax. That's just an incredible play. And another time where we've seen the Jinx actually fall after getting picked early in the draft there. So maybe a good call, actually, from, uh, from the team there to not uh, ban the Jinx to leave that one up. I, I still think the Jinx is a good pick, Axeman, right? I, I yeah. just think that these teams are understanding how to bury that, right? And when you choose to go bury the Jinx in the bottom lane, there has to be a requisite response on the other side of the map. There wasn't in the series that we saw just before this, and this time around, Solentric just bullied the lane. There was no response on the other side of the map uh, as well. And so yeah. when that happens, you're just losing your big point of power for, for no exchange, right? Or for very little exchange, and that allows the gold lead to continue to spiral out of control, Allows the Poner, right, who has been such a huge carry all season, to just get really big. And I'd say this was one of the less clean kind of mid games we've seen from uh, PNW, largely because I think Drury actually had very good responses. Killer Guy and Ofkirk were in a lot of the right places to turn some of these plays around to give them some hope. But I mean, this has just been PNW all season. Uh, they just find a way to continue to pressure. They always are finding plays. They're always on the front foot. And their late, like mid to late game shot calling and kind of execution to end the game 
is really, really effective and efficient. And once again, uh, they just show a, a pretty solid win. It was a, a great team comp, right? The first pick, Karma, I thought was instrumental into this team comp. Obviously, it's very subtle um, from time to time, but uh, you can't understate the value uh, into a champion like Jinx of just protecting your team right at the start of the fight, not letting them get excited, uh, not letting that snowball start. And uh, it was just so powerful with the Olaf, with the Aatrox there too. Uh, really love this comp. It was a great draft. Certainly was. Like the comp, uh, like the gameplay, like some things we saw from Drury. So hopefully they can kind of build on those in game two, uh, Axeman, and try to put up an even better fight than they put up in this one. But before we do, get to that game number two. We want to, of course, thank our sponsors here at Unified, Atlantic, Depalty, Gangster, and of course, Skulls for allowing us to provide these incredible broadcasts. And once again, a big thank you to Skulls. Looking to upgrade your gamer gear, look no further. Start your 2022 off right with official Unified Esports merchandise brought to you by Skulls. Hoodies, joggers, jerseys, armbands, and a lot more coming soon. You have the skill, now get the swag. Skulls.com slash collection slash unified has everything you need. Gear up, game on, Skull. Oh, yeah. And you know I'm getting those armbands, man. I, I already ordered mine. I had to get the XL size. They had different sizes. But you know me, I got the big arms. So, yeah, it's, it is All what right. it is. But, uh, yeah, with that, we are going to cut to a little bit of a break. Before game two here, you're watching Midwest Esports Conference uh, only on Unified Live Channel. Maxman87 joined by DJ Cass once again. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.
And welcome back to uh, MEC here on Unified Live. <laughs> DJ, I don't know what... What does it say on the bottom of that cup? <laughs> you look oh, so uh, ominous, dude. <laughs> oh, Dark Horse loves you. Nice. Cool. I guess <laughs> Totally derailed me watching you drink from that cup. I don't know why. But uh, you got to ask that 87 to DJ back on the mic here for you uh, for Jerry versus uh, uh, versus what is that other team that just won? Uh, the, you know, the other team. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. best team in the conference. Uh, those guys, tr- those currently guys. trying to be the best team in the conference as they play GVU tomorrow. PNW, baby. PNW, the Lions. Purdue Northwest. Roaring again in game number one, Axe, man, and you're uh, your boys at Drury. They've. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> broken they broken the vow so they did. <laughs> uh, uh, will they forever be harassed now by axes? they will they will they will, uh, will they never... just have axes thrown at them uh, by the way uh, do not condone this in real life this is obviously a joke please do not do this will you be throwing axes at them every time they walk out of their dorm now yes real axes <laughs> For sure, yeah. Um, but uh, no, not the manslaughter jokes. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to let them live it down. That was that that sucked. That sucked to watch. But um, no, there was a lot of bright things there for Drury in the last game, and I feel like game two uh, is definitely a winnable game for them. I think you got to come out and draft though. Uh, come out swinging with stuff like you know I don't know the Olaf ban. Um, definitely, definitely important for them. But uh, now that they're on blue side, I feel like the Jinx has a little bit more power to it. Um, I just don't know. If uh, if that karma is going to ruin their day again, yeah, the karma might be something they need to address. I, I do think it was a really problematic pick for them. They couldn't really get control of bottom lane as they wished to. I think Udon beat on had a great kind of impact on the game, and particularly around that uh, blue buff. Where again, karma's so good in the early game, right? You you, you just give the shield to uh, no, you stink, and all of a sudden he's just like, yes, I am big Viking. I have shield and heals and axes, and I will run you down with no care in the world. And uh, I mean. There were fight back moments, but from that point on, right, there was never really a true comeback available for Drury. It was PNW just slowly extending their goal lead until like, they could bust the game wide open. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, at that point, it was not super winnable for Drury. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The, the Karma pick was just uh, so unstoppable. And the Graves top was not great i mean graves just isn't really good into champions that do really well in extended trades and things like the aatrox are going to do that but it wasn't just aatrox either right you saw the trinomir up you have the gwen up all that good stuff uh it's just not a good blind pick so didn't, didn't really like that pick feel like they could have gone for a different top laner yeah well i still think graves can can be a good blind pick uh axe man i think maybe just uh not quite expecting how good cylindric was on this aatrox honestly so uh I, I think maybe it could be something they look to to adjust but i think there are are bigger issues to address if you are going to change things in draft yeah some big issues for sure um still waiting on that draft to start and then we will get underway here but um yeah another couple takeaways uh i, I think that the mid lane um i i like the the cassiopeia from killer guy i think that made sense to me i don't know how much it did for them in the late game right i feel like it was meant to snowball uh, into the mid game maybe get them a bunch of um a bunch of objectives going get them dragon control uh, and stuff like that i just didn't see it right didn't see it happen uh they were going from from the get-go there on the olaf in the early game plays and it felt like the cassiopeia never really had a chance to shine no, I don't think it really did. And, and you know, Killer Guy tried to make it shine, right? He found multiple good responses to bot lane dives, to plays around the map. His Petrifying Gaze was in good command the entire game. He even got the right the trade solo kills at the very death of the game when ISO was, like, way ahead of him. So I think he did about the best he could. But, again, the pressure that PNW exhibits, or exerts, excuse me, it, it just makes it so hard to get set up for team fights, for the way your fight, your team wants to play, right? You can't really sideline because Yoda's so far behind in that game one. So all of a sudden that option goes off the table. You're trying to group for 5v5s. Well, they're just kind of out-tempoing you to these objectives. So you don't even get set up properly. Uh, so yes, we never really saw the full potential of that Cassio, but you can see the killer guy had a pretty good game on it uh, despite the circumstances and certainly still is a threat for Drury. Yeah, big threat there. Love to see him get ahead. I- I'd love to see top lane uh, go a little bit better for jury as well jury do side selection i believe after taking a loss uh they have selected red side 
So they're still going to be on red side. Uh, this go around, I guess, you know, reading that, hey, you know, you put PNW on blue side, they're not going to first pick Jinx. We're cool with red side, right? Because we just get two first picks. Um, you know, if they're, if they're going to be first picking Karma. Um, once again, Karma super valuable for them, but I feel like the meta just favors hyper carries. And if you're going to be blue side, you should be first picking a hyper carry. That's, that's just how I feel. Yeah, I... I... It is interesting to see them hop back to red side. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's fine. It just depends on your strategy. So the counter picks, obviously, something that they are valuing. Uh, Axe man, um, but again, we we will need to see changes in draft, and and I would at the very least like to see the uh, the karma taken off the table. I think it's uh, probably a little too easy and too enabling, and it didn't look like you could really punish it with the uh, the jinx and the lulu. So if you can't punish it with that combination, there's not a whole lot of other ones that can do much better. Yeah, not too many there. Not too many whatsoever, but we do have Jury in the lobby now. It should be starting up draft in just a bit. It's their land, folks. What do you want me to do? Tell them to come faster? I mean, I don't, I don't, like, I don't know what you, want, what you want from me here, but it uh, should be starting soon here in just a bit. And, uh, yeah, changing up tactics a little, I think, is going to be valuable for them. Uh, the thing was is that I don't know how much I would change about their jungle approach. I mean, this Hecarim was like 5-0 and zero at 20 minutes or something like that. It seemed like the perfect jungle game. And then the enemy team gets, get like, Dragon Soul. Play. What what happened there? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the enemy just gets Dragon Soul because they're, they're just so far ahead. Right, Axe Man. I mean, you just couldn't win a fight at that point. I said that the Dragon Soul point was kind of something they needed to fight over, and they never got the chance. Uh, Othkir could not recall in time. They were off tempo. And so by the time you're fighting for Dragon Soul, I mean, you're sitting a half item ahead for the opponent, right? It, it, you, you fight the best you can, but PNW are good team fighters. They have a big gold lead. So once that Soul, you know, you want to try and fight for the Soul, that just sets you even further behind because you don't want to let them have it. They win the fight, they get the Soul, and all of a sudden you're looking at pretty much an insurmountable lead. Uh, instead of just a large one. So, uh, again, I, I think it just speaks to PNW's kind of control and understanding of the game, and it, it will take a lot to shake that in, in this final game, uh, potentially of the day, Axeman. And uh, for Jury, again, home court advantage here. We need to see something special. I know it's been a rough kind of couple of weeks for them, dropping series to Illinois, uh, trying to kind of figure out how this swap back from Killer Guy being need to carry, now back to his original role in mid lane works for them. Uh, they got to show it here, right? Or, or it is going to be a kind of rough start to their land weekend just a couple weeks before the playoffs. I like you bring that up, uh, the role swaps on this team. We've seen Drury in a number of different uh, iterations. We've seen Baymax at support. Uh, you mentioned we've seen uh, Killer Guy down at 80 carry. Now Baymax at 80 carry here. Um, lots of different players on this team uh, go back and forth as well. So it's a team with a, a lot of movements on it, but... Uh, certainly some some star players that really make this team shine and they've had difficulty getting success but i feel like they have it in them i don't know i don't think it's going to be an easy 2-0 here for pnw but man that team looks really good and i could definitely see this being uh the last game of the day for sure uh certainly could uh i i, I mean my I think the odds makers in Vegas would say so, but uh, that is uh, that is why League of Legends is a fun game and is a fun competitive game, Max Man. Because if you come up with the right strat, you can have the right draft and the right gameplay. Uh, we've seen Druid do it before. There's a reason they have uh, quite a few game wins under their belt, right? They are a solid squad. They do understand how to win games. They just need to piece things together for that kind of one game. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're sitting at six game wins, right? Like, that's not a small number. It's probably a little unfortunate that they've only won one series to this point, Axe. Yeah, really. That's, it doesn't feel very good. But into the draft now, the Uter ban from PNW. Not going to let Othkirk have that one. And it's a uh, pretty, pretty good decision. That Hecarim was pretty nasty. I feel like Udir would be even worse for him there. I don't think they're going to end up banning too many hyper carries this side for... Uh, Drury, you take the Zeri away. Should just be, you know, target bans at, at this point after this. Yeah, we'll see what they do go for. Othkirk, of course, is a very good Udyr player. I'm not surprised to see this band away. He does play a ton of Rek'Sai as well, but that one a little less easy to kind of fit into a situation. It's a, a lot more niche. We've seen him pull it out before, and I think he's, he's looked pretty good on it, but will require kind of some specifics, obviously, in the draft. Aurelia, a similar takeaway to last game for PNW on the blue side. I... I, I don't expect a lot of change in the bands. I would just expect that third band to be Karma this time around, Axe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I think it's uh, at least worth looking at, right? Um, very strong pick there. Still want to take Volibear away. 
Uh, still want to make sure they're not like turbo diving you. A lot of those dives last uh, last game get a lot worse if they have the Volibear Bear jungle. But you know how much worse is it than Olaf jungle? I I don't have the answer to that question. I feel like no, you still get a really nice Olaf. So yeah, it's uh it's a pretty similarly fearful fearful experience getting dove out of those two champions. Obviously, one yeah. a little bit easier for the rest of the team to follow, but uh, you know Olaf kind of a one man uh, wrecking crew when compared to the. I, what, what is he exactly like god or lord of lightning i guess in the frelly or something like that it's just a, a warring a warring angry bear very angry grumpy old bear axe man it's basically what he is ari yeah. the final ban here away from the killer guy and there it is it's the exact same bands and the karma is the final takeaway no karma for you the only difference not for pnw but um yeah looking for that first pick now i mean they just I don't want to say it again. You know what champion's up. Yeah, I think it should it. be Jinx here, actually. Yeah, I think it should be. I, I just, I mean, if they want a first pick for you, Dombi Don, hey man, do do your do your thing. But now nah, you need a Jinx coming through. What do you answer back with if you're Drury? I Velio do Thresh. not know. Uh, Velio Thresh is, is certainly the um, conventional counter, but we've also we've seen a Velio Thresh fall flat as often as anything else into uh jinx like you could you could definitely convince me that it does not counter jinx whatsoever um but uh we the times we have seen it counter it, it looks really convincing there's no way um, you first pick graves in I think you first pick graves here i think that's fine uh it, i mean you probably just get aatrox back in your face yeah you though. just get aatrox <laughs> um i still think well, well we'll see if baymax plays it i know he, he's played a lot of gin um i don't necessarily think yeah. the values counters Jinx, but it does offer you similar damage pro like output, right? And uh, and a slightly different style of team fighting that is still very effective. I, I don't think it's necessarily a hard counter. It's just a swap of strong carries, and that that is a change. That is a big change. Uh, yep. That is an Ash. I like it, Fat Cat coming through with the Ash support. As I know, way there's no way in heck Baymax is playing that. So we'll see what he ends up actually playing here in just a little bit. I think with the Ash. Uh, you probably go for the Jin. I think it's Jin Ash. I think that's what that's what they're going to end up picking here. Wait, but, actually, you think it's yeah, support? Yeah, I think it's support here. So we'll see Rakan support coming out. A lot of engage potential, but uh, you know you have the peel as well with the big ultimate there from the Rakan, and we'll see what they end up rounding out their draft here. First rotation. Oh, the Viego coming through. I'd like to see the Viego. Yeah, you know you think played this a little bit at the start of the split. Of course, Viego not as prioritize as he used to be axman still a little bit more specialized at this point but you already got kind of a, a partial reset comp now you got kind of the full reset comp you get a reset you're going to win the fight at this point so you're just looking for that engage which you have from the con and then the follow-up damage which is obviously already part of the way there uh Kali was left up killer guy's gonna take it gonna give himself the agency to try to carry this game and i like that look from drury i think the killer guy's been probably their best contributor all season long give him something that he can try to take over this game with in his hands will of course give the counter pick over to iso iso in phase two yeah and one of my favorite comps right now in this patch is uh jinx viego and ari because they all have like big resets or snowball mechanics in team fights and it's really funny to see like jinx get excited and ari get like five all resets and then viego get like three all resets it's actually a really good comp too so um but they're not gonna have that they did ban the ari away and we'll see the bands coming through yeah they're banning away supports ban the rexi out interesting there so we'll see i mean i think i think it's ash support but i'm willing to uh willing to take uh the l on that one here if it is ash support then you're taking your ad carry right here because you already see the ad carry yeah, on the board the you already see the support on the board so they will pick the support i think that makes sense uh it is a i mean it's a full pick comp right at this point yep. like you've got tempered fate you've got uh enchanted crystal arrow like you are full pick the one thing i will say is while you have killer guy for assassination uh you need more consistent damage in this composition right now so your final pick here for the jungle needs to be something like i, I don't know like hecarim i guess or Jin. but but you're just all burst right now you're reliant on full pick and burst and now you're doing it into an atrox you're doing it into resets it's, it's a little concerning uh final pick here for the mid lane probably vex yeah vex yeah geez this is, a, this is a tough one. It, we, we were just talking about the alt resets mid-team fight. It's just a good mechanic that goes with Jinx, right? If you get 
Uh, because this team comp, the way this functions in a team fight now, is if they get one kill, they just win the fight. And that's a yes. very difficult team fight, uh, team comp to play against, right? It, for none of you to die. I mean, you have a bard here. What happens if the bard just gets picked? You just lose every team fight? Uh, that's, that's not a good situation. Where's the graves going? That just got flexed oh. in the jungle, huh? Okay. Yes, it did. You don't see that too often anymore, but Othkrik, it, it, it can still certainly be played. It can be strong. Uh, they'll get Yoda onto a Camille. Camille will win the side lane against Aatrox later on in the game. Um, a little bit closer in lane, probably. I think Aatrox can win the lane, so Solyndra should have some push. Iso will, of course, have priority in the early game over Killer Guy. Level 6 is the, the tick mark for Killer Guy. I like that they got damage uh, into the comp. I like that they got secondary engage, right? If you're going to pick someone off, Camille loves being secondary engaged, coming in, sweeping someone away, putting down the Hextech ultimatum. But my concern with this jury composition is the same one that I just voiced a second ago. The damage profile is not high. They have burst. They can burst out one if they're lucky two members, and then they need to hightail it out of there because they will not have the consistent DPS to win a fight against particularly a reset comp, right? If you die once, as you mentioned, and you, bur you burst one member, but you trade the kill, you still lose that fight. You still lose that fight really hard. So this needs to be full pick and then two side laners in Killer Guy and Yoda out on the side lanes, dominating the map along with the tempered fate from fat cat and that really is kind of your engage ecr tempered fate and the hextech ultimatum uh, i think the comp for purdue northwest right where they want up the alley and we'll see how many resets they can try to get in this game uh, as we are on summer's rift axe we certainly are here dj um yeah, I think, I mean, you have consistent damage output from things like Ash, but you gotta go, like, a certain build, right? You gotta go, like, like the, the on-hitter, like, crit Ash or something like that, and it's not super... Like, I feel like if you're gonna go Ash, and you almost never would, I feel like you go, like, um, Ability Haste Ash, and just go, like, full, like, Axiom Arc, and just try to, like, ult as much as possible, but once again, I, I also would say you just never go Ash. Looks like Baymax is agreeing with me on this one. He's got the Longsword, so going for some kind of... Um, well, I think Longsword is just a good start, but also probably building into something like a lethality item or something to that effect. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see how this plays out. Um, yeah, right. I'm with you that I do not think Ash is that strong in the meta, Yeah. Um, but I asked for a shift in the draft. I asked for something a little bit trash yeah, to search right. of a win on home court, and this will do it, right? Uh, going from kind of a, a classic front-to-back team fight, right, a meta composition to a full pick composition is something that can throw your opponent's or a loop if they do not respect it. Uh, we've seen similar strategies from teams on Lost Streaks. We've seen it within series. So I like the change. Now they just have to execute on it. And uh, that's not a good start. Not a good start whatsoever. Trade's going back and forth fairly even. Fat Cat takes a bunch of damage, though. Would be the only difference here. Baymax still relatively healthy. Hasn't chugged any pots yet. Has the refillable pot, too, folks. So he's expecting the W in this lane. Maybe a little bit... Uh, I don't know, big for his britches, we'll go ahead and say. Down bot side, they're still getting pushed in. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't know how this Ash lane is supposed to operate. I have not seen Ash in competitive play in uh, months. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, since last summer, maybe, I think. What you need to do here is, is just poke as much as you can, try to survive the lane. I, I like where they have the, the position at this point. You are, I mean, this composition from Jury is hard waiting for level six to come online. Yeah. You have a hard farming jungler in Graves. Your lane can poke in this bottom side, but Rakan has plenty of uh, sustain in the lane to, to take care of this, and they'll have push because of Jinx Rockets. Uh, your W is better for poking than... They're engaging. Uh, okay, oh, boy. Yeah, big exhaust comes down to Baymax, and on, all of a sudden, he, is he dead? Wow. That heal just barely saves him. Uh, otherwise, I think you you have to use your own summoner spell heal to stay alive up in the river here off Kurik. Uh, run off Kurik. Run, buddy. Ugh. That doesn't feel good. No, you stink. Maybe getting this kill. Rakan is yep. in with the W. The grand entrance there is not able to catch out off Kurik, who is able to flash away. That's the 3v3, uh, 3v3 here in the river. Off Kurik is about to get double scuttled. Yeah, it gets double scuttled, and um, it doesn't feel great, but it, it's not... Uh, you don't just kind of, like, lose the game off it like you used to, which is nice. I so... Ooh, playing with fire here for the killer guy. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's uh, scary to walk into personal space. You can see the range versus melee really coming through here. 10 CS lead 
in that mid lane. We mentioned that Solandric should have pushed early on. That's why the double scuttle was guaranteed. Nice combo here. Uh, and that's really nice for really Sync. He's going to get out on the map. He's going to have extra gold as he comes uh, from his first reset. You can see already with the Vampiric Scepter uh, in tow. So you'll be clearing a little bit faster than Othkirik. Uh, still, though, the level 6 mark is the mark for Jury Panther. That is when they can make plays. That is when every part of their pick composition is online. The pick and the damage are all tied into their ultimates, and the 6s are not far away. Yeah, Baymax was level 2 up to like 15 seconds ago, so at level 6, uh, level six still a ways out for most of Jury. Killer guy getting close there in the mid lane, but uh, you know, he's still level 5, so no level 6 quite yet for him. Yeah, things aren't going particularly well for Jury, but there isn't like a 10k difference between the two teams or anything yet, so we're still trucking here for your, us Drury fans. Give me the gank here for No You Stink. And for the engage, slow goes down to Baymax, and he's trapped out. Fat Cat gets the portal out, but leaves his carry behind. Nothing you could do there. If you're this Ash, some communication would have helped the bot lane there, saying, hey, I'm dropping this portal go over the wall, but nothing really to do. Stun goes down to No You Stink, and they're disengaged here, DJ. Yeah, to be fair to Fat Cat, I don't think No You Stink was letting one of them, like, both of them were not getting in the portal. Uh, yeah. He was taking a great angle. Oh boy, I don't know if you win this or you do. Yeah, that's great. Fat Cat once again with the portal this time. Oh, he doesn't get the ally out. Oh, yeah, Graves eventually gets in the portal there. I thought he was going to make it out. The knockup from uh, Rakan just uh, you know, taking a lot of damage there. That's an early Drake now. You, you can't really walk up to this. Killer guy does not have level 6 yet, so you can't win the 3v3. Your comp is still not online. No, you stink. And PNW, again, very nice pathing. Great communications. They know that wave is crashing in to get first blood, get onto the Drake. Already a 1k gold lead, and it has just come off clever pathing. Great priority and communication, and they're showing their cleanliness once again in this early game. Yeah, it has been a generally purified gameplay here. Baymax trying to get uh, some CS somewhere. They do lane swap with uh, Killer Guy for mid lane. Still trying to figure out how this Ash pick works. They got a long sword and a dagger, so that's our that's our only clues so far. I guess Kraken Slayer? I don't know. A little more evidence gonna be needed here. Yeah, Yoda and Othakurik going for Solendrick. Got him. Should be able to get him here. They got the ignite ticking, no. but yeah, no, just narrowly not able to get on top of him there. Solendrick with the ultimate able to escape. Yep, that is level six used pretty well from Solendrick. I did I thought he was dead there. They can't follow up and Drake now, to be a little wary here. Yoda does now have ulti, so that is a big threat for No You Stink. I saw his priority. This will be a close fight. Does kill a guy have six? Yes, he does. They can win this one. And yeah, you can see that uh, Purdue is a little nervous about it. I would be too. Yoda able to fend off Solendrick. And the two sides disengaged for the time being. Rift Herald up in just a few seconds now. I'd like to see both teams make a move for that. That's a big objective for you. Oh, yeah, Yoda, big engage from the Aatrox. There's no ultimate for either top laner, but you got to take the reset after that of your Yoda, right? I would say you have to uh, anyway. Yeah, you, you, you can just reset. It, it's fine, though. The wave pushed out. You won't miss that much. Jeez, yeah, Fat Cat taking a bunch of damage there from the Jinx. Feels pretty bad. It is the Noon Quiver for Baymax, so I guess he's just going like Crit Ash, which is, uh, you know, what they needed for the sustained damage. I don't, I don't, once again, but I just don't know yeah, if this is it, good. it doesn't do as much damage as the other carries. I don't right? think this so, This is why yeah. Aphelios is, like, part of the trade with Jinx, but, again, it offers something different. Is your consistent DPS going to be as high in the team fight? No, but you're not looking for that part of the team fight. You're looking for one to two kills and then to get out of dodge. Uh, and so in that sense, I, I think it's just fine. But you do have to have someone with a little bit of consistent damage in case the initial engage or pick does not go perfectly. Someone's got to be doing it. So I think this is fine for Baymax. And, and you understand when you pick this that you are not... Oh, alive. that's not good. Yeah, Big Vex Ultimate comes in and he's already dead, folks. That's not great. The killer guy was following up, maybe collapsing in, but just nothing for the Akali to do. He's going to be taken... Uh, his skills back to the mid lane. Unfortunate there, and just a killer rotation from ISO. Oh, yeah, I mean, PNW are just 
ruthless predators, dude. Like that is, I mean, look at where Baymax was standing. Like he wasn't even that far up in the lane and he just dies. Yep. Flashes away, just dies. Like rocket, Vexel, like Shadow Surge, engage from Udon, rocket, you're just dead. Yeah, Yoda hits the W this time around. A little bit better of a trade there. Solandric taking a bunch of damage from the minions. Gonna put him back even. Big Q. Once again, this might be the kill, folks. It's that third Q, and yeah, he's got it. Man, that's convincing there, DJ. Yep, Solandric just running this top lane. Axe, man. He's done it in game number one. Now he's doing it in game two. Doesn't seem to matter what Yoda picks. He had the, yeah. the, the counter pick, right? So... I does not seem to matter what he picks. No, I, I think he might have needed a bit better of a counter than the Camille anyway. But, uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I was all in favor of the Gwen. The Gwen was up, right? I think it was. But, uh, yeah, I, I would have liked to see them go for that. Don't know if you had to play as Gwen. Yeah. I mean, you got to play Gwen. Yeah, I play Gwen. Oh, correct. On this Rift Herald, might have been a mistake for him there. Fat Cat trying to help him out, only so much he could do. Eats the ultimate, actually, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. No you stink goes down. Now here's the killer guy trying to turn this fight around. He's got the damage on ISO. I think he's got the kill. Yeah, it's the ult over. And finally, Drury wins a the fight. They get an objective. Yep, and these are the sixes available, right? You can lock them down. It's a nice exhaust from Fat Cat. Killer guy shows up and... With the perfect execution, once you get on Daiso, there's no real way for him to get out. Nicely turned around by Drury and giving themselves some hope in this game. Again, when you're behind, there's always a price to pay. You moved your entire team up there to deal with this. That's a lot of turrets and uh, turret plating and gold going into the opponent's pocket. But these are the kind of plays you need to make with this pick comp. These are the kinds of things you need to do to give yourselves avenues back into the game. Certainly, that 2K is going to feel really good for them. Stacked exactly where it needs to be onto the collie. So good. Now you stuff. cannot take this fight. You do not have perfect execution. Yeah, you don't have perfect execution. I don't think they've reset yet either. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think they had. So definitely take the reset there. And uh, it is that dragon that goes over to Purdue Northwest. Oh, here we go. Yeah, hookshot misses from Yoda. Oh, big hex that ultimatum dodges the W from the Aatrox, but it doesn't matter. He runs away and he just isn't uh, able to get the damage down on the Aatrox. Another very close fight, but uh, Solandric still taking this fight uh, for himself. Now he's up 2 0. Yeah, still just a little bit too much healing in the trade. Even without the Gore Drinker in, you always drain a little bit with a couple of those autos uh, for the Aatrox and Yoda. Does his best, but he's an auto away, unfortunately, and Solyndra continues to dominate proceedings and give just a basically a free avenue of power for Purdue Northwest in the top lane as most of their plays have been around mid and bot. Beautiful performance there for him. Yudon Bidon. Maybe catching out the killer guy. Isa does have the ultimate up, could engage on him if he wants to, but a little risky if you don't have the follow-up, right? They've already already shown that the Akali wins that 1v1. If you get on top and the fear is down, if his fear is up, you can still kind of fear away the first part of the execution and then you don't have enough damage to follow up. Uh, but once you do get on top of ISO, it does become hard for him to get away. ISO still doing fine in the lane, though. He's 1-1-1, one, one, and one, doing just fine. He's given Pryo when he's needed to do so. The next time he will be asked to do so is around the next Rift Herald in like three or so minutes. But first real point in the game in which not a whole lot to fight for, objective-wise, are looking... And at this moment, if you're jury, for these picks, right? This is what the comp was about. Nice sidestep. Yeah, for sure. Really good stuff. Yeah, I like that one. This is a, a competent Akali. Uh, it's a good pick for them. You see a lot of ego Akalis, but uh, not this one. This one's pretty good. Othkarik. You think Othkarik and Solendrick are friends? Those are some pretty similar names, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I think they're uh, friends. I ship it. Right. Okay, we're, we're shipping it. <laughs> yeah, we're shipping it. Fat Cat, uh, down boss Oth, side. Othkirik and No You Stink. Um, what's it? Fanfic. Coming soon. Oh, yeah. That's the pick we were talking about. But I don't yeah, know if you want to combo the abilities quite like oh, that. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it does flash out. He's, he's still there. Uh, is he? I don't know. We'll see when we see here. Yeah, it does, da does go down to the killer guy eventually. I don't know if I would combo uh, the ultimates quite like that if I was jury. But, hey, it worked out in the end. 
does work out. And this is what the composition is designed for, right? These kind of lulls in the game. No objectives up. So when you use your abilities, you can look for picks and try to kind of stack up that gold. Then you just got to save them for when the objective does come up. So uh, as Yoda's going to get killed here. Yeah, he is. Next stack ultimatum. Dodging a little bit of damage with the killer guy. He's in now. 1v3. Does get the kill back. Might want to go for more. Shuriken misses. Goes wide. Oth Kurik now. 2v1 maybe onto Udon Bidon. He's able to escape with the grand entrance. More like a grand exit there. Yep. No more uh, perfect execution means grand exit. Just fine. As long as you don't Irish exit. Yeah, no Irish exit. You gotta say goodbye to the homies, folks. You just... I'll just walk out on them, but... Solon Drake continues to push Imagine, these in. Imagine if there was a team fight and Udon beat on, who's the engaged, just Irish exited. Yeah, just, like just outied. Just got up from just the PC outied. and walked away. Didn't say anything. That would be rough. Yoda drops Rift Herald in base. It's going to decide to run down the top lane. It had its choice of lanes, but uh, top is where it's going to go. This should be first turret, I believe, for the bot lane now. So Poner picks that one up for his team. It was basically free here, too. You saw the, the mid bot uh, swip, a swap there, but uh, the Kali was not in time to save the turret. This Rift Hill might actually get a charge off, which is a little crazy to me. Yeah, like what? Long path here, and uh, and they dive cylindric. This Here's is a tall dive. path. Yeah, he's, level 11. he's level 11. He can absolutely 1v3. Tempered Fate oh, comes nope. through, and it is enough damage from Drury to get the Aatrox down. Really nice Tempered Fate. Uh, I did hit, unfortunately, one of his team members. I'm not really sure if Yoda got uh, an assist there. Uh, I think maybe he did, but um, yeah, it did shut off the turret for long enough for them to go for the dive. Really nice dive on the Cylindric. Yep, and again, use this comp. Get those picks, right? There's nothing on the map just yet, so you can use the time to go to those side lanes. However, fortunately this time around, I think they waited a little too close to the objective, which is spawning in 10 seconds, meaning a lot of tools not going to be up. Uh, so it might be a little tricky to get back to this dragon contested. They do still have perfect execution. They do still have X-Tech ultimatum, so they can try to fight. This is Killer Guy. He's on a ward. He's on a ward. Is it going to matter, though? It's a poner. Yeah, actually zones him fairly effectively with the snap traps. 3v1 now. The killer guy, you don't want to get shut down here. He takes down reset. the jungler. He gets that reset off. Reset. But, oh boy. It's Purdue. They're off to the races. Another reset, reset. back there coming through. More Vex alts, please. Reset. And he's in. There's the triple kill. One more. It goes oh. wide. It doesn't connect. Oh, ISO just doesn't have the skill shot there and uh great play from purdue can't believe that they were able to get that many kills just in one play it looked like it started out so good for jury but uh, it just wasn't enough exactly what we said in the draft comes true here in the first major 5v5 axe man the concern was you can get a pick with this jury panthers composition and they get it they kill no use thing one of the reset members but there's three of them and so Killer Guy, who gets the kill, immediately goes down in response. And all of a sudden, the opponent just gets to run straight forward at the enemy composition with Get Excited Up. He gets a reset. Then he gets another one. Then the Shadow Surges come out. And the other two reset members just carry the fight because what is left after the first pick? You have to have multiple members die or you have to kill one and get out. And it's too hard for Drury on that occasion. Purdue just easily takes it. Nothing to really do for him. No, you stink. Uh, might actually just get zoned off of this Rift Herald. That's going to feel pretty bad. It's the 3v3 uh, now. They you don't beat on. They can definitely fight for this. They can edge. fight for this. Solon Drake, maybe pushing in here. Yeah, they're going to end up getting a knock up on a fat cat. He's going to portal out along with Yoda. But here comes the enemy team. Tempered nice, fate. Tempered fate. Stunning him up for a little bit. Went for the stun. Didn't quite get it. Yoda's back in with a hook shot. Big stun from the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Baymax is on the flank. He's free hitting on the backside. You don't beat on taking a bunch of damage. Killer guy in with the engage. Big Q. Big Shuriken. Big ultimate double kill for the Akali. Oh, it's the ult reset from ISO. He has one more in him. What's he going to do? Baymax running away to Poner. He's excited. Gotta be careful if you're the killer yeah, guy. No Gotta get out of there if you're the Akali. There's nothing really for you to do. ISO, I believe, did drop that ultimate. Does not have the reset on it. You gotta be careful if you're the Vex. 
Oh, you so much damage there from the Vex. Yeah, actually, if you don't oh, yeah, have ultimate, so I don't nice. think you can fight this if you're the Akali, but... Oh! Uh... <laughs> That's not good. Uh, just hit B. Just hit B, bro. Just hit B, bro. Just hit the B button. Oh, he walks out. Okay. I don't... I don't know if you want to he's fight that, dude. Yeah, I still. think he's still dead, bro. Run in the bush. Hit the B button. <laughs> no, he's eventually tracked down in a sprawling team fight in the top side. Yep, and that one was a lot better for Drury, right? They got a couple kills. They split the fight up. It was pretty messy. Uh, killer guy comes in on the back end and, and gets those two kills. But again, you could just see what happens. One of the reset members dies. Two of them do not. All of the resources are used. And then they're not afraid of anything. They're two squishy champions, right? Especially Jinx, but they're just unafraid because they know there's nothing left in the tank to deal with them and their resets. 100% there. Some mythic items completed after that last fight in the Bork for No You Stink. Completed there too. So lots of item spikes across Summer's Rift, but most importantly, two item for Taponer. If that's a big spike for the Jinx, he's pushing three, which is an arguably even bigger spike. And uh, if you're this Ash, you got one item that's, uh, that's difficult to contend with. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is starting to spiral away here. And two minutes remaining before the next dragon, right? Drury need to win the fight. They need to find a pick before this Drake uh, if they want any chance of staying in this game and this series. But PNW, they have been ruthless once again. They have understood uh, the strengths of the enemy composition and its limitations, they have not given them more uh, than they should have, and they're poised now to take this final Drake to get this soul, and essentially, uh, with another Mountain Soul against a heavily burst composition, uh, end this game with how powerful it will be. Really will here. Next drag up in a minute 30, that's Dragon Soul. Mid lane turret being taken down by Toponer and No You Stink. We're going to get that one for free. A little defense coming out now. See if they can stop it. Go for the pick. The ults go wide. No resources left for Drury. With that, the engage comes through. Portal out from Fat Cat, but it is the pick onto Baymax. Unfortunate there for the Drury AD carry. It's going to be a second turret now for PNW. As the Rift Herald's dropped. Oh, big engage from Yoda. Very nice engage there. Oh, lots of damage coming through as the engage from the Vex comes out. Oh, it's a killer guy. He's looking for He's dropped the ultimate on them. I think he can get the kill here. Maybe one. No, does go down to the Rakan. Unfortunately, I, I could see the triple kill there, but just the double for the Akali. He does well to uh, mitigate the charge from the Rift Herald and Things go pretty even, I would say, there. I think it was three for four. Maybe actually a, a positive fight for Drury. Yeah, I mean, the killer guy is just trying to be a hero. Uh, uh, I, I can't say enough about how well he is team fighting these situations, holding on to the second charge of Zolt, finding the critical targets, getting into the back line. He's doing so much for them, Axe, man, but it's still just not quite enough, right? They can't quite have enough resources to kill off everybody. This time they get all the recent members, but Solendric is still alive, and now they're trying to get position on this Drake, but everyone's coming back to Purdue Northwest. Gotta take this one of your jury. It is everything for you. Fat Cat taking a bunch of damage to the start of the fight. Yeah, you gotta find a way in. You can't let them finish this dragon. But uh, what can you do, right? The killer guy, he's just sprinting in. What? Where's the rest of the team? Drury? What what happened? Being engaged on Iotis, knocked up by the Aatrox. Mountain Soul comes down. Solendric locked up by Enchanted Crystal the Arrow. Jeez. The damage from Vex just deleting Yoda. Fat Cat is next. The all reset comes through. Here's the next ult from ISO. Comes out. Just nails off Kurik. There's no escape now. The Vex reactivates the ultimate for a final reset. And this will be the game for PNW. They win handily. I would go ahead and say, I don't think there's any opportunity for Jury to stop this one. Yeah, the game won't end here. They're, they're too far away from the turret structures, but the Mountain Soul is just going to be the, the final nail in the coffin. Uh, Axe Man, this is a first composition looking for picks. You're now dealing with Mountain Soul. You're now dealing with multiple two-item spikes that will be coming through, and 
like you said, it's it's a little bit of an unfortunate way for Drury, who has fought hard in these two games to try to find their footing uh, to have probably their worst team fight in this Drake. Right? Just a big miscommunication between the team. You got Killer Guy going in alone on the backside, waiting. Uh, not sure if he was waiting for his team to find the flank. Right? It, it just didn't come together. There were some missed comms there, almost certainly. And that is the way they drop Mountain Soul and almost certainly lose their last hope of winning this game and staying in the series. They will continue to fight, continue to watch Killer Guy try to dance around these fights. But I mean, Mountain Soul is a powerful one for a reason. It is exceptionally powerful against first compositions. And now Purdue Northwest is feeling even more confident than they were a couple minutes ago. They can practically front line with their squishy members now. Yeah, and I've seen... Uh, teams engage early before their assassins have a chance uh, to look for that flanking angle. I've never seen an assassin solo engage before their team got a, a flanking angle, though. That was interesting, but uh, hopefully we don't see that again, as I have to imagine, like you said, that was just a communication issue, because uh, it, it looked really weird. Baron going down now to PNW. Uh, there is just no one from Dury in the area. Maybe Othkirk now looking for it. Killer guy showing up on the scene. But he's on vision. There's Tempered Fate now. Te Teleport coming in. Big ult from the Killer Guy. Does get him one kill onto Teponer. Now looking for more. Yeah, Yoda's in doing tons of damage. He gets absolutely eaten alive. Fa a double kill now from ISO. And uh, there's the triple. It's Othkirk, the only one left on Summoner's Rift. And that is going to go down to no use staying ISO with the near quadra kill. And uh, I don't know, DJ, are they going to end it now? I think they might. Yeah, I think they can now, uh, Axeman. Uh, it's a full white. Baymax will respawn. Killer Guy will respawn. They won't have the royalties, and I don't think they will have the power to resist PNW, who should march on what I believe is their ninth straight series win. Nope. Okay, they're just going to play it safe. <laughs> yeah, I guess. A couple, couple more minutes, Axeman. Yeah, a couple so more start, minutes here. We'll, 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 we'll rewind. We'll, re let's rescrub the YouTube video for, you know, the, like, the closing, like, the what's the taps? We'll, we'll rescrub taps. We'll start it over from the, like, appropriate time. Yeah. We will, and then we'll, couple minutes, yeah. we'll get one more run at it here, but yeah, I think uh, I like my Ash build a little bit better. The Imperial Mandate with the Axiom Arc, I feel like you get, uh, I don't know, more alts anyway. And I feel like that's the, the best thing that Baymax is bringing to the table with the Ash right now is just the ultimates. Um, so, hey, what do I know that I'm just a caster, right? We're all just casters. They're all just players. Yeah. We're all just... Ooh, yeah, big engage there. Oh, just of out of nowhere. Santa Crystal Arrow catching somebody out. Tepona goes down at the start of the fight. The Yoda goes down, and you know that's all they need to start get the resets going. No, you stink, actually. Going to eventually die to the Akali and what has been the best fight for Drury so far, I'll say. Portal out for Fat Cat. Othkarik, no such luck. He's going to run the opposite direction and uh, try to get out himself. Gore Drinker going to keep him alive for a little bit, but Iso is just unstoppable. Two members left here for uh, Drury, but uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they can end now. Maybe. I mean, the killer guy. Killer guy doesn't have ults. I mean, uh, speaking of which, I mean, killer guy is just an absolute madman. Like, yeah. just absolutely insane. He's had three or four fights that have just been mechanically and like decision-wise, just S plus tier in this game. Axe man, it's it's been. Honestly, a ridiculously good Akali performance. He's 9-5-2 and two in a game in which his team is down 12 kills and nearly 10k gold. Like, I cannot stress it up how well he's playing these fights, but again, it's just not enough. Yeah, and I mean, even if the Akali was like 0-10 or something and he wasn't having that good a game, he's deleting Jinx at the start of a fight, which is so important for this team, right? Uh, getting that, uh, re not reset, but, you know, snowball mechanic away from this team is the most important thing. Fat Cat going to get caught out here. They should have the damage to kill him. No, once again into the port. Oh, that's Vexalt. It's down. Killer guy on the flank. They could look here. Oh, I just can't get pegged if you're the Akali. Ooh, big kills to start off this one. Baymax goes down at the start of the fight. So does the killer guy. I think that's it for this team fight. You still have Othkirk up, who's still fairly strong, but you really needed your Akali there. Uh, once again, does get the kill into the Jinx, but that's all they get, unfortunately. Othkirk flashing away to stay alive. 
And he does go down eventually to IS ISO there. And uh, I really thought that was it for him, DJ. I thought Jory had a way back in. As soon as the Vexalt missed uh, and Jinx went down at the start of the fight, I thought they had a way in, but it's just too late. They're too far into the game, and uh, Purdue too far ahead. They're going to take this one in a 29-minute game. Yep, it's... Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, they should be fine. Uh, yeah, we'll, it should we'll, be fine we'll here. Just, okay, it's fine. Uh, it, it took a little longer than I think uh, Purdue or we expected in this one. A couple times they were turned away at the doorstep, but the result is the same. Purdue has just been sweeping across the MEC unabated thus far. Nine straight, if I'm not mistaken, series wins. I'll double check this while we're getting ready for our interview, uh, Axe, man. Yes, nine straight after that series. And um, it's been convincing. Every single time, this team is really good. They are a well-oiled machine. They have multiple carry threats. Uh, they fix their mistakes. They've shown clean early games, clean mid games, clean late games, even in some of the games that maybe are not the best for them. Uh, they are still playing very solid, and they will finally get to test how well they have progressed and how strong they truly are tomorrow morning, Axe, man. First series of the day. Grandview Vikings, 9-0, 18-0, against Purdue Northwest, 9-1. 16 I, I think after this would be 18 and 4 it should be because you have to win that many games to get the series so um yeah it's going to be all on the line in probably one of the best series in the entire season oh yeah that's uh it's going to be one for the ages definitely show up for that but uh i'm not sure we're going to try and get a something going here for a, an interview i'm i'm looking at chat you would know better than i would dj yeah, I think we will have an interview. We're actually going to have one with the Poner uh, after this one. So stick around as we wrap up the day here in the MEC. We'll have an interview with the victorious AD Carey right after the short break.
Welcome back to Unified, where we're streaming Midwest Esports Conference for you. Uh, it's me, Axman87, back with DJ Cass. This time we brought a friend. It's PNW Zone 80 carry, Teponer. Teponer, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I usually just go by Poner, but everyone kind of just calls me whatever, and I don't really mind. All right, I'm, I'm going to call you Poner because Teth kind of sticks in my throat a little bit. I don't know yeah. what's going on there. But, um, yeah, crazy series, man, uh, top to bottom. That last one, I know you didn't have as much fun, but uh, definitely game one was a, a lot of fun to watch you uh, play. And uh, what do you think really built into your team's success in this series? So I feel like our macro crawls are really smart. Um, we were definitely trying to punish them very heavily for just um, – However we could, however we knew that our comp could work. So in game one, we know Karma is going to just completely shit all over Lulu. Uh, we wanted to use that yeah. cryo, get that early vision inside of their jungle. And we did that, and then actually ended up just like running them completely over when they, when they were trying to do their blue. Um, and that second game, same concept. I was just Jinx rocket on that back wave, shoved that, got cryo. And then all of a sudden, their jungler can't do anything. He doesn't know what to do. My jungler's having fun. <laughs> Yeah, he certainly was. Though you stink, definitely pop it off in the series. A lot of you pop it off in the series. I, I do got to ask the, the one kind of negative personal question here, Poner, before we get to the fun stuff and maybe prep for tomorrow is, you know, are, are you and Killer Guy going to like go make up, have like a, a, a glass or something, get a, get a slice of pizza? Because that, that, that dude had a laser lock target on your head in game two, and it, he's dying every time he gets you, but he's probably laughing about it at the end. I gotta step out and fight him real fast, man. That felt that felt just, <laughs> just felt nasty. I couldn't breathe, and then every single time I get pincered by both him and uh, Camille and Nikali, I'm just like sitting there. I'm like, okay, well, uh, I hope that my team cleans it because I am I am going to be fucking dead in about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the collegiate lands. Everyone says, oh, it's about camaraderie, building teamwork. Nah, it's about the fist fights. Come on, guys. <laughs> 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 Drag him out the street, man. I don't know. Oh, but uh, no, that was, that, that was really fun to watch. Uh, uh, you guys have been dominant so far in this conference. Uh, you're probably having a lot of fun in this land, but um, you talked about how you won this series. How is it you keep staying uh, ahead of the competition in this conference? So <clears throat> I think that the way my coach instills uh, the macro play is that we must, like, it's like a, it's a necessity for us to like, keep happening, uh, keep proactively making plays on the map. Um, not letting, like, not being reactionary to what people are doing and, ha like, taking that step to be like, okay, this might not work, this might work. Uh, but it's all about um, making those plays more in our favor than if it weren't. And then if we obviously uh, macro-wise, or micro-wise, it's like all of us, I think all of us on my team uh, do it pretty well. So I try my best to put myself on top. I think my team does too. So, I, yeah. We can see it here on the desk, uh, uh, Poner. I mean, I, I think it's been a clinic throughout the MEC. I, I've always been impressed with you know the, the stuff you guys show from early to mid game, the pressure you put on other teams, and I'm very excited because and, and this will be the the big question. Obviously, is I'm very excited to see you guys finally put that into fruition after six weeks now because you matched up with GVU week number one, one of the very first series of the conference, and it was closer than a lot of people think. You were the closest to taking a game off them in that Zeri game where they had the back door to win the game. How are you guys feeling about tomorrow? Do you feel like you've progressed enough? And do you have any, obviously you don't have to say them, do you have any strategies or or is it just going to be, we're going to go at GVU with everything we got? Look, <clears throat> I'm good friends with everyone on GVU. Love my boys. I'm coming back in blood. I, I want this. <laughs> I want this fucking win. It has been in the back of my mind ever since we lost to them. I was so... I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I was so salty that we lost that Zeri game that I opened up with because if we had played that macro right, and that's where j Brax came in and like helped us with the macro, like helped us like get back on it. If we had really fixed that, um, I feel like we definitely could have taken a game and maybe two. You don't know. That's the history. But um, <clears throat> future is tomorrow. So going to make that a win for us. There you go. The streets running red with blood out there at the tree land. <laughs> You yeah, damn, be... yeah, damn, actually. We, 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 I we guess. got no violent path here. I mean, I mean we, we did I get on this violence. Lion, it, it, they are the lions, so I, you know, they they would there would be it would be a bloody mess after they they finish off uh, an opponent. I I guess, man. Uh, hey, do you got any shout outs here, opponent? Maybe some of you don't want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to fight everyone. No. All right, um, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, shout out to 
I just my whole team, uh, J Braggs, all of GVU. You know, end of the day, they're all my friends. Uh, love them all to death. Everyone that's been at the land, everyone that's been in the MEC, I feel like everyone's like super friendly within the MEC. Like all of us are like kind of buddy buddy uh, to a certain extent, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everything. Awesome, man. We love to hear that everyone is having a good time. We're having a great time casting you, and we look forward to more excitement tomorrow. But again, congratulations on the 2-0, the Poner, and of course, best of luck in what should be an absolute, yes, and I'll use the cliche term, an absolute banger tomorrow. Bloodbath. But hell yeah. Let's there get this you shit. go. Blood Bath it is. Yeah. That'll wrap it up for us here today, Axe Man. It has been another thrilling day of MEC action, but we will have to wait for day two of the Drury Land to see who comes out on top of the conference and who is setting themselves up for the playoffs. But with that for us here, I want to thank my partner, Axe Man, for coming in on short notice, mind you, and absolutely slaying it. Of course, first night of Nee and Shira, our production and observer crew behind the scenes, and of course, everyone at Unified that puts these productions on and allows us to bring you all the incredible players, teams, and action of the MEC. But with that, we'll be signing off. We'll see you again bright and early tomorrow morning for what could be one of those exciting days yet in the MEC. So make sure to tune in as we continue with more MEC. Until then, see you later. Have a fabulous, fabulous night.